specialists install more than hardware and software. They install possibilities. Because life's full of great moments. Why not upgrade them? Future Shock. You'll like what the future has in store. Off! On! Do something! What is that? He trained them. All right, man. We'll be aggressive ah. and hard-headed. He taught them. You need speed, oh. power, and heart. Let's do it. He made them believe they could do the impossible. Sweet! Men with brooms. How's my form? Fine. Good. I think it might be permanent. In theaters March 8th. Did you put it on? I didn't put it on. I didn't put it on. Well, I'm not drinking it. Not sure how fresh your coffee is? At Tim Hortons, we make a new pot every 20 minutes, so it's guaranteed to always be fresh. Tim Hortons, the coffee you can count on. Oh, I made that last night. <laughs> Here's a look at the scoring summary from the opening 20 minutes. JR from Rafalski and Doug Waite on a two-man advantage power play in the first period. Some other stats to check, check out before we uh, throw to break. The power play time significantly favoring the Germans or the Americans. We'll be back right after this. in the first were 13 to 9 in favor of the USA. They got the only goal of the period on a power play. Jeremy Roenick from Rafalski and Waite to 13.06. Penalty killers of Germany though were overworked in that first period. And have to watch it now. They want to do something with the US. They were down two men for two minutes and five seconds at one point in that opening period. Germans did a good job on the big line for the States. Medano's group, they had no points and only three combined shots. Medano lifting the puck away to the right side. And the USA will move up, led by Hull. Cuts over the line. Medano goes for the net. Hull put it at the goal. Medano takes it around the net now from the corner. Comes all the way back to the blue line. Backed it up a bit. And it's intercepted at the line. Nearly a break for Germany. Three of them were there, ready to go. Just did not control it to get going with it. Now the USA moving back in. Denmark hangs onto it near the line where he was stopped and centered. There's Chelios. He'll get a shot. A score! Deflected in front. Could have been Denmark who got a stick on it. We'll wait. But the shot by Chelios it appeared to be going wide, I think. But it was deflected in front, and it's 2 nothing USA. Ned Marsh was out there for John LeClaire, who was getting some teeth for cut repair on the line with Medano and Hull. And it went off. Finally, it went off, I think, Ned Marsh stick. Or maybe Brett Hull tipped yes, it. Let's I have a look. That's what it was. It was tipped a couple of times on the way in. 2 nothing US. Whatever. We'll get the official in a moment. And the USA strike early here in the second period at just 54 seconds. Well, getting down two goals this early in the game puts the defensive style that Germany plays in trouble. It looked like it hit Dead Marsh's skate. Then it hit the Mendes stick, I think. I don't know whether Hull touched it or not. They're going to give it to Hull. 
his third then. And Chelly also took the shot, will get the assist. 2 0 USA. That's an icing call. It'll come back in the USA zone. Hall gets the goal. Let's have another look at it here. Hall's off to the right of the goaltender. I don't know whether he touched it or not, but anyway, that's neither here nor there as uh, Brett's touched a few on the way to the net in his day. Germany controlling after that face off. Batting the puck into the corner as Katan gets around the net. Coming up as Marco Sturm to help him. The puck went by Sturm, and the USA will clear it. Young flipped it up over center. Back there was Seidenberg to bring it back up for Germany, and they shoot it in. Ricker was about to leave the net. Sokio comes in, tried to center it. USA will move it back out. Miller, long pass, knifed in wide of the net. Knocked down right there. Young was up there for the USA. But it's Germany clearing it out. Sturm at center. Missed the pass. Rafalski feeding the puck ahead again. Wait, shot it in front. And then the second pass by Guerin goes all the way out and down the ice. Rafalski ripped the pass up there near center. It's tucked up over the line, but they're offside on that play. Wait was in. Well, let's put some big heat on the German team to get the next goal. And they have played their best hockey when they're defending a tie, a lead, or only one goal down. And uh, the Americans can take advantage of the fact that uh, the Germans are not going to be able to, for a while anyway, play that defense first hockey. If they ever get down another one, it's over. Germany coming away. Lot at center. Rolled by him. Another racing call. No, they were going to wave off. One linesman had his hand ready to go, and the other waved it off. So they'll continue, and Germany will bring the puck out. Long pass, banked on the boards at center. Hines couldn't find that. Shot in behind the American net, though, where Housley was waiting. Housley comes straight to the line with it, and Guerin backhands it up to center. That's easily picked off. And back in for Germany, Hubert. Little backhander, knocked down by Richter. He had trouble with that. And covered up when he did get out of the net, diving for it. Schubert let a good backhand go, and any goalie will tell you they're a little tougher to handle than a forehand shot. Here it is right here. Richter stops it, then drops it, and then finds it before either one of the German forwards could get their stick on it. Richter gets ready. He's got those straps to his left. See, that come up from the top of the pad and go around his pants. No other goalie I know has that little addition to his equipment. They saw one by the USA. Chelios. Moving with him now is Ralston. Chelios gives it to Ralston. He had to back up. Now back to Chelios. I think he lost it, and Chelios was there. So he shot the puck in. USA on the boards is Deadmarsh. This is Drury. Drury was hammered back there. Can't move very far. Wustorf was given a shot. Germans get it out, though, down through center. Ustorf winds up. Nice glove saved by Ricker. It was a good hard shot, too. Another one from the blue line is off a skate and away wide. Chelios moves it quickly. Away from Ustorf. Denmarsh drops it. Drory shoots it in. Denmarsh didn't know it. He didn't see it in time. But they hustle in for it anyway. Ralston's pass across in front of the net. Leclerc patched up. He's back on. He shot it around the net. Germany can't clear. McDonald. His shot hit a leg, and Hall chopped it in for Leclerc. Leclerc comes out to the line as Leach takes the long shot. Block cleared out down the ice again. Just flipped away by Hecht. Kind of caught it, threw it. Once again, Brett Hall skating well. Left the puck at the blue line, though. Socio tried to move up, lost it at center. And Leclerc nearly got going. He keeps going now, looking for the puck in there. Does get it. Now he's pushed down. And the referee was there to call the penalty. As Leclerc was upended, stick high on him again. And uh, there will be a German penalty. He's already uh, been cut in the lip and lost a tooth or two. 
And it looks like whatever damage was done earlier has been reopened with this one. Right in the face. The so Leclerc will, he didn't play the first shift of the second period because he was getting repaired. So he, may, he may have to go in for some further repairs. This is the man who gets the high sticking penalty at 422 of this period. 2-0 USA, once again, the power play USA. See, they just dropped the puck. Madonna was nowhere near the dot, but he was late getting out on the quick face-off rule, and the referee just threw the puck down, and Germany iced it. Benda in his own zone on the boards. Play stop. They'll come outside the line for the face-off. Kunza high-sticking, 4-22. If Leclerc had not been cut before, that would have been a four-minute penalty because it would have cut him, but it's pretty tough to distinguish between the first period cut and the second period cut. 2-0 USA and Leach will quarterback now as he drifts back to Housley. He'll skate around the net, gets a little room to move, and he loves to do this. Away to center, all the way is Housley, and shoots it in deep. Weight was up, so was Amandi. But it's cleared around the net, and the Germans will take their time to move it up at center ice. That's where it's lost. USA back in. Onside. Flip back to Leach. He and Housley there. Leach goes to Housley. Long pass, and the shot ripped off a leg and high again to the glass. Brian Leach. Pass was a good one. Here's Garen. Bill Guerin off the boards with it. Young stops it, keeps it in. Bill Guerin in. Comes by him, but Wait was waiting. Got it out to the line of Housley. Along the line with Housley and Leach. Second pass by Housley was intercepted. Krutzer couldn't get it outside the line, though. The play is called. We played 544 of the second. It is 2-0 USA. 41, no. 38 seconds left in the penalty now. In the crease was the call again, Bob. That's why the faceoff is outside the German zone. As the American player Scott Young is standing in the crease, as you can see by the overhead shot. Hall scored at 46 seconds. As this man, Chelios, had just shot it again, took a shot from the blue line. And they said he got a stick on it. Now it's in close. Seeliger down, covered very well on Young. Chelios at the blue line with Suter. And Chelios again. Took the shot to the crowd. Seeliger, stick save. York was open. Puck taken by the Germans, though. Shot to the line, and now out by Chelios. And down the ice. Penalty now is over. Kunza is back on the ice for Germany. So they've killed that one off. York up there with Ronick for the USA. A little fight along the boards. Christoph Schubert won it and got it out to center ice. German player up there all alone. Here's Ustor. Up front all right, but nobody there to near it, and Richter just jumped on it, smothered it, held it. We played 6.43 in the second period. Farmers of Canada are really, really proud to stand behind the Canadian Olympic team. Hesch comes up for Germany around the net with a wraparound attempt. Comes out, a little backhander coming. It was very weak. Wide of the goal, Urstorff takes it off the boards. Germany pressing right here. But now, the USA get it out to center and down. Comes Rory, cuts in the pass across in front. And grabbed in the goal crease area. But a close call for Germany at the other end. Two or three chances on Richter. Well, the Germans need the next goal to get back into this game because if they get down by three, I think they're in deep trouble. Here is the chance. Drury's on the rush. He tries the cross-ice pass. But it is deflected out of the rink, I thought, by the German goaltender, but evidently not. 
because the faceoff is outside. I think it was Ralston who got his stick on it on an angle and it took off over the glass. Pody shoots it in for the USA. Germany trying to find it in their own zone. It'll be Leclerc though coming out. On the short side he stopped. Leclerc ever dangerous. Strong on the puck. USA play it back over the German line. Seidenberg with Ludemann. Right side, Germany will bring it in. Cutting in a Sotio around the net. They have it going again in there on this line change. Here comes a shot from a sharp angle. Stop, big rebound, and it's covered by Madano. And he got it away for Hall. Rafalski backing up the play, shot it in. The USA is changing as Germany is back to find it. Schubert. Long pass was a dandy up there on the right side. Kutzer trying to cut back in front. Backhands it around the net. And it's grabbed by Bill Guerin of the USA. Out to wait. He and Hull were going up there. Hull was going off. He decides to change his mind and stay on. Now it's cleared down the ice and Hull will leave. Chelios back. Nearing the nine minute mark of the second period. Still 2-0 USA. Not a big lead, not the one they were looking for coming up against Germany today. Earlier, Belarus upset Sweden. Sweden defeated Canada 5-2. Now they have been eliminated. And Belarus will play some more hockey in these Olympics. What an effort by the Belarus team, too. Down that wing, Kruzer cuts it back. Here's a chance. And Richter got a stick on that shot. And it was lifted high. Suter took his man out after he took the shot. Kunza charging him. Kunza now all the way back in his own zone. Plays it up. Off the boards to center. Chelios was waiting for that. Got it as far as that center red line. Hines took it and shot it back in. Richter out of the net. Goes to York to the other side. He was covered immediately. And the Germans keep the heat on. Looking for their first goal of the game. However, down near center is Amani. Ronick is up with him. Amani to Ronick. Amani scores! What a dandy piece of passing that was. Amani and Ronick. It is 3-0 USA. One of the highlights of that play will be the pass reception of Amande on his skate, up to his stick, and then the good passing that you talked about, Bob, took place. Over, back over. And then the goaltender is completely gone. The defenseman has to stop one of those two passes. If not, the goalie has no chance. So Ronick and Amante resurrect a little Chicago passing combination. And it was perfect passing. They're offside on that rush. Just a little head of the puck on that move was Chris Drury, or he would have been home free. So another look at the goal. Amani took the pass. We didn't see it there. It was a clever move. And Earhart couldn't stop either one of the passes inside the hash marks. And so it was a tap-in for Tony Amati. He's got 22 goals in the NHL. He didn't score at all in Nagano. And that is his first one here at the Olympics in Salt Lake City. Seeliger guest ruining. And you couldn't blame him. The way he passed it back and forth, the two of them come at him. And the final pass was to the other side. Monty, and he got the goal, and down on the puck now is Mark Seeliger to hang on. 3 nothing USA on that latest scoring play at 9.42. Seeliger has to trust his defenseman to stop the cross-crease pass one of the two times. Or he can't possibly... Uh, make the play that he has to make. And the defenseman didn't, and Seeliger was out of position with no chance. They saw up once smartly by the USA again. Long shot in front, look out, gotta be a goal. You're not gonna stop John Leclerc when he has this much time to take a look at the net. It was a kind of a, kind of a surprise for him. It came to him, and he was all alone. And the USA now is scoring at will. The sixth goal of these Olympics. He goes to the front of the net right off the draw, and the puck goes right by the German defenseman Seidenberg, and then Leclerc has to kind of recover it, but then stuck it into the roof 
with no trouble. So after a stingy first period, USA leading one to nothing. Turns around now, they get two goals in 32 seconds. This latest by Leclerc. Here goes Leclerc to the net. He doesn't get the tip he's looking for to start with. Kicks it back up to his feet, and you can see, stuck it in without any trouble. Housley and Madan will pick up the assist. 10-14 was the time of that goal by John Leclerc, his sixth of the Olympics. He's hot again around the net, boy. There's not many people better than John Leclerc in close. He's so strong, the boot, big. Up the handle, USA again attacking. Seeliger very cool on the post on the short side and covering. Germany back out, looking for their first goal of this game. Nearing the 11 minute mark of the second period. Long pass gets up there for Drury again. Over the line with Deadmarsh. Deadmarsh was nailed, but right there to pick it up. Ralston kept going. Behind the net, they'll strap for it, and uh, the Germans will clear it. As far as the line, anyway, Ralston stopped his man. Germany changing. Chelios back. Swift pass up to center ice to Leclerc again. Comes right back into Richter. So Chelios will try it one more time. Tobias Abstrader, the four checker for Germany. Backs off now as he sees the speedy Madano coming away. Madano to the far side, got center, and rips it in for John Leclerc. Hall is also up there. Hall goes behind the net. The Germans try to find it there. They don't right away. And at the line, here's a shot by Madano. Turn and when they score. <laughs> Madano and Hull had turned away from everybody. Madano made the big 360 and ripped it. And there was Hull again. Well, the Germans controlled the Madano line in the first period where they had no points and three shots. But that is over now. And it looks to me like the Germans are going to make a goaltending change here. But through the legs, Brett Hall backhands it through his legs right here. And it goes in the far corner. And a goaltending change coming up right here for Germany. It'll be Robert Mueller who will come in for Germany. Seeliger gets a well-deserved respite. He's, he's had a great, great Olympics. He stopped an awful lot of shots in these games for Germany. But now, three goals in two minutes and five seconds by the USA. And the coach makes a change. Hans Zaw. Hall's fourth from Adano and Leclerc at 11.47. York is up now, coming at the new goalie. Takes it around the net. Ronick knocked it down in the corner. York moves up along the boards. Now they have to back off as Germany gets it out of the zone. And Hines plays it in over the USA line. And he and McKay turn to go off as the Germans change. Cody from center ice. Winding up and hit the line before he shot it. It's deflected high into the crowd. 5-0 USA. Introducing new Special K Red Berries for those who love cereal with their strawberries. With a crunchy new flake, mm, and strawberries right inside the box. Special K Red Berries. The new Vector Energy Bar. Eat or be eaten. Amante from Ronick. Leclerc from Housley Madano. Hall from Madano and Leclerc. Three goals in 2.05. 5 nothing USA. And boy, they're wound up now. Amante's backhander on the mark. That's steered away easily by Mueller. Germany not able to find a goal in the game yet. And we've played 13-30 of the second period. Germans, Jan Bender ripped it back of the USA goal. Hesch comes in, turns around the net, and leaves it for his partner. He got it out to him. Then Storm turned away again and comes over to help Hesch. Three of them in the corner. Marco Sturm went after it. 
Far side, it'll be Usor who takes it. In for Storm. Hesh rounding the net, too. Now he tries to move it out, but there's no room given. Knocked down by Sturm, however. Pushed off the puck. Sturm stays with it. And all over him was Rafalski. And the USA now will recover and get the puck up. Through center, Ralston dumped it up to the line. Denmark comes in with Young. Turn back. And Benda brings it up off the boards. That'll be an icing call, though, as he shoots it all the way down the ice. USA 5, Germany nothing. Second period. employed more Olympic hopefuls than any other company in the world. Home Depot, proud sponsor of the Canadian Olympic team. 5.15 left to play in the second period here at the East Centre in Salt Lake City. These Olympics winding down. We're heading for playoff round. Everybody fighting for their lives now. A loss, and you have been eliminated. Sweden was eliminated earlier today, right here at the East Center. Surprised by a strong-hearted Belarus team. Pretty good play up through center by Reichel. To get in, pass, gets in there all right, but Ludeman couldn't control it. Center. Cleared back out before Heinz could touch it. And Germany back to recover. 4.30 left in the period. Pass was in behind the Kunza. Chelios will stride back of his own goal. He and Pody together now on the defense for the USA. Wait, a high one will be bounced down to the corner for Garen. Garen bumped in there. He was hit by Kruzer at center. Miller flipped it back. Got it handed back by Leach and comes over center before shooting it in wide of the net. They come in after it, and we'll get a chance to play it. It took a funny hop off the dasher and got up high over the glass. Well, the U.S. will play Russia on Friday to see which team goes to the gold medal game on Sunday. And, uh, of course, Belarus will play the winner of the game tonight between Canada and Finland. USA have now outscored their opponents 21 to 3 here in Salt Lake. And Miller is back at his own line with Brian Leach. Miller played a lot, has played well for the USA. Shot the puck over the line, they'll come back for him. York stepped in front, gave it to Leach, and Leach just rolled it into the zone. Jan Bender comes back. Sure, York doesn't get to it. And Germany turns it up on the boards to the line at center. Long lead pass gets in there. McKay cutting inside. Got nailed pretty well. Shot on the boards. And McKay tried to keep it in. He didn't wait. But they tag up, so the play is allowed to continue. And Germany looking tired now. They're changing. USA relentless pressure. Fast skating team. This American outfit. They're ahead five to nothing in this game, and we now have three minutes left to play in the second period. Well, the Germans have to be discouraged. Their 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 game plan was to keep the score close to the end of the third period. Here's the hit, Aaron Miller. So it was a good body check. As you can see there, Aaron Miller, a University of Vermont graduate, along with John Leclerc, who also went to Vermont. Germany moving the puck up. Shot through center by Rumrich. They get it in deep up there on the play. Germans just look for it. Ustorf didn't find it, but around the net, Hesch, one hand on the stick. Won't do. Housley is hanging on to him. Housley comes after him a second time. Rumrich is bumped. Hesch on the boards. Rumrich gets out, but does not get a shot. 
from the line. A shot missed on the short side, and that'll get back down the ice. And Seidenberg is back. For Germany, turns inside his own blue line. And away they go. Schubert passes one up across center ice. Sokio brings it in. Drop back. Intercepted at the line. And Madano did that. And he's up with Leclerc. Back to Madano. Shot missed on the short side. The Germans pick it up in the neutral zone and dump it in over the line. Chelios watched it go high off the glass. In behind the net, Marco Sturm plays it back off the boards. It'll be Hull who backs it up in his own zone. Lost Here's a chance and a great save by Richter. That's the best chance the Germans have had. Len Sokio coming into the game with three goals and three assists and thought he had one there. And he led the German team in the preliminary round in goals, assists, and points, and gets a good chance here to break the goose egg. But Richter, who has not been very busy with 17 shots and not a lot of them tough ones, made a nice stop getting out at the edge of the crease to make sure there was nothing much to look at. 137 left in the second period. Shots are 25 by the USA now. Germany, that 17 number. Unable to beat Richter yet. Here's another attempt. Knocked down in front. Richter was out. The puck was loose. Chelios is doing a good job covering up. Kutzer is there. And the referee is going to call a penalty on the play. And it's against the USA, I'm pretty sure. Even though they had possession for a while, he didn't move it. Now he calls it. I think it's going to be called uh, for falling on the puck or putting your hand on the puck. I don't know who's going to get it. Doug Waits walking over here, so he may be the guilty party. Let's have a look at it here. It's a mad scramble in the crease in front of Richter. He can't find it. And right there is Doug Waite. I don't know why they gave him the penalty for hooking. So Germany with a power play. That's their very first of the game. Let's see if they can get a goal. Here's a shot. That's blocked. Miller went after it up on the boards. Madano, it gets out to center ice. They have to hurry to get back on side. They tag up and they shoot the puck in. We are in the final minute of the second period. Jochen Hesch chopped the puck into the corner. Hesch comes up to pick it up in the corner. Leach is on top of him right away, but they get it back to the line, and Kunza plays it over for Erhoff. Kunza winds up again to Erhoff, and he takes a look at the net. That shot, a young block that, it wasn't very hard anyway. Drifted in behind the net. The USA will clear it now, as Scott Young is allowed to take all kinds of time to skate the center, and then just roll it in with 20 seconds left to play in the second period. 5-0 is the score. USA in front, getting three goals in a span of 2.05 in the second period. Shot into the zone again. Hull has two of the goals. Down the ice in the German zone once more. Ludeman had to hurry back. He did. And the buzzer goes to win the second period. Tough period for the Germans, though. They held in pretty well in the first down a goal. That was neat. But then... They got to the goalie, Mark Seeliger, and he had to be replaced, given a well-deserved rest. Robert Mueller is in now for Germany after two periods here. East center, 25-19. The shot's in favor of the USA, and they are ahead 5 to nothing. The 2002 Olympic Winter Games on TSN are brought to you by Labatt Blue on the road to gold with Canada's Olympic team. And by Visa, worldwide partner of the 2002 Olympic Winter Games. <laughs> okay, so this is great. We find out all the details, we finalized everything, so let's proceed forward. And you know what? It's a great opportunity. So, I'll get them to look at this in the morning. And I suppose you're going to want this in writing. Ah, we'll check on it. See ya.
pay you a hundred dollars for 15 minutes work. hundred bucks, 15 minutes work. So IT is fully staffed? Yes, sir. Application development, hosting. Hello. It's all covered. Need help with your IT outsourcing? EDS. IT outsourcing solved. Did it hurt? Did what hurt? When you fell from heaven. <laughs> Are those astronaut pants? Because your butt is out of this world. All right, look, that's it. Somebody call the cops, because this girl just stole my heart. Hey, honey. I'm sorry I'm late. Oh, hey. Here's the dentine ice that you wanted. Sorry, I didn't know. <laughs> Hi, <I'm> Mark. <laughs> Julie. Thanks. <laughs> dedicated athletes who inspire us. Congratulations. Oh, Canada. Brought to you by Tim Hortons, the coffee you can count on. Canada sent two women to the line in the 500-meter short track speed skating final in Nagano in 1998. Just one would finish. While Isabel Charest crashed to the ice, Annie Perot took advantage of the opening and sped away to gold. It was an unexpected triumph for the Quebec skater, but well-deserved, as Perot celebrated with her sister, Marise. Perot would later add a relay bronze as well. The Canadian men got the early jump in the 5,000-meter relay and weren't to be denied. What I enjoyed the most about it was that I was able to share the moment with three other guys. Canada built a huge lead and held on. We took control of the race and uh, we stuck to our plan. Just stay on your feet, Mark. We're in the clear here. Uh, you know, we got, a, we got a gold medal in front of us if we just stay on our feet. Mark Gagnon brought home the gold for teammates Eric Bedard, Francois Drolet, and Derek Campbell. After a series of relay misfortunes and near misses in Olympic competition, Canada earned the right to stage a victory celebration. And tonight on TSN, bonus coverage for you. I can guarantee one thing, this will not be boring. Short track rarely is. We've got live coverage of the women's 3,000 meter relay and the men's 1,500 meter final. That is tonight, live on TSN, 10 p.m. Eastern time, 7 p.m. Pacific. We'll be back to Salt Lake City right after this. Where are you going to find your best insurance deal? Where else? Insurarama! 800,000 square feet of quality brand name insurance from auto to condo, from boat to business. Look, compare, choose from a huge selection. Everything is under one gigantic roof. And insur Insurarama doesn't really exist, but we do. We're your independent insurance brokers. Your best insurance is an insurance broker.
the airbag. A safety glass. Or the rollover test. Or the crash test dummy. What if GM hadn't invented the concrete highway divider? Would you still feel safe getting into a car? As the world's largest automobile maker, we're not only committed to improving our cars, we're committed to improving all cars. <laughs> okay, so this is great. We've ironed out all the details, we've finalized everything, so let's proceed forward. And you know what? It's a great opportunity. So, I'll get them to look at this in the morning, and I suppose you're gonna want this in writing. Ah, yeah, we're shook on it. I helped her in school, you know, pass her classes and everything. Well, I, I took some photos. <laughs> yeah. Uh, gave her rides to the mountain. Yeah. I Cut. fed her lunch. Oh, yeah. This is what Natasha looks like when she's concentrating. <laughs> Don't want to think she looks like that. We've grown up with each other, so yeah. I can't imagine what yeah. any of us would be like if we hadn't known each other. Get Roots Winter Wear now at Petro Canada. A portion of the proceeds goes to our athletes. Tomorrow on TSN, more live hockey coverage for you. The bronze medal game in women's ice hockey. The Finns took the bronze four years ago in 1998, and they'll try to do the same here in Salt Lake City. They'll take on Sweden. That's at 2 p.m. Eastern time, 11 a.m. Pacific. Women's hockey, bronze medal game, live tomorrow on TSN. How does lightning smell? Smell this. New Speed Stick Lightning, an intense new scent that smells good. Nice. Tough 24-hour protection, a scent inspired by the power of nature. When Canada wins at the Olympic Winter Games, show your pride and show your visa card. Because every time Canada wins a medal in Salt Lake City, there's more you can win. And every time you use your visa card from now until the end of the games, you get another chance to win. When Canada wins, you can win. Imagine creating more usable freezer space than ever before and baking with perfectly even heat. Whirlpool, just imagine. Whirlpool is a proud supporter of extraordinary Canadian women athletes. Curlers like Janique Bertelot, 2001 Canadian and world champion Colleen Jones, and their teams. Whirlpool, just imagine. Now, Skip developed an interesting habit at work last week, didn't you, Skip? All of a sudden, he has to print everything in color. I tell him, Skip, it's about the money. Even our white papers are in color. Actually, Mr. Arnold, uh, color isn't that expensive anymore. There's even an affordable color printer that's faster than 90% of the printers out there. Skip's ahead of the curve. Service specialists install more than hardware and software. They install possibilities. Because life's full of great moments. 
Why not upgrade them? Future Shock. You'll like what the future has in store. What is the scent of an avalanche? Smell this. New Speed Stick Avalanche. An intense new scent that smells good. Cool. Tough 24 hour protection. A scent inspired by the power of nature. My man. Here's a look at the scoring summary. After 40 minutes of play, it was a tight game after the first period, but the floodgates are now officially open. Brett Hall made it 2 0, then Tony Amante with his first goal uh, in the Salt Lake City Olympics. He didn't have any in Japan. And then a second by Brett Hall makes it 5 0. They're getting ready to go again at the E Center for third period action. We'll have that right after this. Cadillac CTS. Breakthrough. Did you put it on? I didn't put it on. I didn't put it on. Well, I'm not drinking it. Not sure how fresh your coffee is? At Tim Hortons, we make a new pot every 20 minutes, so it's guaranteed to always be fresh. Tim Hortons, the coffee you can count on. Oh, I made that last night. <laughs> Herb Brooks has his team up five to nothing as we get ready for the third period here. And it looks as if this will be the last time we'll get a look at this German team. Tomato to come back to overtake the USA now. I don't think so. Five nothing. Huge lead by the US of A. Big second period, they scored four times. Three goals in the span of two minutes and five seconds. They really caught fire. And the second goaltender for Germany is called on, Mark Seliger. Left the net, and Robert Mueller is in now. The behold, Leclerc Madonna line was silent in the first period, but they had seven points, eight shots on goal, and a plus six. Combined in the second. So Germany back to pick it up in their own zone on the power play and moving up to center ice. Doug Wade in the box and has 20 seconds left. Benda from center ice. Jan Benda gets the zone. Ripped it on the boards in deep is Ronick and Chelios. Germans pick it up, get it back to Benda. He'll fire a shot in there. Nice pad save by Richter going down. And that butterfly style most of the goalies are using these days. Got the left pad on the ice for that one. Denmark, I'm sorry, not Doug Wade, on the ice after the penalty served. And here's a long shot by Ludemann, grabbed by Richter. That's a nice glove save from a Ludemann shot. Richter shot it out and grabbed it. It was a hard shot. Here it is right here. And Richter, no screen, that was helpful, and he was at the top of the crease, and then he makes the catch. And he has not a lot to do, but he's made a half a dozen strong stops. They saw off to the line. Cleared up on the boards and down the ice, and here's Leclerc centering one. Big stop by the goalie, Miller. What a nice pass that was as the USA were flying in and Mueller made a dandy save. Leclerc got it over to Madano, who gets a stick on it, but can't get it up in the air, and the sprawling Mueller makes the save. The 21-year-old who's playing in his first Olympics plays for Mannheim. Mueller does in the German League. USA, another face-off deep in the German zone. Won by Erhoff and the Germans. He's around the net, banked it on the boards with Kunza playing it up. Got it across center ice and they rolled it into Richter. He leaves it for Miller. That's Hull over there. He won't get his stick near that. And he's gone off as they are changing. Now Leach comes back. Miller the other way. Up on the boards. Young flipped it away for Madano too far. Kunza up to center. Long shot in. To the left of Richter, and it comes all the way off the boards in the corner and out. Young tries a shot. That slap shot hit a stick and went wide of the net. 
Germany back, Abstrader. Another shot from close in. Abstrader takes it and moves back. Down to center ice they go. Up over the line with Kutzer trying to cut inside. He goes around the net with it. Comes out. And now is trapped out near the line. But he gets loose again. Trying to roll it in on the net. It hit a stick. Fired it behind the net. And that's Housley. And Housley will just leave it behind the goal. 2.20 gone in the third period. Puck is shot in. Hines brings it in for Germany. Low tough with him. He lost the puck. Ronick reached across center. Gets it over the German line with Bill Guerin, who dropped it. Pody was up. Had it poke checked away. And Chelios was there to pick it up. Long shot in off the stick of Bueller. And Seidenberg. Around the goal for Germany. Starts them back out. Okay, went up to center ice and then turned to go off as they're changing again at the three-minute mark of the third period. 5-0 USA on their way to winning this game. Moving on to Friday. And a big game for them Friday. <laughs> yes, US-Russia. What a contest that'll be. Lifted high in by Pody. Tonight, Canada and Finland. The loser gone. Here's York. Knocked down and wide of the net. York had a stick lifted just as he was about to shoot. Fired in by Ludemann. Germany changing again. Leach around the goal. Boy, he's skating well. Leach forced to turn around with it. Brian Leach of the New York Rangers. Drops it back and gets it again. Across center. Fires it in wide of the net. That was a good shoot in by Leach. Drury failed to take advantage, and two Germans are away to center. Rumrish in after the loose puck. He's bumped by Leach going in. He had Ustorf up with him, but the States clear it back down. Kunza shot it through center. Stefan Ustorf up there for Jürgen Rumrish and Jochen Hesch broken up and cleared back in. Ustorf is coming back. Good back checking to pick it up and get the puck back out to center ice for Germany. They'd love to get a goal. Played 4.30 of the third period. Leclerc tossed it in behind the goal. Daniel Kunza comes in front of his own net. Then gets the line. Shoots it to a man at the far side, but Hesch was turning to go off. So then the USA is back to pick it up in their own zone. Housley's pass. Chopped down and brought back in by Kruzer. No shot from him. Forced to go to the corner. Housley beat him to it. And Rafalski tossed it ahead, and here comes Mike Madano streaming in. Got it off the boards behind the net. That comes back out to center ice. That's Abstrader turning around. Kruzer runner and shot it back in. Abstrader with him. Then at the blue line had to back off as he saw the states coming out. And it was cleared all right by Ralston. He and Ronick with Young. Three of them in after it. Okay, moved forward, got the puck out for Germany. Suter to his own blue line. The center and shot the puck in. Schubert takes it behind the net for Germany with the states changing. Down to center, Lot to the other side. It got in all right, but too far for McKay. USA, their own zone. York. Heavy hit. It was thrown at him by McKay, but McKay went down. And he's headed off now. 6.08 gone. Third period. 5 0. USA. High one in there for Mueller. Shot it to the boards himself. And the Germans get it up to center. That is Silkio coming in on the wing along the boards. A shot to the corner. Germany trying to get something going to get on the scoreboard. In close, it was knifed away by Sokio behind the net. And the USA get it out to center ice again. York lost it there, and he heads off now. They continue to change. Ludemann brought it back in. Hit the side of the goal with Richter on the post and the short side. 6.50 gone in the third. 
Germany back up. Fired in by Seidenberg around the net. The other side, that's Ustorf on there again, blogging plenty of ice time again for Germany. He centers Hetch and Rumrich. They're on again. He's the captain. Ustorf is. Gets the puck in over the line with Hesch. Hesch to the corner. Up behind him, Ustorf. Tries to set somebody up in front. Gets a shot himself and came close. That was a good effort by Stefan Ustorf. But it's still 5 0 USA. 7 30 gone in the third period. Shots are close. 27 25. But the USA now is just back there and coasting. They'll win this game and move on. They have their hopes high, as you know, for the big medal in these Olympics. But it will not be easy. German zone again on the boards. Reichel couldn't move it out. That is Brian Ralston, number 12, knocked it loose. Germans do not clear it. Another chance for the defenseman to move up and get a shot. Chelios did that. It was off a leg and wide. And he backs off in a hurry. Now he'll take it in his own zone. The veteran Chris Chelios, the captain of the USA team. Nice play to get it up there through center to Chris Drury. He lost it. Schubert turns around the net for Germany. And away they go. Down across the USA line. Cutting in hard on that far side is Lot. Couldn't center it. USA give it away, trying to make that long pass click again. But it was stopped at center ice by McKay, and he shot it in. US come up the Germans again. Drury shot it in and heads off, changing. Germany in their own zone as we approach the halfway mark of the third period. 5-0 USA. Explosion in the second period with four good-looking goals. A load back. Bump Roenick. Germans move away. Hines coming out down the far side. Shoots it in. Heads off to the German bench. USA's Pody lifting a high one down. York stopped that off to the side and just flipped it out on the boards. Ronick comes up to cut it off. Threw it behind the net for York. He's hustling in there. York banked it on the boards back. A long shot. And Mueller handles that and hangs on. Keith Kachuk is not playing tonight. He will play Friday, they tell me. And Doug Wade has not played a shift in the third period. He hurt his hand in the second period. And I'm sure they're keeping him out for... Uh, obvious reasons. You remember he had a penalty at the end of the second period and I did say that he was in the penalty box as we mentioned earlier we don't see the penalty box from our broadcasting booth here at the East Center but he was not out for the start of the third period. He was slashed Harry on the wrist halfway through the second and uh, he, he stayed in and uh, Deadmarsh served the rest of his penalty. So the USA arresting these two. Kachuk and wait. Hoping they're not injured. Seriously, Madonna. Second shot for him, won't come. Mueller stopped the first one, and then no rebound. Mike Madonna was one of four American players who are enjoying a two-point night. Two assists for Madonna, two goals for Hull, although they took one away from him. I didn't hear who they gave it to. Roland Leclerc have two points, one goal and one assist. Mike Madano moving better as this Olympic tournament goes on. 9.45 left in the third period. 5-0 your score, the USA. Pesch gets in front of the net, try to shot. And Richter is fighting hard now to preserve that shutout. He made that save and scrambled, diving out. And the play was stopped. 
problem with looking for a job is that a job isn't actually what you're looking for. What you're really looking for is a chance. A chance to be happy. A chance to be something you've always wanted to be. So all you seekers, all you searchers, all you people who know that absolutely no one ever looked back on their life and said, gee, I wish I'd played it safe. All of you, get on board. Let's go. Post your resume today on monster.ca. You the monster. Another good scoring chance for Stefan Orstar. And about 30 feet, ripped the shot, and Richter stopped that. They've now made it official, Harry, you thought they would. Chelios was given that goal, which originally was credited to Brett Hall. Chelios then gets his first goal of the Olympics. It was unassisted at 46 seconds in the second period. Richter has stopped 59 of 61 shots now in his games in these Olympics. At the line, Seidenberg could not keep it in. Andreas Renz backed up. Puck up the center ice. Ustov and Abstrader get the puck in again. Down comes Kreutzer on the boards. In the corner, Reichel try to find it. And it's Pody of the USA pulling away from Martin Reichel. USA pass it well and get out the center. Ralston takes it in. Gets as far as the line, leaves it for Tony Amati. He is offside. And we played 11-16 of the third period. Well, the Americans are trying to get through this uh, period without uh, being scored on and without getting anybody hurt. And the Germans are a little more active at trying to score a goal and they have had some chances. But uh, the deficit is far too great to overcome in one period. Shots remain close, 29-26 USA. Germany has had their chances, no doubt about it. But the USA, of course, the stronger of these two teams. They've allowed only three goals, and then this is nearly the end of the fourth game. In Nagano, they allowed 14 goals in four games. And had a disastrous Olympic experience in Japan. But things have turned around for the USA this time. Pass in front, Scott. Young took a shot right on and selling, or rather, Mueller made the stick save and then cleared it. Young was all alone, too, walking in. He can shoot it. That's Suter. And here, then, is Deadmarsh. Deadmarsh coming in there, and Housie was up with him on the play. But the Germans break it up and come back out. Benda's long pass was good down the far side for Sturm. Sturm cuts in on goal, he's in close, around the net, wrap around, he won't get a shot, now he does, but there was too many people in front of the net, he had no chance to hit the goal. Benda in his own zone, Jan Benda comes out with a lead pass up across the blue line to Sarice, and it's fired in by Lutz, he heads off, and Ricker will slow the pace, we play 12.42. Well, the United States are going to glide into the position to win one game and get to the gold medal, which would be really something for the third straight Olympics to get into the gold medal like they did in 1960 in Squaw Valley, 1980 in Lake Placid. But they're going to have to get by a pretty good Russian team to do it. Nice save by Ricker on that quick shot from inside the blue line. Ricker saw it and made a nice glove save. He's sharp when he has to be. USA in their own zone again, controlling these face-offs as they've been doing this throughout the game. Ricker in his third game in the Olympics is just seven minutes away from a win now. And he hopes a shutout. You see, Germans are not quitting. Seidenberg gets up. Seidenberg shoots it in wide of the goal. Ricker made sure it didn't get up front off the boards. And the USA is back to pick it up. And LeClear will bring it up to center ice. He and Rafalski together. The defenseman helping him with that pass in front of the net and intercepted in there by Zeidenberg. Zeidenberg again, side of his own goal. Lost it. Amandi turns with it. Suter comes up, gives it to Amandi, and that's taken away and cleared out by the Germans to center ice. Abstrader couldn't knock it down. It was high over his head. 6.15 remaining 
in the third period. 5-0 your score, USA. Bill Guerin up. It's tapped away and back out over the line as Amati was ready to drift one. And now from center ice, gloved by Mueller. Puts it back in play, the Germans add straighter. Gets it up over the line with Kritzer coming in. They are offside. And Strader just circles with it. Well, Canada plays Finland in a few hours. And of course, uh, the uh, the plum other than advancing is to play a surprising Belarus team instead of the Swedish team that everyone thought would win uh, in the earlier game today. USA got four goals in the second period. But when Mueller came on for Seeliger, really not a lot of work. He's faced only seven shots since coming in at 11.47 of the second period. That's McKay with the puck. A little short pass for Benda. They get it up there. Big shot by Lotz and cleared out by the USA. 5.20 left, third period. Ronick again. Easily handles the puck away from his check. Carries away from Schubert a second time. Got it out front to Scott Young. He centers. York fanned on it. And the Germans are called for icing as they shoot the puck all the way down the ice. We played 14.57 of the third period. 5-0 USA. Oleg Kolzig, who's enjoying the Olympics. He can't play for Germany because he's got a bad knee. Tom Barrasso, the third goalie, the one that's not dressing tonight, but played very strongly in the game that he played. Pody and Rafalski are back for the USA. Here they come again. They're passing the puck well. Puck is shot in. Drury! And a nice save by Mueller. Got the hand up. Drury had all kinds of time, and he waited long enough for sure and thought he had the top corner. And a shot off a stick dribbled in as Housley pumped it at the goalie. And Robert Mueller is doing okay since coming on in the second. Excuse me, ma'am. Can I have a moment of your time? True or false? I enjoy frosting in the morning. True. Raise the roof. Try to remain professional, sweets. True or false, sir? Eating nutritious food is important to me. True. Bravo. Add a notch to the wheat's tally. Whatever. Okay, that's 43 likes for the sweet side and 43 likes for the wheat side. So what have we learned? I've learned time at the mall is better spent buying shirts. Shirts? You don't wear clothes and you have no arms. Speak for yourself. Germany on the attack here, looking to break the shutout. They won't win the game, they know that. But they want to save some face and get a goal on Mike Richter. Mueller at the other end has had nine saves now since he came on in the second period. They have not beaten him. And the latest chance there was Drury. He had a dandy chance, and he's the only player on the U.S. team who has not, Harry, registered a point yet. But he'll get one soon. You know what Drury can do if they ever won the gold medal? He's won a Stanley Cup. He's won an NCAA championship. He's won the Little League Sir World Series in baseball. And a gold medal would be three terrific championships to be part of those four teams, would they not? What a medal piece. Kreutzer <laughs> oh. in his own zone around the net. Abstrader takes the pass. Tobias Abstrader makes the play back across the line for Benda, who rips the puck in for Germany. Abstrader comes up on the boards. He and Kreutzer try to find it. They keep it in for a moment. Knocked down by the States and out into center ice. They move up. Denmarsh tried to feed it back in front, but it goes back down the ice. 3-10 left to play in the third period. Housley gets the zone and turns to go off to the USA bench. Dead Marsh was in for checking with Brian Ralston. The Germans get by the two of them and up to center ice. Stop though was a lot at the USA blue line. Garen moves up. He didn't play it. Ralston does, bringing it in with Tony Amati. Amati takes it off the boards. 
Looks back out in front. He sees Guerin, but too late to pass it to him. And they take it away from him and get it back into center ice. Hody will come back in his own zone. Now he calls for Rafalski to play. 2.30 left in the third. Back out to center ice. Hody all the way with it this time, and I mean all the way, but offside was Amani at the far side, and that was a nice rush by Tom Pody. He's played well for the USA. Well, with uh, two and a half minutes roughly left, it could be the second shutout of these Olympics. Dunham shut Finland out 6-0. That was the first shutout in 10 years since uh, 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 American Olympic team up shut out someone at Albertville, Poland it was. And Richter could match Mr. Dunham's work. Katan turns behind his own goal, leaves it now for Kunza. Kunza gets it away from the line and all the way to center ice. Carries himself. Two minutes left to play in the game. 5 0 USA. I shouldn't think there'd be overtime in this one. <laughs> Not unless they can score a touchdown, the Germans. And the crowd is chanting USA again. They're having a good time here in Salt Lake. The USA keeps rolling along. Their next test, though, it will be their toughest. They meet Russia on Friday. The winner will go on to play for the gold medal on Sunday. Canada plays tonight against Finland. And that'll be an interesting matchup. And let's not forget, Bob, to wish the Canadian women's team good luck. They will play the Americans for the gold medal tomorrow, I believe. Yes, tomorrow it is. Right here at the East Center. Drury made a bid for his first point. It comes to the line. Leach hands it off. They know that Drury is looking for a point to round it out for everybody. And here he is with the puck in there. They'll try to set him up or try to score for him after a pass. Erhoff for Germany gets it out. 40 seconds left in the game. Still a shutout, but Germany is up there now. Now turning is Chris Drury. He gave it up. The long shot by Erhoff didn't miss by much. It was to the top corner and just missed it. USA back out with 25 seconds left. The center ice, Drury will go to the bench. Leclerc will poke it into the corner. 16 seconds left. You think the crowd here loves this or what? I'll let them take you down for a 5-0 shutout. That's what it's gonna be. And that's what it is. Only team on the men's side not to have lost a game at these Olympics. Three wins and a tie. The USA is looking strong. 5-0 today over Germany. The Germans give them credit. A good Olympics for them. They moved on. And they had a good first period here today. But you knew it couldn't be completed, Harry. Well, it took a little while for the American team to prove that they were far superior. Give the Germans credit. They hung in there. They could stick with their game plan until they got down a couple of goals. Then they had to go after some offense. Richter made some saves, but it was just a team that was too deep in talent, speed, and the Americans are going to advance to play the Russians to see who plays in the gold medal. Germany, nine shots in the third. USA, eight shots. Total, 33-28 for USA. They shut out Germany here, and they'll move on. The score was 5-0. Back to you, Dave. Thank you, Bob Cole. So that means semifinal is now set between USA and Russia. A semifinal rematch from 1980 in Lake Placid. And make no mistake about it, the most entertaining hockey game so far here in Salt Lake City was a round-robin meeting between the United States and Russia. They will go at it again, and we will show it to you live on TSN. Friday, 6.15 p.m. Eastern Time, 3.15 Pacific, right here on TSN. Lots more right after this.
The 2002 Olympic Winter Games on TSN. Brought to you by Home Depot, a proud sponsor of the Canadian Olympic team. And by Petro Canada, helping our Olympic athletes since 1988. Expectation on our team is probably far greater than any other team in this tournament. Along the boards, a two-on-one Canada. Korea is a man open. Korea's in, but the shot is taken by Lemieux. Scores. Mario Lemieux beats Hashik again. I don't think we dislike those countries as much as they hate us. They love beating us. Lost it in there. Cameron shot rebound. Great save, Broder. We got to get that same feeling towards them. Tension in this one, baby. Pressure by Canada here. Flurry goes behind the goal. Hangs on, gets it up to it, scores! Live at the East Centre now as we get set for the final quarterfinal of the day. Team Finland versus Team Canada. And the road to the gold medal game is obviously paved nicely for either one of these. The Canadians uh, gunning for this chance to meet possibly the U.S. or the Russians and Team Finland. Looks like a, an easy roadblock in Belarus next. Uh, do you think they're going to get caught looking ahead to the gold medal game tonight? Yes, uh, they should look ahead with these two teams. They should be ready. By the way, I want to say a guy drove from McCreary, Manitoba straight all the way from Manitoba here to see the games. Anyhow, I thought I'd get him in. It's dead in here. That's the strangest it thing. It's the funniest thing. This I think they're all hung over. That's the only thing I can think of. But uh, it is really dead in here. But I think, that, as I said the last time in that last game, I think the Canadian team, well, I know the Canadian teams are starting to get starting to get character, and they're starting to pull together. You watch. It's be like the 72. Remember we started out bad in the 72, everybody talking about us? And we're going to come on. We're going to win these next two games, and we're going to be there. Four and four in Olympic history. Finland's always given Canada a tough time because yeah. I think they were the team that Canada looked past. They always had their minds yeah. set on the Americans or the Russians. Well, the one thing they have to watch is don't go along. The longer the game goes zero zero, and these guys get confidence and confidence, they got to get at them right away. Do like the old Montreal Canadiens used to do: blitz them the first ten minutes, get them out of the game, get their confidence out of there. And but the longer it goes, nothing, nothing, the more confidence they get. Go at them, blow them out the first ten minutes. One other bit of news, Don. I want to show the Finland roster here. I know it'll oh. interest you, but Keith Kachuk, John Davidson was saying, doesn't look like Kachuk's coming no. back at all. Oh, so that was a good knee. That was nobody ever talked about that. That was a beautiful. Beautiful knee. I knew it was a knee right away. Got him right up in the groin. Boy, that was a ban. I knew he wouldn't be back. Vladimir Malikov got him. It was like Alfie Samuelson. And, uh, yeah. Oh, Cam by Neely. the way, Alfie, Alfie, are you watching? You're giving me a hard time when you beat us before. And I said, you guys will choke in the end. You'll find a way to lose. I just thought maybe you'll Your exact watching. words, you always win the big ones. I don't yeah. think you said choke well, dead. You're getting carried away here. Here's Finland. Oh, you called me a liar? No. Well, you, you went out in the hall and I stayed in the bathroom. Oh, okay. All right. I won't go into that. Here we go. Here's the roster of the forwards. They've moved Alto up, which is a bit of a surprise. They had Sammy Kaplan and Don between Solani and Lettinen. Oh, and, boy. Yes, but he's their best uh, scorer. The NHL is 21st overall. Kapanen, so he moved down. These yep. are not set, by the way, for sure. We do know that's the starting line. Lettinen, great checking forward, and Tamo Solani on the right side. Pat Quinn said he'd put Pronger and McGinnis on him. I don't know if he was fibbing me or fibbing the Finns. Uh, do you think that's the pair you'd put up against the, well, the best offensive tough. Finns? If you start matching against a team like that, you might throw the team off. Any defenseman we got out there now can hold him. By the way, Hagman, Marty Hagman, uh, played for me in Boston. He was a pretty good player. That's his son, of course, uh, playing there on the left-hand side. The defense for the Finns, Pat also said he knows his defense, Lume and Berg. He says, I've told Yerke for 20 years he overhandles the puck, so they're going to really put the pressure on him. And Berg, he says, is a kid who does throw it away. So that's, if there's a weak pair there, that's it. Salo, of course, is uh, the Ottawa Center is great on the point with well, Yanni What's he playing for Toronto for if they're so weak and bad? Well, no, he just said he knows his weakness. Oh, oh, Inside stuff oh, that Pat has. Oh, I see. Okay. But, and the other tidbits, uh, Lindros' shoulders, okay. Well, Bob and Harry may want to expound upon yeah. what Canada has. The lines, I understand, Coley, for Canada stay the same. Up to you and Harry for a, a preview of this quarterfinal. Pretty well stay the same, Ron. And we all hope, of course, that they skate as they did in the last game. They really got together, as Grapes just said, and were looking sharp. No doubt their best game. Now, remember, four years ago, Finland defeated Canada for the bronze medal over in Nagano, Japan, by a score of 3-2. to two. A little bit of a re revenge game, maybe, this one for Canada tonight. 
you got to remember something, Harry, and so has Canada in this game. They didn't start very well, these thin players. They lost 6 to nothing to the USA, but then regrouped and defeated Belarus 8-1 to and then defeated Russia 3-1. to So this could be one heck of a game tonight. Canada's only scored eight goals in three games. Only three forwards have scored. They needed a little more balance in that department. The Letton in line with uh, Solani uh, have scored five of the finished goals. I don't know whether they're going to play together, but they have to shut those down. And Broder has to outplay Erme. If so, it's Belarus and maybe the gold medal game. They're coming on the ice, Ron. we got to go get ready. Finland, here we are. Uh, Finland was last off the ice in the warm-up, and uh, they're first on the ice here. Canada should uh, take to the ice here any moment with uh, Martin Brodeur getting the nodding goal, and that's no surprise, Don. No, you got me chewing my gum. No, he was pretty sharp. He'll get sharper as it goes along. You know, when I think of these series, I think of that big save he made. I don't know who shot it, but right, right here, that was the save of this uh, series so far, boy. That kept us in that game, or it's all over there. Well, Mario Lemieux had a huge game, too, and he's got to be the biggest name left in the tournament. Brett Hall's having a whale of a tournament for Team USA, but when you consider Yarmer Yager and Dominic Hasek got blown out today, they've been great in Olympic history. Matt Sundin had to be the best player so far in the tournament. He's gone. This opens the door. Well, I'll tell you, everything is, we started off bad, and here we come on, but everything's fallen into place. It was good a tie. It got us that we weren't so high and mighty. We win the first two games, got us a tie, got us the Finns, got us Belarus next. It's, everything's working out right for us. We'll be standing, as Wayne said, we'll be standing there at the end. Yes, I'd love to ask you about Wayne Gretzky's uh, press conference. That'll be for the uh, coach's corner. Well, there's the draw. Sweden, of course, shocked by Belarus. 4-3 today. Tommy Salo. Poor Tommy Salo. Lucky he's got a gold medal or they'd lynch him in Sweden. The United States wins in a rout, and Maxima Finnegan off the lone goal on the dominator. Nikolai Habibulin made it stand up with that 41 save performance. So we're all set to go. Finland and Canada. Bob Cole and Harriet Neal will take it next. The referee in the game tonight will be Dennis LaRue, and the linesman Mike Speak and Rudolf Olof from Latvia. Canada in the white uniforms to our left. And Finland in the blue jerseys to our right. They line up on their respective blue lines now and uh, get set to go with the usual presentation by the two captains, one to each other, before the puck drop at center ice. Brodeur is the goalie for Canada in this one, the 250 goals against average in two games. He made 20 saves in a 3 3 tie, you remember, against the Czech Republic. Herme in goal for Finland, the 350 goals against average in two games. He was beaten by the USA six times in the first game. Curtis Joseph will be the backup for Canada. And Passy Nermanen, the backup for Herme for Finland. Herme had a great game against the Czech Republic. He allowed an early goal and then went 52 shutout minutes to get Finland the win against the Czech Republic earlier in the week. Something to look at, Harry. The Canadians' scoring percentage has not been great. They have eight goals on 108 shots. That's shots on goal, not counting those blocked and those that missed the net. And they're ranked 13 of 14 teams in these Olympics. 7.41 scoring percentage. And a team full of guys who can score, so maybe they're overdue. That could be a good stat if they can turn it around, but they've got to get their more people putting the puck in the net if they want to continue and play three more games. Canada will start in front of Brodeur, Al McInnes, Chris Pronger. Up front, it'll be Gagne, Iginla, and uh, Joe Sakic. And uh, for Finland, Teppo Numanen and Kimo Timonen. And on the forward line, as Ron McLean mentioned already, left to right, Yanni Lettinen, Alto, Alto, Artie Alto, and Temu Salani, number eight. Very difficult for Canada, the visiting team, to match lines like you might be able to win in the NHL with the quick face-off rule they have in international hockey. Pat Quinn might try it with the defenseman, but he said it's pretty tough to get a forward group and a defense pair out against the line all at night long. Well, here we go. We're into the heavy stuff now. The gold medal game will be Sunday. Now that's not too far away, is it? A lot of hockey between now and then. 
USA will take on Russia Friday. The winner of this game will take on Belarus Friday. And away we go. Canada with the puck. McInnes drove a shot up off a leg at the blue line. In around the net. Sakic couldn't find it. Aginla comes in. Sakic does find it and comes out. Aginla was there. Gagne shot. The other one was knocked away. And here's Temu Solani. Beautiful skater. He gets going. His winger didn't see the pass. Alto. And that'll be called back. Well, Mario Lemieux, the captain of Team Canada, really came through in the game that they tied to the Czech Republic 3-3 with two goals. And he proves the old adage, leadership is action, not position. And we saw lots of action from 66 in the last game Canada played. He's on now. And he wins the faceoff now. Foot and Niedermeyer. The defenseman get the puck up. Foot again. Takes it and shoots it in. Lemieux comes in around the net, looks for it. That is Korea on the other side. It bounced over his stick. And Finland will bring it back to center ice. Coming in on the wing is Eloranta. Shot is deflected. Up into the crowd. Finland's Adam, first chance. Adam Foot blocked the shot. And it went out of the rink, so the faceoff will be in the Canadian zone. Here's a look at it right here. Aki Berg lets it go. Foot takes it off the right foot. And up into the crowd. Rodeur had his eye on that all the way. Watched it float away into the crowd up behind him. Just underway here in Salt Lake City. This big game, Finland and Canada. The loser will be eliminated. Finland starting out. Eloranta tipped it up to center ice and gets open on the right side. But it's back inside too quickly for him, and Niedermeyer turns. A good pass goes to Korea. From center, he lifts it in. That's the sign of a change, and they rule he didn't hit center ice before throwing it in. That is icing. Well, in the NHL, they give you about two feet on a play like that, and Korea thought he had it and the backhand dump in, but... Linesman Mike Speak didn't agree with him, so we have another face-off in the Canadian zone. Comes back to the line, and the screen shot from Ninema. Blocked. Two four tuckers in hard, and they dig the puck out. Callio tries to center, hit the back of the net. Finland stays in there on it. Turning away from his check. Jovanovski couldn't move it too far. Now it gets out to center ice. Finland back in. They're looking better now, getting organized. And Calio shoots it in again. Blake around the goal. Long pass to Owen Nolan. He flips the puck in for Lindros. Boom, the shot on. Ferme makes his first step of the game. A loose puck on the side of the net. is centered! What a chance that was! Smith just missed the short side. Nolan gave it to him. Now Finns get it out down the ice. That'll be called icing when it hits the line. They'll bring that all the way back. Ryan Smith, who did not play a lot, perhaps because that cut over his left eye, as you can see, did not play a lot in game two. Owen Nolan gives him the puck, and Smith's being knocked down, and at the same time, he gets the shot away. Here's another look at it. A good scoring chance early in the period here. Smith couldn't get as much on it, falling as he might have wanted. Face off to the right of Herme. No score, just past the two-minute mark. The shot, left pad save. Shanahan can't keep it in. The Finns bring it up to center ice. It's cleared into the zone by Helmanen. And Brodeur is out. Backhands the puck with that big stick up on the boards to the line. And he's out of the net again. Missed it this time, it is centered. He got back in in time, and you and I cleared it for him. Flurry for chucking. So is Shanahan. Puck across center for the Finns again. And McGinnis was back to give it to Pronger. Back to McGinnis. A little room for him is taken away and shot back in by Helmanen of Finland. Pronger, once again, the pass. Dandy move at center ice by Sakic. For Sakic, the backhander scores! Go Sakic! Exit 1-0. the puck to 
the winger is go to the net. Gagne gives him the pass back, and Sakic with a backhander puts it through the legs of Erme. Sakic gave it to Gagne, back to Sakic, 1-0 Canada. Three-minute mark. Sakic started from his own end and took it up to Gagne. And he gave it to Sakic again. They remain on, again, and Sakic shoot the puck in. However, that's going to be called on the icing against Canada, but they're ahead early, one to nothing. Another look at the goal, Joe Sakic didn't get a lot on this backhand, and Erme opened up, and that's exactly where the puck went. I'm sure he'd like to have that opportunity again, Yanni Erme, because that was anything but a labeled shot. Face off in the Canadian zone, comes to the net, Sproder stopped it. And Canada get it out over the line. Kanye is turning. Sakic will come back. Now they move it out. Niedemar. Sakic, look at that. Danny stick handling play again. Sakic gets the zone. Feeds it ahead. Niedemar kicked it loose. Missed it then. And Solani lost a chance to move down. He was stopped near center. Picked it up again. Lost it. And turning back is Scott Niedermeyer. And he's flying up the center ice. That's a pass, gets in over the line. Backhander by Iserman, a glove by Herme. And he will hang on. Canada leads one to nothing on Joe Sackick's goal at three minutes. And they have outshot Finland four nothing. Broder hasn't seen the puck at all as far as a good shot against is concerned. Gagne got the only assist on the Sackick goal. Face off, won by Canada from the blue line. The shot is right on from Brewer. Canada in to force the play against the Finns again. Finland trying to get something going the other way. It's shot up to the Canadian line, and Mario Lemieux will come back in his own zone. In there is Jelonen for Finland. Lemieux takes it, lifted the pass. That'll go for icing. Just had to flip it over a stick, and nobody could knock it down. Icing is the call. Well, I talked to Pat Quinn uh, yesterday, and he told me that he'd like to get his team to maybe get out of their head. There's no red line, I mean offensively. And, and the forwards, don't be so anxious to get up ice so quickly because it takes away the options for the defensemen. And uh, certainly in games one and two, they didn't do that. They saw tapped in behind the net for McInnes. Canada moving up. Pass got on a reach at center ice. And dump back in. Nolan hitting again. He's been doing a lot of that in this Olympics. Hagman comes up and gives it to Owen Nolan. Finland back. Nolan stays on the ice. Long lead pass broken up at the Canadian line. McInnes waits for Lindros. Goes back to his defense partner, Pranger. He goes to Lindros, but he missed it. And that's another racing call against Canada. That's the kind of play that hurts you because it goes for an icing when you could have uh, brought the puck up and at least dumped it in. Here's the body check, Hagman on Nolan. Earlier in the shift, Nolan thundered Hagman to the ice. Face off is in the big circle to the left of Mark Tambrodeur. The shots are five, nothing now. Team Canada. Blue line shot by Sallow. That would be off the net. Canada all back and coming out. Neuendijk, good move at the line. Here comes Foot. He passes once through the middle. That was picked off by Finland. And Hellman brought it back in. Cuts in there hard and tried to set one up on the side. Doesn't work for Rutu. And Finland have to come back. Bonin shot the puck up there. Lefinen couldn't get in front for a shot. Here's one from Solani. That's just knocked away. Solani coming off the bench and in hard and hit that one low. Solani gets open over in front of the net now, chases it behind the goal. It's chopped high off the glass down the ice. And Canada will change. Coming back is Rutu. 1 0 Canada. Hearing the six minute mark of the first. Rutu gets it out there. Timonen feeds it in. Broder shot it out to center ice himself. Finland will bring it back at him. Yalona left it there. Alorantis shot will go up for the souvenir. Off the stick into the crowd up there to the left of Martin Broder. 
Well, Timo Solani leads the Finnish team in goals, tied for with three, tied for the lead in points with three, and has had 16 shots. And uh, so he's the main man as far as Canada's concerned with reference to the most dangerous offensive player in the blue uniforms tonight. Sakic at the three-minute mark from Simon Gagne. Sakic second of the Olympics. one nothing Canada leading. Another long lead pass does not work for Canada. That's four or five they've tried. Even Brodeur is trying it again. Long shot gets out to center ice from the goalie. Finland shooting it back in. No icing. They wiped that off immediately. And Blake took his time coming back. Elorata was right on his tail. It's knocked down behind the net. Canada coming back. Aginla will be there to take it and bring it out. Jerome Aginla finds it going on the net. Perme down on all fours to make sure that one doesn't get by him. Bounced in front of him. Those were always dangerous. Knifed in to the zone by Kapanen. Pronger. Out he comes. He'll get the center and then dump it in. Canada trying to get in there to beat him to it. It's Lemieux doing a good job on the board, stopping it. He's tied up, though, and it's Finland bringing it back out. Up there at center ice was Hagman. They didn't see him. Nienema brings it in. He does not get a shot, but they keep going and around the net. Centering pass by Jokinen nearly clicked, and down the ice it goes again. Sammy Salo. Long pass up as far as center and shot in by Hagman. Canada give it up in there to Hagman. He threw it to the corner and went in front of the net. And Broder got his shoulder up to stop that one. He was going down and just kind of hunched up his shoulder and stopped it. Back for big 88. Dropped it in front. High shot. Then Ross turns to come back to help. He and Smith were in. Lynn Ross and Smith were really flying on that rush. Brian Smith that took the shot, and he kind of snaked through. He wasn't completely in the clear, but had a good scoring opportunity here. Here's the, the uh, opportunity starts off as Niedemeyer can't get it out, and this is the finish shot, and there's the stop by the left shoulder of Broder, and a pretty good one. Lynn Hellmanen on for... Finland and Rutu on the right side. One thing Canada's got to be aware of is the Finnish defensemen like to get involved in the offense. They've got nine points from his defensemen. Here is the stop again by Broder. Off the left shoulder as the puck was labeled. Canada has Shanahan with Baron Fleury and Pekka is circling back. As Finland were coming in, Shanahan hit his man at center ice, shook up Rutu. There's Rutu, he fell on Shanahan's check. Shanahan has the puck, and he was hit by Juha Lind in the corner. Finland for checking aggressively, but it's Canada leading one to nothing, and Pekka just missed that pass. Both teams are changing. Finland back up with it. Over the line is Lettinen. He comes in with Salani. And behind the net, McKinnis gives it to Pronger, slides it ahead, passed up there by Sakic, and that's broken up and cleared back into the zone by Solani. Al McKinnis once again, close checking now, but look out, it's Sakic, and again, hard shot, big rebound, Sakic looking like Sakic of last year, really flying in the early going in this game. Of course, he was the MVP, and he was Mr. Wonderful all last season. And here he is for Canada getting the first goal on this man, Herme, and rolling again. A lot of rebounds. Hermes makes some good saves, but there are rebounds available. Canada's got to get that guy without the puck going to the net. Rob Blake roars right over Yarko Rutu with a good body check in the center zone. Canadians win that draw, and it's shot in across the line by Lemieux by doing it. Finland back out. High pass down the ice. They had Kapanen up there behind everybody. That's icing as they try to make that long pass work. Kapanen was the guy up there in behind the Canadian defenseman. Well, here's what's going on in the medal round. Sweden dropped out of it with the loss to Belarus. You can see the other two. It's Russia versus United States on Friday to see who goes to the gold medal. And Canada, Finland will make that same decision 
in about an hour and a half. Sattel plays it away. Winner of this game to take on Belarus on Friday. 9.30 gone in the first period. 1-0 Canada. The goal by Sackick. The view with two goals for Canada as he came back. And now starts to play back out. Down to center ice. Played in deep. And they're both changing now, but Finland was away with it. Yelonen shot it up as far as the Canadian blue line. Canada having made the changes. Nolan wasn't in position to take that pass by Lindros. And he has to regroup. Lindros coming away. First pass. Now Nolan, that center, and he had a tough time handling that one. Had to turn around and take it on the backhand. Thins pass it up, but that was a break at the line for Smith. Down he comes near the boards. Drops to Nolan. Hard shot stopped by Herme. In goes Smith again. That was a hard drive. And they come close, but it's still 1-0. Nina, the defenseman up on the rush, comes in there. And Hankman was up with him, but that's broken up at the Canadian defense. Blake went after it. Missed it. Side of the net, wrap around attempt. Doesn't work. Good checking by Smith in his own zone. At the blue line. Screen shot. Knocked down by Brodeur. And cleared out by Nolan. Smith will roll it in, and he'll head off on a change. Just past the halfway mark of the first period. Still just one to nothing. Canada. The Finns up at center. That long passing stuff again. They shoot the puck in. And Pronger plays it hard to the glass. Shanahan gets it out. And Neuendijk takes off. Rambles in with a high shot. Over the glove of Herme to the far side and kept in. This one by McInnes is nowhere near the net. But Neuendijk is on it in a hurry. Good hustle by Neuendijk. In behind the net. Has flipped out in front of the goal. And cleared out of harm's way by Lind. Thins come back over the Canadian line. The defenseman Lume is up. He centers one. That was into Neuendijk's pads. Couldn't clear it though. In on the boards, they fight for it. The puck loose. And Pronger is covering, but he won't play the puck. Finland does. Shot by Lettinen is blocked. And Canada trying to clear it. They do get it up to center ice. Shanahan bumped his man. Lettinen fed it back to inside the blue line, and then it was cleared across center ice. And Canada changing. Pronger dumps it in and heads off, and that's going to be called icing. They played 12.05 on the first. one nothing Canada on the second goal. 8-3 are the shots. Here's a wraparound attempt by the uh, Finnish Ole Jokinen, but Broder was over to make sure he had his foot jammed up against that post, and there was no room for Jokinen to walk out front because Ryan Smith was cutting them off. Face off deep in the Canadian zone to the left. Yelonen won the draw. Sarani got it back. Long shot stopped in front of Broder. And here comes Jerome McGinley. Good speed with McGinley. McGinley, and pass it over in front. Gagne will take it off the board, shoot it behind the net for Sackick. And McGinley has to back off as he sees Finland in control. And they were to come out, but they're forced back a bit. And from the far side, they will clear it. Yelonen takes it to center. Solani didn't know he was going to play it up there. He was headed off. Now there's a lead pass. Eloranta gets set. Comes in with a shot. Oker hangs on to this. Zellerante had a decent attempt there, and the shot was stopped by the Canadian goalie. Many more chances are to score are created by center zone turnovers. Usually, a player trying to make a pass that's too far, and it's happened to both teams tonight. Finland trying to win this draw, made a good effort on it by getting it into the corner, but they don't get too far in there. Zellerante just couldn't move up on it. Kapanen around the goal. He doesn't find it. Jovanovski gets the pass made. And down to center ice is a view over the line heading for the net. It's struck back in front. Korea missed it. And four Finns are up on this rush. They get up over the line. Alto played it over on the far side. Gets in front of the net. But it'll be cleared out by Eiserman, I think. He comes to the line and now to center and was caught there. Shot it up there to Lemieux and he decides to pound it in and head on. During the 14-minute mark of the opening period, one to nothing, that's all. Canada nearly a giveaway in there.
there to Ryan Smith. Always dangerous for checking. McGinnis in his own zone. Had to back up with Pryor. Gives it to Pryor. He's hounded on the four check. Calio is in watching him. But Canada will move it. Down the center ice. Lindros throws it up to the line. Comes in and gets in front for Nolan. Lindros right in there. Shot. That shot. Good scramble on the side of the net. Canada has it again and pressing. Back in front. It gets by Lindros. And out to center ice. Close call for that line. Now it's stolen at center by Lindros. Up with Smith. And here comes Fleury now on a player change. Fleury is in a hurry. Back to the blue line. The shot is off escape. And another one off the side of the net. Lindros pounded it as he was heading off. Neenemann knocked the net off. You can get a delay of the game penalty for that. As uh, some good work done by the Ryan Smith. Owen Nolan. Lindros line and Lindros takes a bad angle shot here and here's where Neenema just backs into the net and knocks it off. It's a smart play if you can get away with it. Earlier this opportunity and neither Smith or Lindros could find the handle in front of the net. Face off to the right of Herme. Sammy Sallow. One nothing Canada. Shots are 10 to 4 Canada. Good pace by the Canadians to start the game. Foot around his own goal. Look out. Good for checking again by Finland. And Shanahan had nothing to do but dump it away. Striding up is Pekka. Won't get to it. Came close though. It's knocked down there by Fury. He and Pekka along with Shanahan on the boards. Fury comes in after it. He's busy again. And there goes Pekka. He's tough to handle back there. Pekka tied up. Hauled down. Standing right there on the goal. Here's a chance in front. Oh, what a chance for Shanahan. And it was knocked down. What a chance he had to net empty and the goalie down. And couldn't get it up. But the crowd wanted a penalty called against Finland. They didn't get it. But this is pretty good action here in the first period. Canada is leading one to nothing. First of all, Shanahan had this chance. He can't put it in, so he's smart. He pulls it back. He's got the goalie down. Did the goalie make the save, or did the defenseman stop it? Let's have a look. Sammy Salo may well have made the stop. And Shanahan looked like he had a gimme. They saw taken by Newman. Right down the ice, icing the call against Finland. They'll do it all over again. Canada's outchanced Finland 7-2 now so far. And we played 15-15 of the first period. They have only the one goal. That by Joe Sackick at the three-minute mark. Danny Herme. I don't know whether he made that last stop. If he did, it was a spectacular one. I'd rather think the defense would win. Face off. One by Canada. Crowd there in a face-off circle, though, and they get it out to center ice. Blake feeds it ahead. Again, let shoots it across the line. Not too deep. And Finland back. Letting them made the play. They get it up to Solani. Tamo Solani over the line, looking for somebody open. Tried to go back and was foiled. And back down to the Finnish blue line again. Here comes Jovanovski jumping up to it. He plays it across center. Letman was there. He was stopped. Canada on the puck in the center ice area. And taken across the line by Aginla. He and Blake winding up. The shot high. Didn't miss by much on that short side. Up high. Aginla behind the net. Pounded in on the boards by Newman. But he stays with it. There goes Gagne. He didn't look. A blind pass. Nearly set up a two-on-one. It's a tough chore for Pronger to get back. He slides, and Finland has the puck in there. But a good play by Blake to intercept the pass. Solani slipped it back in his own zone. one nothing Canada. Pronger now. He was outgunned in the race. Easily beaten. Finland, a fast team. Korea is knocked down at center ice. Ferme, the goalie, played it away. And Finland's Lume shot it out to center ice. Then he stopped it near his own line. Here comes McGinnisall. Quick pass gets up there. Eiserman feeds it in. And Lemieux had to turn around, ripped it out the net. That's behind the goal for Eiserman. Eiserman fell, picked loose by Ackieberg. And Lemieux comes in with a hit. And the crowd got a kick out of that. Canada leads one to nothing as Lume brings it in quietly. Just flipped it off to the corner. Turning is Niedermeyer. 
three minutes left in the first period. Nolan lost it at center ice, but fortunately for him, the Swedish player fell trying to go in. Hagman thought he had a breakaway, but he slipped and fell. Nolan this time will take no chances and get it out cleanly. Smith had to circle. Lindros was with him. Finland dumping it back in. Trying to tie this game before the period is out. Finland coming, working hard. Calio takes it off the boards, back out in front. That's broken up with the open and open. And down come the Canadians. Across the line as Ryan Smith comes in with a pass in front for Lindros. He didn't reach it. And the Finns are back to try and clear. They do get it by Lindros out to center ice. Jokinen brings it over the line. Winds up the shot off the blocker. Uh, Broder, he looks sharp stopping that hard shot up high. Canada back. Flurry, look out, he got him, he jumped at him at center and missed him, and down goes Flurry, in, shot right on, and stopped by Herme, and Flurry was grabbed going around the net, he doesn't like that at all, but a good rush by Flurry, and then he has to contend with Ossi Bonanen. Well, Flurry, I think, was hoping that Herme would play the pass, because Darren Flurry shoots it at an awful bad angle. But Ermey wouldn't go for that and stuck right against the goal post and made an easy save. 155 remains in the first period. 1-0 Canada. Loser is eliminated. Murray doesn't move for this one quickly. Back to center. Pass to McInnes. Throws it up to center ice. It's knocked in over the line by Shanahan. Neuendijk comes up, hoping to find it. It'll be Fleury who finds it. Jammed it on the boards, and he's pulled over it again. Fleury taking a going over on his ship. Now he hauls Rutu down for that, and nothing has been called anywhere. Shanahan is turning around, gets the puck ahead. Canada slowly moving it up to center ice. So McGinnis and Pronger will be back there to do it again. Pronger, a long pass was good. They get it up over the line. Gagne trying to get in. Great move in there. Aguilo is in front. Gagne gets it back to the line. They keep it in. Backhander. And that's gloved by Herme. And the Finnish goalie will hang on to this. Well, certainly Canada has outchanced and outshot Finland. And here's where Theron Fleury takes a shot from Rutu. Fleury was lucky he wasn't called with a penalty right here because this came right after the good hit by Rutu. Shots 14 to 5, Canada, but only one goal. That by Joe Saki at the three minute mark. <laughs> Centering pass. Gagne fanned on that. Finland down. The dangerous Solani is up there. Gets it over on this near side. Timonen whipped it in behind the net. The Finns are in looking to tie the game right here. And it's Solani coming in with a check on his man in the corner and got the puck from him. Solani working hard against Niedemeyer and rolled it back out to the line. It came out over the line and fired back in. And Speak saw that and called it. It's offside. Well, there's Mr. Gretzky. He's uh, sitting up there with some of the other brass from Team Canada. He held a press conference the other night and was outstanding. And Don Cherry has got a touch on that in the coach's corner coming up. So stand by. Grapes is all wound up. Pass off the boards. Canada's Lemieux brings it away with Blake. Blake to center. Lost it. The Finns knock it outside the line with only 20 seconds left. Kapanen was racing in there, and you know he can race with the best of them, but that's offside. Anuar Aravita is the coach for Finland. Only two players on the Finnish Olympic team have not played somewhere at some time for this coach. Numanen and Markinen are the two. That helps if you coach a lot of these players at another tournament or under other circumstances. They saw to the left of Herme. Korea didn't see it. Pins bring it out, Eloranta, one last time, they're down with Kapanen. Kapanen gets set for the play, right in front of the net, and broken up by Blake. Just in time, six seconds left in the period. Time at center, time at the line, Korea decides to shoot it. Good choice. It was a save by Herme, as the buzzer goes on that save. The shots were 15 by Canada, five by Finland. Joe Sakic got the goal, his second of the, of the Olympics. Gagne assisted. And it was at the three-minute mark when Sakic got that goal. So Don Cherry is coming now 
in our coach's corner here in the first intermission. So the score in this important game after one period, Canada one, Finland nothing. Switch. Sure. Introducing the all-new Chevy Avalanche. The only vehicle that switches from an SUV to a pickup. Good idea. Chevy Avalanche. Motor Trends 2002 Truck of the Year. Avalanche like a rock. Strawberries. Introducing new special K red berries with a crunchy new flake and strawberries right inside the box. Special K red berries. The new Vector Energy Bar. Eat or be eaten. When I look back, I realize if I had made that one decision differently, I might not have made it to the Olympics or the World Championships. When I look back, I'm grateful that I gave my life to skating and not to smoking. This year, over 45,000 Canadians will die from tobacco. That's why it's critical to take strong action to reduce smoking. Tobacco, we can live without it. A message from the Government of Canada. Ontario is a great place to live, work, and raise a family. That's why it keeps growing. As we grow, we're going to need more electricity. Continuous supply for the future. And more companies generating electricity. On May 1st, Ontario is opening its electricity market to competition. This means you can either stay with your current supplier at market rates, or you can choose to buy your electricity at a fixed rate from a retailer licensed by the Ontario Energy Board. The choice is up to you. For more information or a free brochure, call us. We're here to help. A CBC special report from Royal Canadian Air Force. We are closing in on this man, but we need your help to narrow our search. There have been several reports that place the suspected terrorist on Coach's Corner. <laughs> from Salt Lake City, Utah, as captain of the two-man luge team. And this sighting just in, Osama has been spotted in Regina as a Walmart greeter. Turn first returns after the Olympics with all new episodes. See them at 9 o'clock on CBC Comedy Friday. Coach's Corner with Don Cherry, brought to you by BF Goodrich Tire, proud to cheer on Canadian athletes. Road. Validating tires. BF Goodrich tires with traction advantage. Approved. For control you can feel no matter what road you choose. BF Goodrich tires. Take control. I don't think we dislike those countries as much as they hate us. Um, and that's a fact. They don't like us. They want to see us fail. Um, they love beating us. They may tell you guys something different, but believe me, when you're on the ice, that's what they say. They don't, they, they don't like us. And we got to get that same feeling towards them. I mean, right now it's comical to listen to things that are being said. Um, almost sickens my stomach to turn the TV on because I'm such a proud Canadian and such a fan of our game and very proud of all the players in our locker room. And it makes me ill to hear some of the things that are being said about us. Am I hot? Yeah, I'm hot. Because I'm tired, tired of people taking shots at Canadian hockey. And uh, when we do it, we're hooligans. And when Europeans do it, it's okay because they're not tough or they're not dirty. That's a crock of crap. Our guys sucked it up and they played hard. We outskated them and 
we're still standing and believe me, our, we've got a proud bunch in our locker room and I know the whole world wants us to lose except for Canada and Canada fans and our players and we'll be there, we'll be standing. There you are, it sounds like Coach's Corner. You know, when I heard uh, Red and everything about that after he did that, wearing his heart on his sleeve, you often wonder why a guy gets involved in something like this. There's a guy, no pay, he get time off, he gets no time off, he's got all the pressure in the world on him, and he gets ripped in the paper. Hey, in the States, it's a gimme. But in the Canada, that really hurts when I see stuff like that. In the, and again, quiet. Oh it really bothers. It really bothers me when I read like this. This guy told the truth. You know it. I know it. That Kelsa paid for uh, Brampton said it. We don't care about Canada. Rosinski just got through in the paper last night said we don't care about Canada. Nobody cares. They don't care about Canada. They want. He comes out, says, you know why it was like that? Because they got him from 10 minutes. They got him right after. He didn't get time to compose himself. So he got carried away. I'm more proud of him now. Than, and think more of him now than of all his records. That's the guy you saw that got 50 goals in 39 games. That's the guy, when he's hurt, he plays. That's the guy that sticks up for Canada. He also said, <clears throat> I live in the States. He says, but I'm a Canadian. This guy's a Canadian and he gets ripped by Canada. It's the old story, Canada eats his own. All you people that are down on him there you should be wrong. You're wrong, because he's right. He knows what's going on in hockey. I know what's going on in hockey. We've been in the pits. Well, you know what you both are? You're at the top. And that's, he, he was under a lot of stress, no doubt about it. As you say, I don't think he really wanted a suspension. In fact, the next morning you saw him, he was a bit, you know, Wayne, he's kind of apologetic. He, but he's 40, he got fed up. He just got well, fed up with the whole deal. Well, you get fed up. Every, everybody takes shots at us in the world. It's bad enough everybody else all over the world hates us. Then we get it at home. Can't be for once if you stand up for Canada. Every person that stands up for Canada, is he always wrong in our country? Why? I don't understand. Well, because we are a multicultural country and we try to be, look at, no, no, I don't, don't roll your eyes, but we try to be leaders in terms of peacekeeping and a lot of things that are good and noble and we don't yeah. brag no, too, no, too much. No, 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 we, we should brag. We should stand up for our country. We should do all stuff like that. Wayne did it. I'm saying it right now. I think more of him now. Oh, Bobby Orr. I do just, too. That all right, fun. wait a minute. All right. I talked to Bobby Orr this morning. He said Wayne was so carried away and he meant every word. That was a, th a shill thing to get the team going. He almost had tears in his eyes. If this guy wears his hearts in the sleeve, he's a true Canadian. We should all be proud of him. And that's all I've got to say for it now. Oh, and you're right on the money, Don. That's, that's the best I'd ever seen him. And as I say, he's top poppy, so they're going right, to cut him off. Let's go. I don't know what's going on. Got a going. bit of time here. So, just so you know, you got a bit of time here. Sir. All right. Now, I don't know what's going on with these pucks out here, and I don't know what's going on with these ice. By the way, the referee is making this game. This is the way a game should be ref. No chintzy stuff so he can get himself, you know, on TV and that. This guy, look, Denny LaRue is doing a good job. American, I hate to say it. But anyhow, let's watch Owen Nolan when he's got the puck. He did. This has been happening all the time. Watch it. Could cost us a goal. Watch it coming up. He comes out of his end. Oh, what's the puck bounce? Right on. Well, it's right off his stick. You can't hold it. It's been going on and on the whole time. So watch for that. And now we got Brodeur. He's standing tall right now. I don't like this one goal, though, boy. I, I'm, I'm, I really bother me. One goal. They're sucking a lot. Shots 14 to five. That's yeah, too no, many. 15 yeah, 15 to five. By the way, uh, uh, they, they, uh, they're, they're ready. They love this here. They're the way they're going. Anyhow, watch Brodeur. He's in a groove right now. Watch when he blocks a shot where he puts it over in the corner or not. Comes to the point. Guy puts it on the net. Puts it right over in the corner, makes a shot. Oh, what's with that one? This is the corner one. That one was actually... Yeah, look at that. Right over in the corner. Beautiful. This guy's in a groove right now. Jovanovski is the best player on the ice on either side, and they were worried about this guy being a gambler and everything. He's the best guy on the ice right now. What about Sackick? Oh, well, Sackick's doing pretty good, too, but Jovanovski, to me, is the best player on the ice right now. Okay, Don Cherry uh, on the coach's corner on behalf of Wayne, and who could blame you? That was a. a and I'm not. I can't believe it. Just a minute. Just a minute. A lot of people say, look at him sucking up to Gretzky. Not a chance. I've always said Bobby Ord's the best, and I've been kind of giving it to him for all along. He's a good Canadian, and everybody should be proud of him. And he dresses to the nines. Not a bad thing. Coach's Corner with Don Cherry. Brought to you by BF Goodrich Tire. Proud to cheer on Canadian athletes. So you have to do the ironing. 
but you'd rather be snowboarding. Why not do both and make a little more free time? Ooh, and they smell mountain fresh. Whatever you do for your time, blue light salutes you. Blue light for your time. Choose road. Validating tires. BF Goodrich tires with traction advantage. Mm. Approved. Control you can feel, no matter what road you choose. BF Goodrich Tires, take control. Yeah! If I had just one McDonald's French fry left, who would I give it to? I'd save it for somebody special. I'd give it to someone that rocks. I'd give it to my first and only girlfriend. I'd give it to the best coach I ever had. I'm not telling. The last fry goes to the whole Canadian Olympic team. And let them fight over it. Future Shop service specialists install more than hardware and software. They install possibilities. Because life's full of great moments. Why not upgrade them? Future Shop. You'll like what the future has in store. My name is Pierre. I'm Margaret. The man. Even the people that hate your guts still think you're the right man to lead the country. The myth. I'm a lot older than you are. That's irrelevant. The television event of the year. Trudeau begins March 31st on CBC. It's coming. The 2002 FIFA World Cup from Korea. Capture the magic. Starting May 31st on CBC. And in the first period, 1-0 Canada and a goal by Joe Sackick. Two bronze medals for Canada tonight in short track speed skating. Let's begin with the ladies 3,000 meter relay. Canada has won a medal in this event every time since it was introduced in Albertville in 1992. Isabelle Charest, Marie-Eve Droulet, Amélie Goulet-Nadon, and Alana Krauss. And by the way, Isabelle Charest becomes the first Winter Olympian to win a medal in three straight games. Canada with a bronze in the relay. One more bronze medal, that was in the men's 1500. Apollo Ono from the States gets the gold, but look at this. The Korean is leading. The Korean is Dong Sung Kim. He cut off Ono. Now you'll see him cheer. He thinks he's got the gold medal. Ono the silver, Mark Gagnon from Quebec the bronze. He has to finally drop his flag because he is disqualified. So it's Apollo Ono from the United States with the gold. Jiang Li from China gets the silver medal. And Mark Daniel, there he is, from Canada, winning a bronze medal. So the final standings, men's 1500. And again, two more medals for Canada tonight, both coming in short track speed skating. We'll take a break, get back for the second period. Canada leads by a score of 1-0. In fact, we're not going to take a break. But in the second intermission, we'll have a full report on those two bronze medals tonight in short track speed skating. Ready to go back to hockey for the second period. Joe Sackick, a 1-0 Canada lead. Once again, Bob Cole and Harry Neal. Bob? Yes, thank you very much, Brian. And they're here from all over Canada, really. Don mentioned Manitoba. There's some people here from Alberta, of course, and some from eastern Canada, believe it or not. Some all the way from Newfoundland, and that's as far east as you can go in this great country we call ours. Canada is leading one to nothing as we get ready for period number two. Canada outshot Finland 15-5, outchanced them 8-3. They took 22 shots at the net, only 15 on. And it always worries you when you burn up good chances. Might come back and bite you where it hurts later in the game. We mentioned it before, worth mentioning again. 
Loser of this game will be eliminated from further play in these Olympics in Salt Lake City. Saki, the goal, and comes in again. Saki left it on the boards in the corner. Ginland was there too. Lynn Gagne, who fanned on the pass, trying to get it back. So he comes back to cover up for that little ear. And Pronger backs up in his own zone. He and McInnes. Long pass gets up there near center. And Canada will get it over the line in deep. Saki rubbed out along the boards in there by Yelonen. Fins bring it back up. Ume to center ice, shoots it in, heads off. The Fins are changing. And Canada has foot starting out. Korea misses that, comes back to find it. Niedemeyer takes it around the net for Canada. Lettinen, the four checker for Sweden. He's a great checker, too. Pass chopped down by Solani. Lettinen is galloping up there with him. So is Alto. The shot off the blocker of Broder. Back down the ice for Canada. In along the boards to the corner. Iserman comes up to help. Swings away with it. Trying to get around the net. Does a great job of it. Here's Iserman. Shot. Stopped in front. Knocked down at the line. And Niedemar gets it again. Comes in on goal. And nobody can get a shot. Iserman was the last one to touch it. And he was on the backhand. He has the puck again. Good work by Iserman in there. At the line. Iserman stopped it again. The Finns having a tough time clearing. Now they get it out. And Solani just went by it at center ice. They're headed off. Timonen with Newmanen. And Newmanen will come back to pick it up in his own zone for Finland. Out against Nolan. Got it down the ice. That's an icing call against Finland. Steve Eisenman had a great chance as he walks right out from behind the net. Could have gone a little further and got the shot out and the rebound was available. But Timo Solani from 51 feet out let one go and Broder makes a nice stop with his right arm. Nolan with Lindros up on the draw, and Smith is to the right, right in front of the goal. Somebody will be waved out, I think. It'll be the Finnish player, Oli Jokinen. In comes Hagman. Finns win the draw, but Smith stopped it. In behind the net, Nienema lost it. Chance here, centered by Lindros. They don't get the pass through, though. And Pronger will come back with Eric Lindros right there beside him. Lindros comes after it in hard. And he's bumped in there by Hagman. Hagman went down. Lindros knocked the puck loose. And Aninema takes over for Finland. Here he comes. Down the center ice. Calio is going hard up there. They're on side barely. Post caught at the blue line. They get the puck in. Al McInnes was slow moving to it. Hagman got out in front. Again, it's knocked it away again from Jokinen. And the Finns come up from the line to keep it in. But now, Pronger was slow getting to it. It's kept in by Finland. They're beating Canada to the puck in there now. Centering pass gets all the way back to the line. And Hagman nearly had a chance. Now on the other side, Calio. He's bumped. Lume had to back off. He sees Canada coming out. And they're hanging on right here, relieving the pressure and dumping it down the ice. They're changing. We played three minutes of the second period. Flurry comes in offside. That play, Shanahan. Justin. Lindros didn't realize that Flurry was going to have a rush. He was going to the bench on a line change and never got over the blue line. The bench, the gate that Lindros was going to go through was right on the blue line, but he was unaware that Flurry had a bit of a step on it. And Shanahan was also in, so Flurry had that chance, snuffed out. Down the ice by Vonanen. Shot in deep. Things come in for him. This is Hellman in up on it. Canada, though, trying to organize a rush. Flurry out there with Neuendijk. And Shanahan back up the Canadian net again. Finns are forechecking hard every time to get the puck in. Canada has to hurry, but look at Neuendijk go. He's up over the line, ripped the shot high and off the boards behind the net. Sliced in front by Flurry, and he came close. Flurry comes over after. Shanahan couldn't stop it. It's at the line, and... Can they keep it in? Yes, they were changing the off. And Pekka nearly got caught. He hopped on and then had to turn and get off again. Fins up to center. Dumped in by Rutu. High over the net. Lavert tried to catch it back there and just missed. Maria knifed away to center ice. Pekka comes up looking for it. 
Behind the goal, the Pins bring it out. Long pass by Salo to center. Littman brings it in with Solani. A shot deflected. That'll go up over the glass. 4-14 gone in the second. It's still Canada 1 and uh, Finland nothing. Mario coming out of the dressing room. The equipment repair. Whenever Solani and Lettinen are on the ice, one of the two or both of them take off early, looking to get in a hole for that long pass. And you know the damage both those guys can do if they get a step. They saw off inside the Canadian line. They saw Finland along the boards. Alaranta center it. Cross in front of the net, out to Lumet at the blue line. Had to dump it in and did. Fins are taking it to Canada here. Jovanovski on the boards, knocked it loose for Sakic. Again, Sakic got a stick near it, but it's the Fins controlling. Along the boards to the corner, swinging back out near the line. In it goes. It's Blake trying to knock his man off the puck in the corner, but Finland stay on it in there. Finally to the line and back in again it goes. Blake, sick down, missed it. Good work by Finland here for checking. And they can't move it out of the zone. Then in comes Blake with a hard hit. And that does it, finally. And it's shot down the ice. They wave off the icing. Five minutes gone in the second. An interception. It's Eisenman coming in the goal. Right in, set up. The pins try to get the puck out. What a play that was by Steve Eiserman. He saw Pekka somehow come off the bench, and he was all alone. But it's still 1-0 Canada. Lume covering well. Lume with the puck deep in his own zone. Deep to the head to the blue line. Canada intercepting again. This time Smith brings it in. Smith tried to make a play along the boards and lost it. Finland the other way, the dangerous. Emil Solani up with Lettinen, centered it. Solani covered, and the goalie ends up in the net. And the referee has his arm up. He's going to call the penalty, all right. Is it goaltender interference, or is it a penalty to the Canadian defenseman that ran Solani into the net? It looks like it's goaltender interference as Solani is complaining. As sir, Emil Solani's going to serve two or less. Here it is right here. Solani pushed McKinnis into Brodeur. Yes, he did. And that knocked the net off. So a bit of a strange call, but you can see on the replay that it was uh, Solani that initiated. And he did not have the puck. It was coming out in front of the net. McKinnis tried to stay between him and the goalie and ended up bouncing off the goal. Just called it interference on the Canadian defense. Solani. Canada is one for nine on the power play in the Olympics. That's only 11%. They've got to raise that bar. Well, they have their chance. This is the first power play of this game. At the line, Jovanovski takes a look. The pass along the blue line, and they spread out in there. Canada, the power play, moving around, leading one to nothing. Pass to Blake, shot, just missed. Hard shot it was. Scramble, cleared to the line where Jovanovski was waiting. Blake is over to, to his right. He passes off to Lemieux, back to Jovanovski. That shot is deflected wide. Again, Lemieux looks on the boards, trying to stuff it into the corner. And along the boards, good work by Finland, and pretty good work by Mario Lemieux, too. He's got a skate on it, and now it's cleared. And the play had been called, whistled dead before that was shot away. There's the reason for the whistle. Jovanen <laughs> throws the puck out of the zone with his hand and hits Korea in the face with his glove. Faceoff is going to be inside the line. To the right of the goal, 1-0 Canada. Canada on a power play here. Pronger from the blue line. Oh shot, he's covered now, he won't shoot it. Gets open, might shoot from that spot. Winds up, that's a rip. That's wide, comes back near the boards. Pronger is a man at the blue line. They go in a little deeper with it. And they stay outside. Pass, Pronger! And he's stopped by Herme. Pronger came off the blue line. Now they have the hustle to keep it in. And they do. But not for long. It's picked up and shot away down the ice. Penalty time left, 40 seconds. 
Canada leading one to nothing. They need a power play goal, they seem to think, and they won't get it on that pass, which was by everybody, and that's an icing call back into the Canadian zone for the next faceoff. Broder tried to pass it up. Three point shots were wide, and then Pronger roars in off the point and gets a stick on it, but can't control it. But when the puck goes to the point, and the point man's in the middle of the rink on the power play, you have to hit the net. Face off won by Canada, with only 30 seconds left on the power play. They start up. Galloping away is Jovanovski. They get the zone, here's Korea! Backhander is wide. They're missing the net again on those chances. Canada trying to keep it in, but the Finns are gonna bring it out. Good play by Hellmanen to get it out and down the ice again. 10 seconds left in the penalty. So away to center ice. Jovanovski takes a look around, has to keep going himself, and two of them are offside ahead of the puck carrier. Well, the power play will be over in five seconds. Canada had some pretty good puck control in the offensive zone, moved it around, got it to the point man in the middle of the rink, and that was the, uh, the, the purpose of the passes. And Rob Blake twice and Jovanovski once sure. missed the net. From 55 feet out, you got to hit the net. They saw us outside the line. Still just one nothing Canada. Chance, Nieuwendijk, and he's stopped by Herme. Canada is getting frustrated a bit now with their chances. Sometimes missing, sometimes having deflected shots, and other times Gary Herme making the save. Here's a great play by Nieuwendijk, and a lousy play by the defensive center, Alto, who just let Nieuwendijk step by him and nearly had a breakaway. Nieuwendijk. Won the face off to the corner. Timener. They'll get a face off in the zone now with the player falling on it. Following the game, we will have the Labatt three stars online. You have a chance to have your say and pick the stars from today's game. Log on at cbc.ca slash Olympics and make your selection beginning in the third period. Face off outside because Flurry fell on the puck. And the Finns win the draw. Newman coming away. Gets up to center. Stopped at the Canadian line. They have to hurry the puck out of the zone again. No icing. They rule a team of them might have played it up there near his own blue line. Nearing the nine-minute mark of the second. Still just the goal by Sackick in the game. Back at the three-minute mark of the first. Flurry knocks it down. Good pass by Flurry to Newendike. He's coming in. And here's Shanahan drilled it. He was off balance, didn't get much of a shot, and Herme had no problem stopping that on the short side. Away they come the other way. Back in over the line, offside, all to await it. Just a little too long. Well, Joe Neuendijk on that two-on-one rush that was engineered by Flurry got the puck to Shanahan, but Shanahan was at a bad angle. Joe probably would look, should have shot it. But you can see, you're not going to score very often when you're outside the dot in this building. On this ice surface, Shanahan never got one of his special shots away. Canada lost to Sweden 5-2 in their first game. Came back to defeat Germany 3-2 and tie the Czech Republic 3-3. The Czech Republic has been eliminated. Sweden has been eliminated. And the loser of this game will be out. 1-0 Canada. We're up to the nine-minute mark of period two. Pekka has the puck in his own. Dropped it along the boards. In front, Owen Nolan, but he won't get it. Deflected. Got a bad pass by Pekka. Was knocked down by Yelonen. But cleared. It's in deep behind the net again. Scooped away up at the boards by Yelonen. There goes Smith. Around the net. Pekka up front. And a good play by Herme to knock it away from Smith. The Finns attack the other way as Kapanen races in. Offside again. Eloranta on the left wing expected a shot or a pass. Neither came and he was offside. 22 to 6 are the shots. Herme has been busy. And here he makes a stop on Ryan Smith on the sprawl. Ryan Smith couldn't get far enough away from him to get the puck up in the air. One shot on goal by the Finns this period. Jovanovski comes back. Hard pass to handle at center ice under the skates 
but it's picked up by Blake, and he charges in, shoots! That's right on. Herme stopped that. Finland lost to the USA 6-0, and then regrouped and defeated Belarus 8-1, and then knocked off Russia 3-1. Well, if you're a Canadian hockey fan, you've got to be happy the way Canada's playing, but real worried about the fact that Finland, who's been in their own end most of the game, and have had very few chances to score, are only behind by one. He's off to the left of Verme. Hagman was out of position. Takes his time coming back, too. He'll try to win it. Reinsman drops it. Canada wins it. Blue line, Jovanovski had to turn around to backhand it in. Could not get in position for a shot. Aginla. He stopped by two fins over there and around the net is Bunnanen. Shot it on the board. Got it ahead to center ice with that. Jovanovski pounded it back up. Canada on side on the rush. Saki got over in front of the net. Saki took a swing on it. Now one. And that's knocked away. Saki in there driving hard. Trying to make a 2 nothing, But Herme sprawls and finds the puck. Well, two Canadian players, Sakic, the principal one, but also a Ginla in there taking a swat at the puck on a short three-on-two rush. And there are three Canadian forwards all over the place, and none of them can find the puck. You can see here, one, two, two shots by Sakic. Shots nine to one Canada in this period. Nine to one. Weak shot this time for Boger to stop. Backing up. That's Niedermeyer around the net. It'll be a Korea who'll pick it up off the boards and hook it out to center. He hoped to hit Mario Lemieux up there, but he did not. The Finns bring it back. Charging in as Rutu. Rutu gets set. Screen shot coming. Didn't get too far. Canada cleared it out. This is a solo dash up the center, but they're catching up. Niedermeyer was a guy catching up. He drops it. And the pass back. Scoring at the three-minute mark of the first, and now the goalie is starting to shine. There's one drop pass. Here's another drop pass. And Lemieux, from 20 feet out, gets the shot but can't beat Hermé. Lemieux is the late man on the rush. And Hermé is keeping his team alive. Canada wins the draw. Pronger at the net with a shot. Missed by a fair margin. Three fins are playing. Salani up there. The principal drive. Comes in. That net. Inside the line, but now Canada will clear. Down there is Theron Fleury. Can't handle the pass. He had stopped to pick it up. Herme leaves the net. Newendike gets the right way, and he's over there. With Shanahan trying to find it. But it'll be Finland bringing it out. Salo make the pass from his own line to center. Shot it into the zone. They want to change, obviously. And McInnes turns back. Nearing the 12-minute mark of the second. It's still 1-0 Canada. McInnes pass to center was tipped into the zone by Ryan Smith. Canadians are changing. Pekka is on the ice, chases his man. Spins back to pick it up. Across center. Yelonen nearly got in. Knocked away to the boards. Kapanen over there with Yelonen. Kapanen turns back. Yelonen was nailed. Canada will get the puck out of the zone. Three of them are lined up to come. And it's Smith coming in. Drops it back. Blake took the shot nowhere near the net. Jovanovski played position well at the blue line to keep it in. Now he charges along there. Pass around the net. He gets out in front, but the pass doesn't come yet. Canada attacking here with pressure on. Here comes Joe Sackick again. He knocked the puck off the boards. Skates holding it there now. It's loose again. Six players fight for it, and it's taken away by Aki Berg. Out he comes. Berg straight to the line. Drops it off. Look out. Here comes the shot. by Adam Foote, who was being held by the Finnish player, and he deflected the puck out of the rink. Here's a good opportunity here. This is the best stop Broders had to make, and on the eighth one of the game, 26 times, Erme. Mike Pekka, who's thrown a couple of good body checks, knocks his man, Juha Jolonen, down. Face off to the right of Martin Broder. 
Niedemeyer comes away. McGinnis was bumped by Hagman. Reaching for the pass at center. Wasaki has to take off and go in there. Now hope to take it away from Niedemeyer. He circles the net with it. Comes out, plays it on the boards. Gagne just missed it. Again, is there trying to pick it off, but he won't. And it's into the Canadian zone again. To the corner. Three pins come in there. for checking hard. Cleared back out. Shot just missed. Jokinen had a good chance. Jokinen takes it again, but the shot is fired by Hagman. And Rodeur is very steady in there now, and he's got to be. Nine shots by Finland. Canada has had 26 and only has scored once. Well, Finland, the last two shifts have had three of the four shots they've had this period, and two of the three of them have been pretty good scoring chances, and one miss. So Finland's coming on a little bit offensively. Kelman on the faceoff. Draw is loose for a bit. Picked up by Canada's Al McInnes. Looking for the lead pass. Up there was Korea. But they carry it over the line. Ariel Lemieux around the board for Eisenman coming up, knocking it down at the side of the goal. Lemieux comes over looking for two, and he gets it. Maria is there at the line. Lemieux fake the pass back, and then it's chopped over on the boards by Bonanen and out of the zone. Shot back up there. Eisenman takes a look, trying to pick his way in at the back up. His defense partner, Pronger, fell again at center ice, and he had to move away from him. Canadians are changing furiously as the Finns play it down the ice. Long lead pass up there for Lefton, just a little bit too far. But the Finns are picking up their speed now. Here's Lefton and centering it in front of the net, and they just cover up in time. It was Joe Neuendijk. And that's an icing call. Neuendijk might have saved the day right there. Well, you know what they're saying on the Finnish bench? All we need is one. We've been lucky. We've been outplayed, outchanced, outshot, but we're only down by one. Here's a scoring opportunity for Finland, and they've had three or four of them in the last little while. Was picked off nicely by the Canadian defender. Knocked down, Lume tried a shot, didn't get through. Lume backing up again in his own zone with Shanahan, the four checker. Jovanovski, long pass. That's knifed into the zone. Canada will change on that shoot in by Shanahan. Finland out. Canada won. Finland nothing. Pekka knocked it down. Comes in with Smith. Smith with Owen Nolan on the other side. Pekka again takes a look at the net. Centering pass at the line. Niedemeyer kept it in. Here's a shot by Jovanovski. That's deflected wide by Smith and cleared up on the boards. Alto couldn't get it out. Canada on it again. The wraparound here. It comes near the line and two pins racing out. This one is Solani carrying. Down he comes to the boards and puts the brakes on slip to the head. Solani gets over in front of the net, but Canada will clear it back out. And Solani has gone to the finish bench. They bring it across the line. Canada is changing down. They're all changing quickly. But just past the 15-minute mark of the second. One-nothing Canada. Again, high shot. Rebound. Knocked down at the side of the net. Ginla came close. Kanye kept it in. Pins get it out. McGinnis has to hustle back. He's with Niedemeyer, and he'll turn in front of his goal. Down the center. Long lead pass was good. Gagne lost it, though. Asaki set him up. Asaki turns to go off. So will Aginla. The Finns have some room to move, but now they're going to do that. Down fast they come. Yelonen gets over the line. A back pass doesn't work. Three Canadians. Two back. the 
Chapman, who walked between two Canadian defenders, took the little short six-foot pass and put it in. It would have been much easier for the Canadians to play the man and not try and intercept the pass. They were celebrating the Steve Eiserman goal that made it 2-0, and they had the celebration last for 20 seconds. And the Finns make it a one-goal game again. Here comes Sackick. Sackick over the line. Sackick mishandled it a bit, but he picks it up again and pulls away from his check. Rutu in behind the net. Gagne couldn't keep it in. It's out to center ice and down to the Canadian zone. Niedermeyer fires a pass on the boards blindly. That's picked off by Hellman and shot in. Two to one is the score, Canada. 3.20 left in the second period. One goal game forever so long, and Canada opened up a 2-0 lead. And Iserman's goal at 15-49. And then, at 16-09, 20 seconds later, the Finns get a goal. Hagman from Calio and Jokinen. Iserman set up by Lemieux. That's the story to hear. Three minutes left in the period. It's a one-goal game. The loser of this game, out. The winner will play Friday against Belarus for a shot at the gold medal game. So this is something else here tonight. Kiemann back in his own zone gets it up. Cleared across center. Big Lindros is lumbering in there against Lume. Won't get the puck. Fired on the glass and out. Stopped by Adam Foote. Took his time. Played it ahead. Nolan shoved it in. Canada is changing. 2.20 left in the period. Finland looking sharp now. Skating well. It's a fast team, this Finnish team. They shoot the puck in. Conrad had to wait, and he played it by the four checker. Yelonen got it out, but Canada won't pick it up for a rush. It's Finland on the puck. Salo along his own blue line, Ackieberg, and he shot it from center ice wide of the net. 2-1, Canada leading. Two minutes left in the period. Around the net, Canada trying to move it out. A crowd really getting into it now here at the East Center in Salt Lake City. Canada on the attack. Look at this rush coming in. I Thing but jam it underneath the goalie Herme. It's still alive in there, and the Finns pick it up, and three of them are on the move. The three Canadians are back watching Salo take the shot. Knocked down by Brodeur, and he tried to feed the big pass up there to Aginla. The Finnish player got a piece of it. And up by a stop. 126 left in the second period of furious pace. Mario Lemieux made a smart play because you know you get a penalty if you play without your helmet. As soon as he realized it was knocked off, he headed right to the bench. Here's the play by Iserman. He makes a nice move to get outside the finished defenseman, but he's hooked as he tries to get the shot away and hooked off his feet by Ulanen and spoiled what I think Iserman is planning to do. Iserman got a goal at 15.49. It seemed like an eternity. Waiting for a number two goal in this game. It came from him. Now Blake's long shot. That's tipped away by the netminder. Saki got the first goal. Iserman the second. And then Hagman for Finland. Up again. Nienema. Take the shot. Fire the pass in front. That hit a stick. He's got it again. Shot on Broder. He stopped that with his pads on the post. Canada trying to pick it up behind its own net. And it's away for Blake. On the boards it goes. They don't get it out right away. The Finns keep attacking him. Sackick was twisting and turning. Blake fell down. Sackick is there. Look to block a shot. Finland on the puck in there in this final minute of the period. Look out. Long shot. Just missed from Yanni Ninema. Right through the crowd. Canada again back on its heels and inside that blue line. Now they poke it away to center. Sackick goal was stopped by Jokinen. Jokinen takes the pass at his own blue line and moves the puck down inside the Canada zone. Jovanovsky comes back. He's been hounded immediately by Lettinen. And then Canada up near the line. They try to get it in. Taken by Pekka. Pekka goes to the side of the net. Tries to center it. It was blocked. Finland can't get it out. Kapanen had a try. Now it's cleared outside the line. They have to wait onside. Four had to back up. Now he shoots it from his own blue line. It's deflected in there and then net behind the goalie. Herme is off. Now they see it. They've just seen it. One of the lines and spotted it. Break for Canada. They're going to get an offensive zone face-off unless they decide somebody on the Canadian team pushed it off. But I think it was Hermé 
when he backed in there and nudged the net off. Boy, they're not on because he hardly touched it. Clay went on for about 10 seconds with the net off. Faceoff will be inside the line to the right of Herme. And Canada will line up for it. They're ahead in the game, two to one. A one goal margin in this important game. Wow, three seconds left in the period. If you're wondering, no, Brodeur is still in goal. Heiserman with Korea cocked, ready to fire one if it comes to him on a face off. He's ready. Heiserman got it to him. He shot, and it was blocked. And a buzzer goes. That was a fine play by Heiserman to get it to Korea, who wristed the puck. And it was blocked. The shots in the period. By Canada, 14. The Finns came around and got eight. Total over two, 29 to 13. But the score at the end of 40 minutes in this big game tonight, Canada two, Finland one. And here's Brian Williams. Bob Cole, thank you. Coming up, we will show you two bronze medals tonight for Canada in speed skating, and we'll take you back to the E Center, and we'll hear from Scott Oak in just a minute. Stevie Eiserman made it 2 nothing. Lemieux assisting Nicholas Hagman with a first and the only goal for Finland, 2-1 after two. Don't think of your next job as your next job. Think of it as a long-term life enhancement upgrade. Make it great. Make it sing. Report to your future first thing Monday morning and bring your own coffee, the good kind. You know what? People do it every day. And you're a people, so you can do it too. See you Monday. Post your resume today on monster.ca. You the monster. When you represent Canada, it's a great feeling. You know, it's the pride. I start my training at least three months ahead you know, to work on the fundamentals, which means a lot of early mornings. Sure, I, I've made some sacrifices, but it's worth it. The trick is to get ahead of the game. Here's your chance to get ahead of the game. Purchase virtually any 2002 General Motors vehicle and don't pay for three months. Plus, get 0% purchase financing only at your GM dealer. Everybody's got a dream. I just happen to dream in gold. You know who lives here? Cinderella. I'm pretty sure she has her own room. That swaps way before your time. And Mickey's here somewhere. Not the one you haul around at home. The real guy. Now I'll be Jasmine and you be Aladdin. Come share the excitement at our year-long celebration of Walt Disney's 100th birthday. Boy, if it wasn't for me, you'd miss everything. Can we share a dream come true? Make plans at DisneyWorld.ca. Is always as fast? Of course. Oh, this is awesome. From the face off, it's back to the point. Shooting. The best time to go fast is always. Order Bell Sympatico High Speed Edition today. For a limited time, pay $24.95 a month. Plus, get a free self installation kit. On March 1st, the men are so young. And when I look at them, I see our boys. Well, then you're just the man to lose them. The lives of many. We will ride into battle, and this will be our horse. Will depend. We are cut off. On the courage of a few. Those are my men out there, and I'm willing to get them. Mel Gibson. I will leave no one behind. We will all come home together. So help me God. We were soldiers. Starts Friday, March 1st. Back live at the end of two periods, and Canada leads Finland by a score of 2-1. Let's show you the goal in the second period by Steve Eiserman, and then we'll see the reaction at Shanks Bar and Grill on South McLeod Trail in Calgary. There's the goal, and here's the reaction at Shanks. End of two periods, Team Canada leads Finland by a score of 2-1. It was 1-0 in the first on the goal by Sakic. Eiserman makes it 2-0. Nicholas Hegman makes it 2-1. As promised, let's go back to the E-Center, and here's Scott Oak. Brian, thanks very much. Here's Ed Jovanovski. Uh, Ed, you've outplayed the Finns, but a one-goal lead is hardly a comfort zone in a game as big as this. Uh, how concerned are you about missed opportunities? 
We're not concerned. I mean, we, we know we have the ability to, uh, you know, score some goals. So uh, there's no reason to panic out there. Uh, I think we're playing a well, uh, you know, executed game. Uh, when we have the opportunities again, we just got to bear down a little bit more. You're playing great, but uh, you're new to Olympic competition. I'm wondering what your personal assessment of the pressure that Team Canada faces in the third period is. Well, I, I'm, I'm sure it's there. I mean, we all know there's pressure on Canada to do well. Um, but we can't. We only control what we do on the ice, and uh, we're going to come out in this 20 minutes and play uh, like it's a game seven in uh, an overtime game. So uh, we'll be ready to go. Are you impressed with the play of Martin Brodeur tonight? Yeah, he's been uh, he's been great. You know, three games he's played, and um, you know we got to do a you know on that first goal we got a little bit of our job in front. Uh, you know he's going to see that first shot. We got to clear out the second, third opportunities. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Brian. Back to you. Thank you, Scott. As we go to commercial, let's take another look at uh, Shanks Bar and Grill on South McLeod Trail in Calgary. Producer Shirelli Najak tells me that uh, later tonight on Olympic Late Night with Terry Leibel, now they see they're on television out there, they're beginning to react. All right, stand up and cheer. Kelly Rudy will talk with some of the patrons from Shanks in Calgary. Up next, short track speed skating as we roll on live from Salt Lake City. So you have to do the ironing, but you'd rather be snowboarding. Why not do both and make a little more free time? Ooh, and they smell mountain fresh. Whatever you do for your time, blue light salutes you. Blue light for your time. My very first day at the skating rink, I was so terrified of getting on the ice, I would not go. My mother said, stop wasting my time and my money. Get out there. It's very exhilarating. It's unlike any other feeling that you've ever had before. It's not talent at this level. It's drive and determination, the ability to focus. It's a sense of uh, self-satisfaction. It's the best feeling in the world. I've had a lot of people come up to me and tell me that I've somehow touched them through my performance, and that is something that inspires me to push the boundaries of myself on the ice. When I get home from the rink, I'm tired. I want to have something quick and a bagel with Havarti cheese and Oka cheese. That's easy. It tastes really, really good. I eat a lot of cheese. I'll eat a wheel of it if I really could. <laughs> It's hard to break with tradition, but sometimes you need a new game plan. You have to leave the past behind. It's about teamwork, focus, keeping one step ahead of the competition. Can you see that again? Dressing rooms, nice. Wait till the coach sees this. You have to size up the other players. And find your comfort zone. You gotta be fast. That's fast. It's important to use new strategies. Nice uniform. What team is he on? Renaissance. I like the sound of that. Live in Salt Lake City, 2-1 Canada after two periods of play. Bronze medals tonight in short track speed skating. First, the ladies' women's 3,000-meter relay. Let's look at the end of that race, and here's Steve Armitage. One lap to go now in this women's 3,000 meters. The Koreans are going to take gold. Gold to Korea, silver to China, and Canada taking bronze in the women's 3,000 meter relay here at the Salt Lake Ice Center. And that's a world record time for the Koreans. They were flying right from the start, made a tactical move against the Chinese to take the lead. And once they got in front, they stayed there, never looked back, posted a world record time, and take the gold for the third straight Olympics in the women's 3,000 meter relay.
One gold, one silver, and now two bronze for the Canadian women relay in Olympic competition. And it's the turn of Alana Kraus, Isabelle Charest, Marie Evdrolet, Emily goulet nadon and Tanya Visson to lean forward and have the bronze medal put around their necks. This is what you train those many, many hours in those cold, cold rinks to finally get on the podium and receive a medal. There's Tanya Visson. And next to her, Marie Evdrolet. And the final member of this Canadian team, Alana Kraus. Bronze medal tonight in the women's 3,000 meter relay. There was another one in short track. This, the men's 1,500. And once again, with a finish of that race, here's Steve Armady. On the last lap. Oh, what a great finish this is going to be. Dong Sung Kim leading to the line. Dong Sung Kim wins it. Apollo Ono was second. And there was a lot of traffic at the line. Not sure if Mark Gagnon got in there for third place or not. But there's no disputing. Dong Sung Kim of Korea, the gold medalist, although Apollo Ono might protest that last move. He put up his hands on the last lap, indicating that he couldn't get by. And we're getting word that Dong Sung Kim has been disqualified. There's your gold medalist in the men's 1,500 meters. And we're still waiting to find out where Mark Gagnon has finished. He's looking at the board, but Odo is celebrating his gold medal, and there it is. It is official now. Odo gets the goal. Jai Jun lead the silver, and Mark Gagnon of Canada has won the bronze in the first ever 1,500-meter race in Olympics for short trackers. Thought he would. He showed what you need to do in short track besides go fast. We heard him say a few minutes ago he was in that fourth spot. He saw Dong. Yeah. Six. By the way, when you watch the third period of play, notice Martin Brodeur's mask. He has Cortina d'Ampezzo written on it. I saw Martin, his father Denis, and their families uh, downtown yesterday here in Salt Lake City. Denis Brodeur, Martin's father, was the goaltender for the Kitchener Waterloo Dutchman back in 1956 at the games in Cortina d'Ampezzo. Thus, the writing on the mask to honor his father Denis. 2 1 after two periods, Sackick and Iserman for Canada. Hagman for Finland, back to Bob Cole and Harry Neal after this. I'm gonna take a westbound, heading down the rails. I end my day with the setting sun. I'm a happy man, now the work is done. Just past the station, I'm always glad to see what makes my life worth living, and it's waiting there for me, waiting there for me. Now when I hear that whistle come me, no matter where I roam, I see the light that shines for me, that's when I know I'm home, when I know I'm home. How secure is your business? EDS Security Solved. You want heartburn relief that's fast. But you also want something that lasts. Now, for the first time in history, there's an antacid and an acid reducer in one single tablet. It starts to work in seconds and lasts for hours. Introducing Pepsid Complete. Special trial offer of new Pepsid Complete. Call 1 800 4 Pepsid. Oh, I missed by a hair. Yours, Tom? 
It runs in the family. I told you, see your doctor. There's all kinds of things they can do for hair loss these days. Come on, like that stuff actually works. Well, it works for me, anyway. Yeah, but it's impossible to grow it back then. Sometimes, yes. See your doctor. I'll give it a shot. Better sooner than later. Back at the East Center in Salt Lake City, Utah. A period coming up, we'll see one of these teams eliminated from further competition in these Olympics. Walter Gretzky with the grandchildren. Getting ready to cheer Team Canada on to one period. They had 25 shots at the net in the second period. 14 on and 11 were blocked or wide. And that may be one of the reasons why they've only got two goals and 29 shots and 17 chances to score. Finland has one goal, so we start the third period. Canada with a 2-1 lead. And Finland will attack first. Up through center ice, Yelonen stopped, but Kapanen gets the puck. Over there for Yelonen on the boards. Rolled in there for him. Yelonen trying to center. He has Eloranta up with him. And it's Canada coming out, led by Sakic, but he stumbled trying to get away. And he had a Ginla up there with him wide open. And only one man back. Connor got the puck up across center, Lemieux. Nice pass gets in there for Korea. And off the board, Eisenman is in behind the net. Korea poked the puck over there, comes back, and Eisenman will be there to get it. He made a good move, hooking it away with his stick. It comes around, and then Eisenman got it out front and then lost it. And it was cleared up on the boards and out to center ice. Lemieux was back, but he circles. And it's Niedemar trying to feed it up. Solani was there, nearly picked off that pass. It shot into the finish zone. We are in the first minute now. Now period number one, just past that mark. Every minute is so heavy now. Solani up, gets set, drops it back, look out! Team and shot is blocked. A good block made by the Canadian player. Foot, who backed over right in front of it. Shot in behind the net, Roder, careful with that one. That was screened. Canada up to center ice with it. Cleared in by Nolan. Behind the goal for Herme, who was out. Just handled it briefly, and then got it ahead. Tiemann was hit along the boards by Nolan. Pekka lost to the center. Nolan got it back, shot it in. They are going off now, and here comes Shanahan. Down the wing. Canada pressing. Shanahan is in there by himself. The three Finns are there, but he gets the puck out. And Furry fan on that shot. Three Finns now racing away. Hackman up over the Canadian line. He drops it back. They're on the attack. They'll put him right in a goal. And he made a pass instead of shooting. Niedema had backed off. That's a break for Canada, one would think. It looked like a terrific scoring a chance. But it's icing. Following the game, we'll have the Levant Three Stars online. You have a chance to have your say and pick the stars from today's game. Log on at CBC. .ca slash Olympics and make your selection beginning in the third period. They saw in the Canadian zone. Two to one is a score Canada. Just past now the two minute mark of the third period. Neiman had jumped in the circle too early so they're going to have to replace the center Helmanen with someone else. Rutu is going to go in. Here we are. Canada controlling it. Again, I made a good move to bring it back. Pronger, nobody open. He goes high, knocks it down the ice inside the line. Kamanen shot it back out. Again, let's stop it and lost it to Helmanen. And he got it back from Helmanen. Shot in over the line where Lume backs up. He and Bonin come out for Finland to center is Lume. The pass goes to the right. Lume again had to come back. Osi Bonin up the center. And it goes wide of the net. Niedemeyer looks for it. Got it out to Korea. Tapped away too far for Lemieux. Eiserman on this near side. Three heavyweights on there for Canada now. They get something going. It is a 2-1 game Canada. And through center is Korea. He had to back off as he didn't control it well. And now he's forced to go all the way back as Kapanen is all over him. Kapanen doing a good job for Jackie. And the puck is over the glass into the crowd. And the face-off is going to be in the zone. Tomorrow, the women's 
gold medal game. Canada will take on the USA. They've got a great rivalry going, and now it's down to this one game for the gold medal in these Olympics. 7 Eastern tomorrow, the gold medal game. Came over and watched the first half of the game against that got Canada into the gold medal, and uh, they, they uh, looked impressive to me. Down the center, Nolan's pass. Here comes Owen Nolan. That's in too far for the shot. He ripped it anyway, hit the side of the net. Nolan comes after it, trying to dig it out. He'll skate back out with it. Along the boards, he lost it to Kapanen. He roots the puck across the line to center, and all the way down the ice. That's foot. Slow moving on it. A speedy fans are in there. That was Kapanen. A one goal game. Canada with that lead. 340 gone in the third. Long shot for the net. Roger stick save. Sacking slow going to it. Gets over there. Jovanovsky pounds his hand in on the boards and did a good job with it. Now allowing Canada to come out. Led by Aginla. He's up across center and up over the Finland blue line. Cut to the corner. Aginla all the way with it. Around the net. He's tied up, or is he? Grabbed by Tiemann and in on the boards. Kept in by Canada. Here comes Blake. Lines up. Fires. Rebound. And again, I can't get a stick down. He's all tied up, and the pins are back. Salani was nailed by Blake, who came back and made a big play at center ice to check him. He might have been gone alone. Both teams are changing. Pace continues to be hot and furious. Fleury comes in looking for it. He nearly did get it. Murray stays right there in front. Jokinen takes it and comes away. Gets to center with a pass up there. Heikman had to go off his stick. And back there is Connor. And a hurry. Sidestepping two four checkers. Got by Calio and got the puck out of the zone. Down the ice. Murray up there again. And stopped up on the board. Here's a shot. Shanahan got it off the heel of a stick. And hardly anything on it going to the net. He was in a great spot to hammer it. But really messed up. Now to center. Jokinen fires it right on. That is knocked down. Steered back down the ice. Canada up there trying to pick it up in front of the net. Loose puck was there for a moment. And again, Canada will come back. Sweden is changing. That is icing. Everybody holding their breath on both teams with every shot or good scoring chance. You get the feeling that we're in overtime, even though there's just over five minutes played in the third period. They stop deep in the zone. Iserman with Lemieux. Korea 2 1 Canada, 5 30 gone in the third period. Finland up to center. Helping him. Pushed off the puck. Lemieux waits for help. Nobody coming up with him, so he backhands the puck gently into the finish zone. They turn with it and come back out. Carrying the center. Shot in. Chance for Rocha to the pass. Oh, just missed the far side. Roger lost his stick diving out. Now Canada the other way. Korea and Iserman. Iserman tries to set up Korea over in front of Lemieux coming up in the play. Mario Lemieux sets it up and in goal. And Korea had a great chance at He's going to get it. The refereeing had been very liberal tonight. And LaRue calls this one a hit on Yarko Rutu. Rutu turned to get his back. Here's the two on one. Just missed, and Broder was trampled on the play. So, special teams, you know how many times they've won or not won games. The penalty kill for Canada. They are have allowed two goals against eight times short. They missed the Olympic. Finland two for 13 on the power play. That's over 15%. And they're away to center now. Up over the line. Carried in by Ninova. Doing a pretty good job getting in there deep. Finland spread out in there looking to tie the game right here in the third period. Knocked in behind the net by Lippmann. And uh, it's missed out the blue line and cleared out. And down the ice, Pronger hurt. He's half hobbling off. Finland turning with it. Power 
power play. 125 left, and they move it smartly across center and up over the Canadian blue line. That is Nina again, getting the puck shot into the boards in the court. Look at Ruger handle that so well. Cleared it on the boards, but it doesn't get out. Now Nina winds up, takes the shot. He's there with it. Passes off to Solani. He'll drive it. Solani hands it off to the side of the net. Gives Solani a few chances there, and he'll drive it hard. It's knocked down at the side of the goal. Solani will be receiving this pass again. Now he winds up. He's covered. Can't get a shot because of that coverage. But he gets it back on the other side. Now the shot. And Solani just missed it. Comes off Solani off the boards and out. And down the ice. Penalty time, 42 seconds. Finland up again. Solani trying to drive inside. He's in there. Centered it. Oh, it went by the open side. And Bruger is out again. Lost his helmet. They have to stop the play when the goalie does that. He lost his stick, helmet, and everything except his composure. He, boy, he came close. But the Finns missed the empty net. There it is. Solani drives to the net. He's cut down right here. And the winger coming in on the other side there, Sammy Kapanen backhanded it over the net. There's Solani. He's got to step on McKinnis. Makes the pass. And Kapanen just cannot get enough wood on it to put it in. Here's what Pronger was complaining about. Ninema without a stick ran Pronger's head into the glass. No penalty call. 20, 35 seconds left in the Jovanovski penalty. Canada bench complaining that this is a stall maneuver by Solani to go over and get a new stick. Where's the hurry up face off when you need it? Is what Pat Quinn's saying. Sackick got the goal in the first. Iserman made it 2 nothing. Hagman made it 2-1. It's still 2-1. Finland on the power play. It will be for another 28 seconds. Finland back. That is Sammy Sallow. Smith for checking. Nearly knocked it down. Ilonen brings it across the Canadian line. Off to the corner by Pronger. Pass there. Pronger trying to take it away from him. He won't. Pronger stays with him. And the Canadians get it out again. Penalty has six seconds left. So, to all intents and purposes, they've killed it off. But one last rush up there. Calio on side. Shot high. Glove by Broger. Ever so calm hauling that one in. And he holds it. Now, there was a bit of a flip shot. And I think Calio was hoping that uh, it would not be caught by Broder because they did have someone going to the net. Yulonen's played a good, strong game, as has Calio for Finland. We played eight minutes and 14 seconds of the third period. 2-1 Canada. Face off to the right of Broder, won by Finland. They got it back to Ninema. He's been set up a lot back there at the point. Kapanen's shot, blocked. Another one coming up, though. Nope, and centered it, cleared away by Gagne. To the line, not out. Pressure by Finland here now as they try to tie the game. But it'll be Jerome McGinla who calmly flips the puck up to center ice, hopping away from Gagne, though. And they're going to make the change. Gagne going to the bench, leaving some room for Finland to come in. Here's that Nienema again. Rip the shot on. The Durner stick save at the blue line. Lume kept it in. Canada hanging on now. One goal lead. Down the ice it goes. That's going to be icing. We played 8.51 of period number three. Two to one. Canada leading. Well, Finland showing a little more energy in this first eight or nine minutes of this period compared to most of the first two periods. And Canada, you wonder whether they're just sitting back trying to protect the lead a little more than they should. It's a tough line to stay on the right side of them. They saw off in the Canadian zone again. They've had quite a few there now over the last few shifts. Nolan brings a puck away. Up to center. High one gets bounced into the right side for Joe Newman. He's in there fast. Newman in all over him. But Canada has it. Circling. Once Newman gets it up near the line, the Finns will attack. Four of them coming to center ice. In across the line is Helmerman. Tries to center it. Stopped by Jovanovski. He gives it to Rob Blake. And Rob Blake comes out for Canada. Short pass ahead to Smith. Looking at center. Stick handles at center. Lost it there. Jovanovski, though, dances in over the line and gets set. Tried to pass across in front. But it was intercepted and cleared out by Newman. 2-1 Canada. Nearing that 10-minute mark. Korea just missed it, and he was speeding in. He's over there now to pick it up off the boards. It'll be stopped at the line and kept in. McGinnis comes up. He won't reach it. He does now, but he can't get a shot from that angle. He's in too far, and it's flipped over the glass at the far side into the crowd. Well, here's what uh, Canada and 
Finland are trying to do win this game to play Belarus on Friday to see who goes to the gold medal game. That's Eastern Standard Time. It's already been decided that the United States will play Russia on Friday to see who gets a chance to play Sunday afternoon. The tough way to put it, of course, as we mentioned it several times throughout the night, loser of this game is gone. Again, has had to come outside the line taking that pass. 2-1 Canada. Again, shoots it in. This is a hard-fought game, no doubt about it. 16 shots by Finland, 31 by Canada. But it's only a one-goal lead for the Canadians. Gagne pinning his man on the boards. Eloranta trying to get a loose, got a skate on it. Gagne reaches in for it and gets the puck out. Gagne stops in the corner. He's bumped by Salo behind the net, working it out. Good work in there for the Canadians. Off the side of the crossbar. That shot went up and hit the crossbar, and this one is fired right on the net. Knocked back along the line, near the line, and Finns get down. Three of them. Yo Lohman gets in over the line with Eloranta, passes to the corner. He's tied up. Kapanen comes on, centers it right out in front of the net, and it's knocked away to center ice. Finns come back. Tiemann from center, dumping the puck in. That's Brodeur out again, playing it well. Has to hurry back in the net, though, because the pins are forechecking hard again. Two to one, Canada. And Canada gets it down there. It is Mario, one man back. Mario in, Mario right in. And knocked away from him by that one defender, Timonen. What a play. Yes, Mario Lemieux on the boards. Left it, Jovanovski is knocked down with a high stick. And the play is whistled dead. But what a, what a play by Chimanen on Mario Lemieux coming in off the wing. Well, Mario tried to go inside him on the rush. Chimanen was a, was worried about the fact that not only might it be, there's the tip that went off the bar and out. And here's another look at it. Joe Sackett gets a stick on it all right, and it hits the crossbar and comes right back down and out. Pekka wins the draw. Canada comes in after it. Pekka fired it around the net. Nobody over there but Finn players. And it's taken away from the corner by Alto. And out it comes to center. Kapanen missed it. Canada on it. Rapid hard, but it hit the linesman up the blue line over there, allowing Solani to move it out. Niedermeyer will have to hurry about back. Yuri Lettinen is right on top of him. And he stops at the side of the net. Pass. Comes out to Fleury at center ice. He had to try to get going. He was stopped taking the pass. Now he heads off. At center ice, says Jokinen. Canada gets the puck in their own zone, plays it up. Smith with Nolan. They turn back. Jokinen comes in again for Finland. Has Hagman up with him. Hagman slipped it in behind the defenders, in behind the net. Calio trying to center. Nolan digs it out, threw it through center ice, and nearly hits Smith with it, who is going away. Neuendijk was up with him. Now Hagman back in with the opening. Pass doesn't work. Calio turns around, shoots! High shot just missed. It ricochets off the board, out to center ice. Spins back up, the Canadians are changing. 7.30 left in the game. Down across the line again. Brought in by Rutu. He's nailed. They keep going, though. Puck is centered. Out in front of the net. Rutu comes out and knocked it away. Made the save and cleared it with a stick. And the Canadians are on their heels again. Have to shoot it down the ice icing. Rutu has done his job right there. Rob Blake threw a bone-crushing hit right here on Rutu. He's a very aggressive player and an effective one for Finland. Jokinen comes roaring in to throw Owen Nolan into the boards, but Nolan made a nice play. He took the hit, but he got the puck out of the zone. Takes off to the left of Brodeur. 2-1, Canada. They saw Side of the goal. McInnes takes it around the net. The view is there with him, but everybody was covered, so he shot the puck high to center. Korea knocked it down. Canada moving it up. McInnes didn't take the pass cleanly, so he just shot it in from the center ice. Over there is Sal. Canada gets it, but it's cleared out, and Finland on the move. Long pass up through center ice. Finland trying to get the zone. Korea had his man covered. And the Finns got it up to Kapanen. That was high to knock down. He missed it. McInnes around the net. In a hurry, got it over there, but 
Taylor Lume stopped that and fed the puck ahead. And the play has stopped that net, comes off that morning on the right-hand side of Broder, and it's off again. Eric Lindros has not played a shift in the third period. And uh, remember, he was uh, hurt in one of the first two games. Well, you wonder whether that injury is acted up again. They have 13 forwards, so Pat Quinn can still play four lines, even though Lindros is shuffled out of the deck for whatever the reason. Based off deep in the Canadian zone once again. Canada two, Finland one, nearing the 14-minute mark of the third period. The winner moves on to play Belarus Friday for the right to move on to the gold medal game Sunday. Lettinen left it for Yelonen. He gets the zone. It goes high again over the glass. McDonald's game story. All yours, Harry. Not over yet, but certainly it is getting close. It's 2-1 for Canada. Sakic and Iserman. Hagman's got the goal for Finland. Canada badly out shooting Finland and out chancing them, but only a one goal lead with about six minutes left. Slightly more. They saw it inside the line, scramble for it. This is fight to the death now. This late in the game. Anybody's game. One goal lead, Canada. Up is Adam Foot. He shot it into the zone, but the Canadians were changing. Nolan had turned to go to the bench. Finland looking very fresh. Start back out again. They're a smooth skating team. Down through center ice. Yellow and got the line. That's where he was stopped. Turning back. Newman up here near center. Timonen passed it back to Newman. He brings it over center. Back for Timonen. He's covered by again but not well enough. And it's shot into the zone by him. Canada back. Quickly, the Finn sends two in for checking. And now three of them are in there after it. Jokinen does get it. It comes to the line. Straight shot. Somehow, Broder saw that and stopped it. Another one from the other side is blocked. And it comes out over the line. The second one hit Gagne, and that hurt him. He limps off. Heppel Newman let a bullet go that Broder saw through a maze of legs and sticks. Five minutes left in the third period. Canada two, Finland one. Down across the line. And Rob Blake will have to hurry back. He does. Then he had to hurry to pass to Korea. He took his man, allowing the puck to get out. Too far for Mario Lemieux, though. And Steve Eiserman shot around the boards. Eiserman guessing that move, and he came over to pick it off. But Hagman got there ahead of him. Flipped it in. Knocked down in front by Pronger. And Lemieux was there to feed it back out for Canada. Good thing it got up to center ice. Canadians, Eiserman drops it back. Korea, what a save by Hervé on that bullet shot by Korea, labeled for that left side, just inside the post. Well, anybody who thought the Finnish Olympic team had goaltending problems, watch this stop and revise your opinion in a hurry. That is his 33rd stop of the evening. Korea got all of it, too. That's only the fourth time Canada has put a shot on goal in this third period. Go ahead, two to one. Finn. Coming close and up there again. After the puck near the line was Hellman. Just a step. Canada dumping it in. Flurry didn't touch it. It's called icing. So they bring it back to the Canadian zone. Canadian forwards, remind yourself, don't get up too far for the long pass, because if it doesn't get there, you're going the wrong way. There's a guy Finland would like to put out there to get the tire. Yari Curry, he had a pile of them, didn't he? Ten years ago, he would have been great. Yes, he's a big help to this team, too. This team now, lots of confidence. Shut out in one of their games, but one, two, and trying to bag this one tonight to go on for a chance at a game that might get them to the gold medal. Long shot knocked down in front of the net, cleared up on the line by Newman and then out. Finland have three going in hard again now. And on the boards is Calio, trying to center. Roderick got a stick on that, knocked away. Long shot doesn't reach the net, it was blocked. 
Canada fighting hard to try to cover for their goalie. But the Finland team is coming on strong. And they're in there hard now for checking with Calio. In the corner, he fell. Puck beneath him, stopping the play. So there's going to be a face-off in the Canadian zone. This hockey game rolling right along in the third period. We have 4.38 left. And Peter Mansbridge is watching, I know, back in Toronto. And he's getting ready at his news desk for the National. Coming up next. 16-22 gone in the third. 2-1 Canada. Center ice. Taken a long shot, missing the goal. In on the boards. Kapanen missed it. Canada can't get the puck out, though. Kapanen will go after it in the corner. Looks over in front. Here's a shot. That was blocked. Kapanen is on the puck again. Play comes back to the line, and it's hooked high by Gagne. Onto the boards, and it went over the boards at the Canadian bench, stopping the play. Jovanovski and uh, Timo Solani were having an awful battle in front of the net as the puck was leaving the Canadian zone. Let's have a look at this. There's Jovanovski and Solani. Jovanovski trying to get him out of there because the puck's still in the zone, and Solani's had enough of it and retaliates with the slash. Could have called a penalty, and either one of them did. Canada 2. Finland won 3.16 left in the third period. Finland battling hard, trying to come back to tie Canada. That is Prunger jumping back in his own zone. He's caught and flattened, and he's hurt. Prunger is slow to get up. Here's Mario Lemieux up over the line. Lovely pass to Iserman. Back to the corner he goes and turns with it. Iserman hangs on. It's flipped in wide of the net by Korea, but taken by Salo. He shot it on the boards to Solani, and Solani gets the puck out to Lehtinen, but he stopped. However, Kapanen is on it. Here's the play. Down across the line is Tiemannen. Tried to go in. He got outside and can't get back in on Adam Foote, who pushed him to the ice there in the corner. Finland, though, had the three four checkers in there again, looking for the puck. Canada will pick it up and get it out. One on one, this one. Korea coming in. Off the glass. Korea was blind. Now, Lume comes around on net and comes to center ice. Shot up there to Hagman. Hagman tried to bring it in. To the corner he goes. Niedermeyer is all over him. Blake Platt and his man. Boyes, hot and heavy out there now in the dying minutes of this game. Canada down and offside at the blue line. Flurry couldn't stop. We have two minutes and one second left in the third. Pronger getting a little attention as this is the second time he's been whacked into the boards head first. This time he gets cut. Solani. Pronger's looking down to make sure he can get the puck and Solani roars into him. You can see Pronger hit right for the glass is separated very slightly. Canada two, Finland one. Under two minutes left, folks. Under two minutes left in the third period. Finland attacking. And they're getting the puck in there. Pass from around the net by Hellman, and he's got a chance to move it out and does from the blue line. Long shot. That's knocked down. Here's another coming. They fan on the second one. Needham plays it over on the first side. Shot stopped in front. Newman and wide open for the shot. Side of the net. Another shot. Just one in the goal. Finland doing everything but getting that tying goal. Now it's on the board, and it does squeeze out by the blue line and out the center ice. Down inside the finish line, and it's grabbed in there by Aginla. Great work by Jerome Aginla. Defeated off to the corner. 1.20 left to play in the third period. Canada leads by just a goal. Foot is up. Centering pass. Hammered away at 2-on-1 Finland. Kapanen drops it back. In he comes with Niemann, and he was stopped. Had to back off through center ice. Salo, one minute left in the third period. Can the Canadians hang on? Here comes Solani. Look out for Solani. Cutting in hard, trying to drive it at the net. And it's to the corner of the net, empty at the other end. Can Canada get the puck out? No, it's shot around the goal again. Solani is stopped. Lemieux tries to roll it up on the boards and doesn't get it out. It's kept in there by Yolona. The net is empty at the other end. Canada can't get the puck out. Now they do. Mario wildly rolls it down. With 30 seconds remaining in the third period. Furious action here. Canada trying to hang on to a one goal lead. It is shot into the zone by Finland. Off on the far 
other side. Jovanovski couldn't stop it. Now he's up there to bat it down, trying to get it out, working hard to the line. And out! Great play by Jovanovski. Ten seconds left to play. Finland in again. Centering pass. Here's a shot. That's just wide of the goal. Over there is Nina about kicking it in back there for Kapanen. At the blue line. Shot. Knocked down. Canada's going to win the game. It's cleared out to center ice. What a hockey game tonight. What pressure. Oh, my nerves. It is 2-1. to one. Canada wins and will go on to play another day with a shot at a gold medal on Sunday. If they can win one more, that's just what will happen. Finland, valiant effort, but they have been eliminated. Well, Team Canada getting a little better every game of these Olympics. The score flattered Finland, although give the Finnish players credit. They came rolling in the last 10 or 12 minutes. Some good goaltending by Brodeur and some real gritty work in the own end of the rink. Adam Foote must have blocked five shots. Jovanovski, two big blocks in the last two minutes. And Canada advances to play Belarus on Friday. The United States play Russia Friday. And the two winners play Sunday for the gold medal. Final shots, Canada 34. Finland 19. Great game turned in by Kerme for Finland. It was a great game by both teams. I hope you enjoyed it at home. There's more hockey coming in these Olympics, and there's some more great hockey coming. No doubt about that. This one won by Canada just by a goal. It's a 2-1 final Canada. Now, Canada will go on to play another game. Belarus eliminated Sweden. They'll meet Canada on Friday. Russia eliminated the Czech Republic. They'll meet the United States on Friday, who defeated Germany earlier today. So, two games come on Friday that are huge to see who goes to the gold medal. Now, to Don and Ron. Thank you, Robert. Team Canada just filing off to the uh, right of us. <laughs> There's something nifty for you. We could twist that up. You could have any over the place. Yes. But first of all, we're going to see some guys that play at Iserman and Pronger. But first, let's we go to we got Iserman. McKinnis goes in. This is how they're winning. Watch Iserman cover up for him. That's how the defensemen can go in. We roll it right now. Can we? Yes. All right. Now watch it goes over there. McKinnis goes in. Now watch Iserman back here. He can go in there like this. You, if you could show, see Iserman, he's backing right up there by the far corner there he comes right out to the blue line now one other thing I'd like to show we saw Pronger going in he knew and he'd already been creamed before he knew he was really going to get creamed but he put the puck around anyhow knowing he was going to let's take a look at it right now puck was in there he goes back there he knows that guy's there he knows he's going to get it but he still put it around and got the puck out that's why we're winning we're winning by the skin of our teeth but we're out shooting the teams and we're going to get a few breaks. Look at that. He got a, he's got about a, he's got a, going to have a few stitches in there. He knew he was going to get hit, but for the team, he put that puck around there, boy, and that's why they're winning lots of heart. What a price paid there. Scott Oak. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Are. Okay. What are you going to ask me? No microphone, unfortunately. Poor Scott. He's got oh, Mardan Brodeur, who's unbelievable. Well, yeah, uh, you know, at the end there, I have to admit the Finns played pretty good. They had us uh, right near the end, the last minute. They never quit, so they should be proud, too. Ed Jovanovski, you pointed out, was the last guy they picked on defense and has really taken on a big role in Adam Foote, I thought, too. Was Boy, well, Adam Foote, he blocked those shots there. The whole defense is playing pretty good. But I like Jovanovski, the way he's playing. He steps up there. He is gambling, there's no doubt about that, but they don't expect him to gamble. So, to me, he's the best defenseman they've got out there now. I, I love the way he's playing. No sense telling Pat Quinn anything. He's doing the job, but would you start uh, shortening the bench at any point along the way, or do you oh, think with the altitude listen, and the pace? I'm not good when he's yeah. winning, so I'm not going to tell Pat Quinn. I know I, I remember in the World Tournament, I remember right. Kenny Dryden was sitting up there telling what I should do. I never forgot that. He knows what's going on. They're doing pretty good. They're not getting any breaks on the shots, but wait they start pouring in. Next game, I figure they're going to win by four goals. Another real key, uh, Don, that, that you saw and we have now for a couple games is Neuendijk on faceoffs is uh, amazing. Well, you said to me, why doesn't he have two centermen out there when he uh, 
oh, uh, near the end, and I said yeah. with Neuendijk, you don't need two centermen because he's going to win him clean or they're going to be a tie. I would have him on the last minute all the time for faceoffs because he never loses them, and they're clean, too. They're beauties. Okay, Brian Williams, we're going to send it back to you oh, at the uh, IBC here for a moment. Thank you, Ron. We are going to uh, take it back here. We'll try and get Scott Oak's microphone fixed. Let me give you the three stars as selected by the fans on the Internet tonight. The first star from Team Canada is Joe Sackick. He had the first goal of the game. The three stars online sponsored by Labatt Blue. Stevie Eiserman had the other Canadian goal. He is the second star and uh, no surprise here. Ferme was absolutely outstanding in goal for Finland tonight. Canada defeats Finland by a score of two to one. The semifinal, Canada against Belarus. And remember, Belarus upset Sweden earlier today, 4-3. That goes at 2 Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, noon here in the Mountain Time Zone on Friday. We'll have that. TSN will have the other at 4.15 Mountain, 6.15 Eastern. This should be a dandy. The United States and Russia. Remember, the United States and Russia hooked up last Saturday night here in Salt Lake City in a classic. It took a Brett Hull goal to tie it at two. As we go to break, we'll go back to the East Center and a game reaction from Wayne Gretzky. And there's the captain, Mario Lemieux. Team Canada defeats Finland 2-1. Sakic and Iserman Hegman for the Finns back live in Salt Lake after this. and missed out on an important contract. Which kind of exporter do you want to be? Export Development Canada. Realize a world of opportunity. For those who love cereal with their strawberries, introducing new special K red berries with a crunchy new flake and strawberries right inside the box. Special K red berries. The new Vector Energy Bar. Eat or be eaten. This is Cap Rouge, hometown of Patrick Bouchard, Olympic speed skater. It's my old town too. I'm a sports physiotherapist. First time I met with Patrick, he came in my office like this, barely walking straight and uh, we fixed them up. You can do that with a bad back. We have ice a great part of the year, so you might as well skate. Live in Salt Lake City, Scott Oak with Martin Brodeur in just a minute. Let's show you the reaction to that end of the game at Shanks. This is not Shanks and McLeod South, apparently. This is Shanks North in Calgary. They count it down. Listen to this.
And tonight, uh, again, I believe that is Shanks North, not the one on McLeod. And later tonight on Olympic Late Night, following the National with Peter Mansbridge with uh, host Terry Libel, Kelly Rudy will talk with some of the patrons at Shanks in Calgary. Scott Oak, you ready? He is. It's all yours. All right, anytime. Bartan, you had to know it was a four alarm blaze back in Canada after Team Canada's first two games. Can we conclude after tonight's win over Finland that uh, Team Canada has found its stride just in time? Oh, well, definitely. I think we, uh, you know, we wanted to take these five days before the, you know, tonight's game to, to, to know, our, know ourselves, know, know what kind of the system we want to play. And uh, it took it a little while. I think everybody was uh, a little scared, uh, even us. You know, I mean, it's not fun not uh, dominating. You know, when uh, when you play teams that you should. But uh, you know, we kept uh, going, and you know, now we're doing okay. You know, offensively we create a lot. We we'd love to score a little more goals to get some cushions once in a while. But hey, it was good enough. Uh, two goals tonight. Almost a redundant question, but I'll ask it anyway. You've played three games now. Are you confident that you've won the job? Well, I hope so. You know, I mean, it's like anything. This uh, was a do or die game, and uh, to give me uh, give me the start. So definitely was I uh, was really excited about that, and I'm looking forward to the next game. Sure, everybody watching tonight thinks that Team Canada should roll over Belarus into the gold medal final. What's your take on the opportunity to play a qualifier in the game for the right to go to the gold medal final? Well, I mean, it's tough. Uh, definitely, you know, today we knew that uh, Belarus won, and uh, you know, we were scared about this game, not overlooking the Finns because we knew that uh, you know we're going to play Belarus. You know, that's a team that uh, you know came in and then beat the Swedes and play, play them really hard and uh, they have a few uh, skilled players and you know whenever you have a hot goalie you never know in this uh, in this kind of tournament. Thanks Martin. Thanks. A lot of viewers tonight in southeastern Michigan you know this guy he's your captain Stevie Y from Detroit with a game winner. Congratulations. Home Depot has employed more Olympic hopefuls than any other company in the world. Home Depot. Proud sponsor of the Canadian Olympic team. When I look back, I realize if I had made that one decision differently, I might not have made it to the Olympics or the World Championships. When I look back, I'm grateful that I gave my life to skating and not to smoking. This year, over 45,000 Canadians will die from tobacco. That's why it's critical to take strong action to reduce smoking. Tobacco, we can live without it. Message from the Government of Canada. It's Canada Belarus Friday. By the way, four years ago in Nagano, Canada beat Belarus by a score of 5 0. Andre Mezin was the goaltender then. He was the goaltender today that beat Sweden. Stay with us. One more break. Sakic had the first goal tonight. There's Joe Sakic back to Don Cherry and Ron McLean after this. Having difficulty getting RSPs off your mind? We make it easy. RBC Financial Group. RSPs made easy.
introducing the tough, versatile Saturn view at home in almost any environment. Now, Skip developed an interesting habit at work last week, didn't you, Skip? All of a sudden, he has to print everything in color. I tell him, Skip, it's about the money. Even our white papers are in color. Huh? Actually, Mr. Arnold, uh, color isn't that expensive anymore. There's even an affordable color printer that's faster than 90% of the printers out there. Skip's ahead of the curve. <laughs> Here's the first goal of the game. Joe Sackick from Simone Gagne makes it 1 0. Iserman and Hegman would score in the second period. 2 1, Canada beats Finland. Let's go back live to the East Center. There he is, Scott Oak. You ready? I see you have Joe Sackick. Brian, thanks very much. Joe is high pressure wins going in the Olympics. That was certainly one of them. How did you win it? Well, obviously, uh, uh, we had a lot of jump early on, and uh, we got up to 2 0. We let, let them back in, but uh, for the most part, everybody played hard. Uh, uh, we generate a lot of chances. Uh, it just seems uh, right now every goalie seems to be hot against us. And uh, Marty played well for, uh, for us, made some big saves, and uh, uh, we hung on for the win. And that's the important thing. Now, based on how you played them, you probably should have won it by three or four goals. How did it lapse into a bit of a fire drill late in the game? Well, it happens. Uh, I mean, they're down a goal, and uh, they have to put the pressure on. And uh, we just wanted to make sure we didn't uh, make any mistakes. What's your assessment of the opportunity now to play at Belarus for the right to go to the gold medal final? Well, you saw what they did to Sweden today, so uh, we definitely have to uh, be aware of that. Uh, uh, but for us, uh, we just want to focus on us and, and try and keep building uh, building our team and uh, uh, hopefully get a, get a big win and uh, get to the gold medal game. Thank you, Joe. All right, anyway. Brian, back to you. Thank you, Scott. That is live at the E Center. Let's show you the reaction at Canada House here in downtown Salt Lake City tonight. End of the game. Back for a final word after this. It's over. If I had made that one decision differently, I might not have made it to the Olympics or the World Championships. When I look back, I'm grateful that I gave my life to skating and not to smoking. This year, over 45,000 Canadians will die from tobacco. That's why it's critical to take strong action to reduce smoking. Tobacco. We can live without it. A message from the Government of Canada. No, I'm on my way. If you can get it, that would be great. Okay. All right, yeah, no, I'll call you. Excuse me, miss, may I help you? No, thanks, I locked my keys in my car. Actually, um, this is my car. Oh, huh. I helped her in school, you know pass her classes and everything. Well, I, I took some photos. <laughs> I, uh, gave her rides to the mountain. Yeah. I Cafe. fed her lunch. Oh, yeah. This is what Natasha looks like when she's concentrating. <laughs> Don't want to say she looks like that. We've grown up with each other, so yeah. I can't imagine what yeah. any of us would be like if we hadn't known each other. Get Roots Winter Wear now at Petro Canada. A portion of the proceeds goes to our athletes. 
Ontario is a great place to live, work, and raise a family. That's why it keeps growing. As we grow, we're going to need more electricity. Continuous supply for the future. And more companies generating electricity. On May 1st, Ontario is opening its electricity market to competition. This means you can either stay with your current supplier at market rates, or you can choose to buy your electricity at a fixed rate from a retailer licensed by the Ontario Energy Board. The choice is up to you. For more information or a free brochure, call us. We're here to help. And a little bench reaction. There's Ryan Smith as we come back live to Salt Lake City. Sakic and Iserman for Canada. Hagman for Finland. 2-1 Canada. They'll play Belarus Friday. Belarus today shocked Sweden by a score of 4-3. In the other games today, Russia beat the Czech Republic 1-0. The United States defeated Germany 5-0. That should be a classic matchup on Friday evening. The United States and Russia. A couple of bronze medals for Canada in speed, uh, short track speed skating. Mark Gagnon and the women's relay team. Peter Mansbridge now. Next, 30 minutes from now, Olympic Late Night with Terry Lavell. I'm Brian Williams. Good night from Utah. CBC Sports, Canada's Olympic Network. Stealing, cheating, and lying. The riveting three-part miniseries. The last chapter begins March 3rd on CBC. Tonight, must win. Canada advances to the medal round, defending himself. At no time have I intended to mislead the House of Commons. The Defence Minister explains how he didn't intend to mislead Parliament. And party politics. New twists in the story that has Liberals fighting Liberals. The National, from the Canadian Broadcasting Centre, here is Peter Mansbridge. Good evening and what an evening for Canadians at the Olympics and across the country. We'll have more on the hockey game in a moment, but we begin with some other excitement on the ice tonight in speed skating and two more medals for Canada. In this women's 3,000 meters, the Koreans are going to take gold. Gold to Korea, silver to China, and Canada taking bronze in the women's First, the uh, women in the relay starting and finishing the race in third place. Isabelle Charret, Marie-Ève Drolet, Alana Krauss, and Tanis Vincent will be bringing home the bronze. And then it was Marc Gagnon's turn in the men's 1500 meter race. He actually finished the race in fourth place and watched as the Korean skater celebrated his win. But after watching the replay, officials disqualified the Korean for an illegal move, moving everyone else up and giving Gagnon the bronze. Now to the hockey game. As you know, Team Canada won and will advance to the semifinals. But it wasn't an easy win. And as Joanna Romiliotis reports, the drama began long before the game did. Only seconds on the ice, and there was no mistaking the expectations. After a shaky start for Canada, this Just was the night it could all begin or City. end. This big game, Finland and Canada. The loser will be eliminated. Team Canada knew that going in. At practice earlier, everyone was aware of what was at stake. Today is a do or die situation and uh, I think all the guys in our dressing room are, you know, really thrive on that. On the side of the net, it's centered! What a 
first chance that was. And it was the game to watch. Team Canada facing Finland in a one-game loser-go-home quarterfinal. It was a strong start, with Canada scoring the first goal in the first six minutes of the game. The backhander scores! And out shooting Finland 15-5 in the first period. Back home, millions of Canadians cheered on. Looks like Canada's dominated so far, and hopefully they'll dominate the rest of the game. Canada's, Canada's gonna, gonna win, win. Canada's gonna, gonna win. win the gold medal, <laughs> trust me. Pass to Blake, shot! It was a night of high drama and hard playing, but a lot of lost chances. Eight and a half minutes into second period, Canada outshot Finland 20 to six, driving hard for another goal and finally getting it. But 20 seconds later, Finland shot back and scored the team's first goal of the game. I like what they're doing out there. They've had some bad breaks around the net, but they keep up the work and they keep the intensity up and they keep the puck possession uh, the way they've been going. Things will work out real good. And a nation's Olympic hockey pride was on the line. Canada hasn't won gold in men's hockey for 50 years. Don Goff played on that winning team back in 1952. He went to Salt Lake hoping to be a good luck charm tonight. I know these guys are going to get it. I just know it. It's, just, it's our turn. Across the country, everyone was hoping it would be Canada's turn. And as Team Canada headed into the home stretch, a country held its breath. A lost chance that came so close. And as a nail-biting third period drew to a close, victory. in a country craving gold, a taste of what may be to come. Joanna Rumeliotis, CBC News, Toronto. Well, there was a lot of other action on Olympic ice today, including some major upsets. One line here for Sweden. Sundin steals, scores! Matt Sundin! The men's hockey team from Belarus was the underdog against Sweden, but a high shot from outside the blue line bounced off the Swedish goalie's mask and into the net. Kopat, high shot! pushing Sweden out of the Olympics and putting Belarus into the semifinals. And the miracle of Mint has happened! A shocker for Canada's women's curling team and skip Kelly Law. After a stellar performance of these games and what seemed like a sure shot at the gold, the team will now do battle with the United States for bronze. Great Britain will play Switzerland for gold. And Great Britain has moved to the gold medal game on the men's side, Canada will play for a gold medal. Skip Kevin Martin led the team to victory today over Sweden 6-4. to four. It's over. Canada moves on to the gold medal game. Canada takes on Norway in the final tomorrow. Well, it has a name that's kind of strange and scary, but so is the sport. Skeleton is like luge, only you go faster and face first. The CBC's Adrian Arsenault was there today as several Canadians threw themselves down the track. How's this for a comeback? Sold out crowds greeting a sport that's been gone from the Olympics for 54 years, namely because it wasn't popular. The ominously named and somewhat hard to see, skeleton. Absolutely a blur. You can't see a thing. Even if you could see, you might not want to watch. Belly down, head first on what is basically a big cafeteria tray hurtling down the same track as the bobsled and the luge, only often a lot faster. The talk here is that all of this snow is making the track a little slow, but there really isn't any such thing as slow and skeleton. It means maximum speeds here today is maybe 120 kilometers an hour instead of 130. One look at the crowd and it's clear, Canadians are among the favorite speed demons. These folks, family of slider Jeff Payne, Excited for him, a little worried too. One corner here I think is four to five G-forces, so that's why the chin guard, so I don't know how high they're lifting their head. But <laughs> First chin burn of the day to the lone Mexican slider. Uh, it's, it's a little scratch from the ice. That's a rite of passage in the sport. Certainly all five Canadian athletes competing today have been through it. None of them medaled here, but they are all good and getting much better. 
including RCMP officer Pascal Richard. Check out his sled. He taped it up himself. We're athletes, so we're so poor. <laughs> That's why we have to go with tape. It's not tape, I guess. Both Canadian women had a shot at a medal here, especially Lindsay Alcock, who ended up sixth. Michelle Kelly used to own the track record, but left in 10th place with a sore back, a sore knee, and apparently a crushed spirit. The pain I could deal with, it's a disappointment. I, uh, I feel like I let a lot of people down today, and I'm sorry, Canada, I let you down. No apologies necessary. Most of us wouldn't have the guts to even try this, never mind, be good at it. Besides, this really was destined to be an American moment. Not only did an American woman come in first, but American Jim Shea, a third generation Olympian, took the men's gold. In his helmet, a keepsake from his grandfather who died last month, 1932 gold medalist. Is it any wonder it was the Americans who pushed for skeletons Olympic return? Adrian Arsenault, CBC News, near Park City, Utah. Well, all eyes may have been on the men's hockey team tonight, but tomorrow Canada's women take center ice in the gold medal match against the U.S. The CBC's Ian Hanamansing sets up the big showdown. On the eve of the gold medal game against their longtime nemesis, the United States, the tone of Team Canada's practice was at times almost playful. Surprising when you consider the U.S., since winning the gold in Nagano, has beaten Canada in eight straight games. But as these players have seen many times during these Olympics, favorites don't always win. I mean, we've got a chance to win an Olympic gold medal, and uh, we've got a real good crack at it. Yesterday's semi-final against Finland certainly helped build the team's confidence. It was, for Canadian fans, frustratingly close for two periods. But in the third, Canada scored five goals, winning 7-3. I think everyone's really relaxed and, and confident. They're just kind of um, getting ready for the game tomorrow. I don't think, doesn't seem to be a whole lot of tension, so I think it's pretty, pretty good. The stakes are very high in the gold medal game, not just for the two teams involved, but for the sport itself. Back at home, the players of this girls' high school hockey game know the Olympics are the big league when it comes to women's hockey, and they've already seen the impact. Since the last Olympics, there's been a lot more teams and a lot more girls playing, and I think women's hockey's had a lot more respect. But for some reason, the Olympic boost has not extended beyond North America. Unlike men's hockey, this is virtually a two-country sport. Beyond Canada and the United States, a dramatic drop in talent and support. I'm somewhat disappointed in, in the growth base uh, internationally. Um, for sure, that's something that has to change for uh, women's hockey to be more competitive internationally. When you compare Canada to um, Finland, for example, we have 50,000 players to pick from, and they've got about maybe 5,000. So there's really a big difference there. It's a gap that Brisson and many of her colleagues would like to see closed eventually to make this sport more competitive internationally although their focus now is much more short-term, beating the United States. Ian Hanamansing, CBC News, Salt Lake City. To the other news of the day now, it was an important day for Art Eggleton. The Defence Minister appeared before a House of Commons committee, a committee charged with determining whether he deliberately misled the House over the controversial issue of Canadian soldiers taking prisoners in Afghanistan. Eggleton says he didn't intend to mislead anyone, but now the issue seems to be Eggleton's competence. More now from the CBC's Christina Lewand. Mr. Eggleton, did you lie? No. The opposition has called him dishonest, deceitful, even a bold-faced liar. But Art Eggleton insists it was all just a mistake. At no time have I intended to mislead the House of Commons. What's got the minister being grilled by his peers is the subject of this photograph. The capture of al-Qaeda prisoners by Canada's elite JTF-2 special forces in Afghanistan. The defence minister admits he blundered when he waited eight days to tell the Prime Minister about it and then told the House of Commons two contradictory versions of when he learned about the capture. For the record, this is the right one, he says. I was uh, first informed about the uh, detention of uh, prisoners in a mission 
uh, within 24 hours of when it actually occurred. So why did Eggleton wait over a week to share this information with the Prime Minister and the public? I, I didn't consider it to be uh, the, the major issue that some people did. An explanation several MPs, even Liberals on this committee, had trouble comprehending. How, how that failed to get by you and why you didn't recognize this as a potentially explosive p political issue and immediately seized upon it and sent it up. Especially since after receiving not one, but two briefings on the incident, Eggleton was repeatedly questioned about how Canada would treat the prisoners it captured in Afghanistan. He repeatedly answered in the future tense. We also expect the Americans to whom we will turn over uh, any detainees. To... The minister insists he didn't mean to deceive. If I was trying to Not hide realized. something, I, I wouldn't have got on there on the uh, on the 30th and given the the uh, the, the corrected uh, statement in the house. I obviously... Still, this whole affair raises questions about the accountability of Canada's JTF2 special forces. The defense minister says he's the only civilian to get briefed on the elite commando unit's activities. This journalist, author of a book on the JTF2, says that should change. Essentially what, what you've got is a defense minister acknowledging he doesn't understand the information that he receives about JTF2. Still, the minister's testimony offered no direct proof that he deliberately misled the House. For the committee, however, it raises plenty of questions. Not about the minister's honesty, but about his competence. Christine Lewan, CBC News, Ottawa. The problems for the Liberals go beyond the Defence Minister. A rift in the caucus between supporters of leadership hopefuls Alan Rock and Paul Martin has been making headlines for weeks. Today, Liberal MPs came out of their weekly caucus meeting agreeing to keep their disagreements inside caucus. But as Paul Hunter reports, that's easier said than done. Who'd have thought a simple stroll from one meeting into another would ever cause such a fuss? You were asked to apologize. Did you apologize? Of course not. Not only did Alan Rock not apologize to other Liberals as many had wanted, he also kept alive a public and increasingly divisive Liberal civil war. Many Liberals blame Rock for starting it by criticizing party membership rules, suggesting they favor Paul Martin in the unofficial race to be the next party leader. Rock's view was supported by this man, Liberal insider Warren Kinsella, who also suggested racism may plague Liberal backroom politics. Martin has called that beyond contempt. This was to be the meeting Rock answered to his critics, but afterwards he said little. Everybody expressed their point of view, including me, and we've agreed that caucus conversations should remain inside the caucus. Other Liberals off-camera said Rock made few friends today, though on-camera damage control kicked in. Everybody's hugging, honey. All of this as another Liberal headache got even worse. The new chair of the Commons Finance Committee, Liberal Sue Barnes, is caught up in more party infighting over suggestions she was named chair after the Prime Minister's office bullied MPs into supporting her over another MP, seen as being favoured by Martin. Welcome to everyone. Order. In the House, the Canadian Alliance said it was wrongly pressured to vote for Barnes. Interim leader John Reynolds said his party was told... If one of your guys doesn't vote for Sue, there will be consequences. Shame. The Speaker will look into it, but the government whip accused of making that threat says not true. Categorically deny the quote attributed to me by the leader of the opposition. When all was said and done, one of the other off-camera comments from an unhappy Liberal was that while the king's away, the kingdom's fallen to pieces. Prime Minister Kretschmann is in Germany. It's, it's a lively party. You know, I'm happy. My, 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 my members are there. You always say that they, they know that I control them too much. And now you would like me to, to do what you say I'm doing. So no, I'm not doing that. This was supposed to be a straightforward session for the Liberals, with a big majority, an opposition in disarray, and a history of peace within the party itself. Now plagued by infighting that, far from nearing an end, seems to be increasingly entrenched in Liberal Party politics. Paul Hunter, CBC News, Ottawa. Ottawa is contributing to a major new scholarship fund. The Pierre Trudeau Endowment Fund is for students doing advanced research in the humanities. Ottawa has earmarked $125 million for the scholarships and says they will soon rival the prestigious Rhodes Scholarships. The fellowships will be worth up to $50,000 a year for four years. 
There was horror on the tracks today in Egypt. A train packed with holiday goers caught fire just after leaving the capital, Cairo, and it quickly became a rolling inferno. Rescuers say more than 370 people were killed before the fire burned itself out. Although they're still searching for victims in the charred wreckage. The fire was reportedly started by passengers using cooking equipment on board. Bars on the windows stopped many from escaping once the fire started. The train was also severely overcrowded. An estimated 1,200 people were on board. The violent struggle in the Middle East seems to be entering a dangerous new phase. Palestinian militants are now stepping up their attacks on Israeli targets inside the West Bank and Gaza. And as Neil McDonald reports, that's prompted Israel to take its retaliation to a whole new level. In Gaza, a Palestinian mother grieves. Her son, an armed militant, was killed overnight by Israeli forces, and his comrades clearly intend revenge. In Jerusalem, an Israeli mother grieves. Her son, a soldier, was killed overnight by Palestinian forces. And it's a safe bet vengeance is on the minds of his comrades, too. Israeli soldiers and the settlers they protect have suddenly become the main targets for Palestinians. Last night, six soldiers were shot to death at a checkpoint. The Palestinians know world opinion is less likely to condemn such attacks. Even the Israelis hesitate to call it terrorism. The Palestinians call it resistance. Groups targeting the Israeli military uh, occupation and the settlers, and it's legitimate to continue this struggle. But that doesn't mean Palestinians won't pay dearly. They are. In ferocious overnight retaliations, Israel killed at least 15 people, mostly militants. Rockets struck the compound where Yasser Arafat remains trapped. And today, the army again bottled up Palestinians in their towns and cities. Those who tried to slip through the net did so at their peril. Palestinians are wise to keep their heads down today. Israeli soldiers here in the territories are rattled and angry and just plain scared. The apparent Palestinian decision to focus on military and settlement targets here has them feeling like sitting ducks, which in many cases is exactly what they are. Israel has evidently decided it's not such a good idea to leave its soldiers so visible, manning checkpoints and sitting in outposts. The government announced today the army will change its approach. By varying your methods of operation all the time, keeping the terrorists off balance, so that they have to think twice, where are you going to strike? And they have to think twice, uh, am I going to be able to sleep quietly in bed tonight or not? But the Israelis have been using stealth and commando tactics all along. It hasn't worked. Nothing has worked. More than a thousand people have died in this uprising so far, and certainly no one here, Israeli or Palestinian, is sleeping blissfully and securely through the night. Neil McDonald, CBC News, Ramallah, the West Bank. Canada called on the United States today to do more to use its power to end the violence in the Middle East. An economic update today from Bank of Canada Governor David Dodge. He says things are looking brighter, that there are signs the global economy has turned a corner and consumer demand is strengthening in Canada. Major arrests in Italy, four Moroccans who were reportedly found with large quantities of cyanide and maps of Rome's water system. The maps also highlighted this building, the United States Embassy. An Italian newspaper says one of the men was connected to an Al-Qaeda cell that was based in northern Italy. In the U.S. today, the Pentagon was fighting to get a message out that there's no need to worry about its new propaganda office and a controversial new plan it's been considering. As David Holton reports, the proposal calls for lies to be fed to media outlets in other countries. The plan came from a new Pentagon department known as the Office of Strategic Influence. 
The office was set up in the early weeks of the Afghan war when Osama bin Laden was scoring propaganda points in the Muslim world with his video messages. The U.S. information war was largely limited to broadcasting radio messages and dropping leaflets urging people to rebel against the Taliban. Time and again, the Pentagon said it would deal only in the truth. I don't recall that I've ever lied to the press. I don't intend to. Under the new Pentagon proposal, though, news stories, false ones if necessary, would be planted in foreign media. The aim to overcome opposition to U.S. policies and undermine U.S. enemies. Marvin Kalb, expert on media and public um, policy, says spreading that. false information uh, right. will backfire. It's unnecessary, it's foolish, it's counterproductive, and it shouldn't happen. Other critics argue that from the president down, U.S. government information must be honest. It should also be about unmasking the other guy's lies, not creating our own. Today, Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld said the only disinformation that he would allow is deception in battle situations. The Gulf War, for example, when the U.S. misled the Iraqis into thinking its ground attack would begin with a sea landing in Kuwait, when in fact the assault came from Saudi Arabia. As for any wider Pentagon effort to deceive foreign media, Rumsfeld said it simply won't happen. Government officials, the Department of Defense, uh, this secretary and the people that work with me tell the American people and the people of the world the truth. There's another reason why the U.S. may be very careful not to plant false stories abroad. Some of those stories may be picked up by U.S. media, and while it's perfectly legal for the Pentagon to lie to other countries, it's illegal for it to lie to Americans. David Halton, CBC News, Washington. The federal government has drawn up some new rules for one small part of the brave new world of biotechnology. It's called molecular farming. The potential is enormous. The implications worrisome. Ottawa has been consulting Canadians about the new rules, and that process is almost over. Our reporter on the story is Kelly Crow. Here at the University of Guelph, Judith Stromer is trying to grow an edible cattle vaccine inside an alfalfa plant. The plan would be to grow small amounts of this material, dry it down, sell it in pellets so that the uh, farmer could then feed to the cattle. It's the cutting edge of biotechnology. Scientists adding genes to produce drugs, vaccines, industrial chemicals, even plastics, all in the leaves of a plant. Every breakthrough in the lab creates new urgency for regulators who are just now writing the rules. Since 1994, Canada has approved 60 different field trials, but this year Ottawa is changing the terms. Experimental plots will have to be planted farther away from existing crops. Well, we have to make sure that this material does not get in, into the food supply. The risks, accidental mix-up with food crops, accidental exposure to animals in the wild, even genes moving from one plant to a related species. The research is so new, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency's own study says relatively little is actually known about the environmental risks. Right now, this Winnipeg environmental group is fighting genetic pollution of Mexico's corn crop. Even though GM corn is banned there, still studies show Mexican corn has somehow acquired genetically modified genes. Then there's the Starlink corn example, approved only for animal feed, somehow ending up in taco shells and in corn shipments around the world. And just this week, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency admitted that some genetically modified pigs were accidentally rendered into animal feed. All examples of controls breaking down. Still, Pat uh, Mooney believes the research should be encouraged, but, but the industry still has to prove it can control its own technology. And until they can get a control on that, I'd be very dubious about their ability to take something as potent as, as a transgenic drug plant and turn that plant into something which is safe for society. Well, there may be some cases where probably the best thing is, that, is not to authorize some of these things. Um, but we're not uh, at this point in time saying no to any of these trials. Uh, we're looking at these on a case-by-case -case basis. Back in Guelph, the scientists say they're aware of the risks. Science and progress has to take place. And we just have to make sure that uh, we do it cautiously and uh, we don't go reckless in our experiment. At this point, it's all still at the research stage. Ottawa estimates it has a few years before anyone applies for widespread commercial production.
Kelly Crow, CBC News, Guelph, Ontario. That's the national for this Wednesday. More Olympic coverage is coming up from Salt Lake City. I'm Peter Mansbridge. Thanks for watching. Captioning of this program is brought to you in part by the new Robitussin Honey Formulas. Real honey, real Robitussin relief. Meet my mom, the psychic. She sees things. Rob, not in the house. She knows things. Nice job on your room. It's all under the bed, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Must be a mom thing. And when we get coughs and colds, cover your mouth before you... <coughs> Cough. She knows we use Robitussin. New Robitussin honey formulas. Real honey, real Robitussin relief. Recommended by Dr. Mom. I'm gonna take a westbound, heading down the rails. I end my day with the setting sun. I'm a happy man, now the work is done. Now when I hear that whistle call me, no matter where I to inspire us. Congratulations. The following is a live presentation of CBC Sports. There's a thin line between that and world records. Facing sudden death. Team Canada battles Finland. Winner moves on. And always long on excitement. Short track speed skaters deliver a whole bunch of thrilling emotions. Day 12 in Utah. Yes, Calgary, we saw you were feeling it. Welcome back to downtown Salt Lake City. I'm Terry Libel. It's late night on day number 12. And yes, they were feeling it in Calgary. They were feeling it in St. John's, probably in Nunavut to Victoria, all the way down here to Salt Lake City, Canada, Finland, and most of all, I think Wayne Gretzky was feeling it. A little Nagano payback. Here's Bob Cole's magical calls. 
Pronger. Once again, the pass. Dandy move at center ice by Sakic. For Sakic, the backhander scores. Two Sakic makes it one nothing. Canada, three Canadians, two back, and they're coming in hard. Korea to the net, right in front. The pass, score. Wow, Eiserman, a beautiful setup by Lemieux. Two nothing Canada. Twenty-eight shots by Canada, nine by Finland. It's 2-0 Canada. Score! They got it back. Right away. Over there is Dean about keeping it in back there for Kapanen. At the blue line. Shot. Knocked down. Canada's going to win the game. It's cleared out to center ice. What a hockey game tonight. What pressure. Oh, my nerves. You know what, Bob? I think Canadian nerves across the country were frayed on this one. Canada, courtesy of Sakic and Iserman, defeats Finland 2-1. Finland goes home. Canada earns the right to move on to the semifinals. Let's run down other scores. No surprise here, really. Germany was a qualifier. The United States' definitive victory, 5-0. Look at the balanced attack. Rona, Chelios, Amante, Leclerc, and Hall. This was a tightly fought game. Habi Bulin held them in. The Russians over the Czech Republic, 1-0, courtesy of a goal by a Finneganoff. And finally, huge upset. Belarus, can you believe it? Sent to the champions of Olympic Games home. 98, the Czech Republic won gold. They're gone. Sweden in 94, they're gone. So here's where we stand. Canada, Belarus, I want to draw your attention to the time of play. In the semifinal, it's 2 in the afternoon, Eastern time. Remember this, in Nagano, Canada defeated Belarus 5-0. Same goaltender, by the way, for the Belarusians. Okay, the United States, Russia, 6-15, Eastern. And remember this, the U.S. and Russia play tough to a 2-2 tie here in round-robin play. Canada's short trackers came up big yet again. Two medals today, one of them bronze in the women's relay. That's Alana Krauss and her teammates, a bronze medal. Every time Canada has gone to the rink in women's relay, they've come home with a medal. This time bronze, no surprise, as Korea and China go gold and silver. This is a great result for an outstanding veteran of the short track speed skating team, Mark Gagnon. An individual bronze medal in a new event, the men's 1500 meter event. And there he is with his coach, Sylvie Daig, a multiple Olympic medalist herself. This is a great story also for the United States. Apollo Anton Ono with the gold medal, Gagnon with bronze. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder what Canada is going to call about tonight. Could it be Canada moves on to the semis in men's hockey? Or maybe it's the two bronze medals. Canada's moving up in the medal count. one 865 883 We really want to hear from you. It's been a great day for Canada. Hasn't it, Calgary? It has been an outstanding day. We are going to go back to Shanks. Yes, we're coming to you. And Kelly Rudy standing by to field some of your questions. Road to Gold, next. The 2002 Olympic Winter Games on CBC, brought to you by Vector, eat or be eaten. And by Visa, worldwide partner of the 2002 Olympic Winter Games. Excuse me, ma'am. Can I have a moment of your time? True or false? I enjoy frosting in the morning. True. Raise the roof. Try to remain professional, sweets. True or false, sir? Eating nutritious food is important to me. True. Bravo. Add a notch to the wheats, Tally. Whatever. Okay. That's 43 likes for the sweet side and 43 likes for the wheat side. So what have we learned? I've learned time at the mall is better spent buying shirts. Shirts? You don't wear clothes and you have no arms. Speak for yourself.
out of the blue. The back blue. Back in shot. 17 scores. Dreams. We carry them with us all the time. Some we've had for as long as we can remember. Others are very new. Dreams can comfort us, move us, and inspire us to build a better life. But how does a dream get off the ground? RBC Financial Group. Make the most of your dreams. To go. Brought to you by Labatt Blue, proud sponsor of Canada's Olympic team. Well, I promised you road to gold, and that means Kelly Rudy, and we got a lot to talk about. Yep. And no wonder you got the big smile <laughs> on your face. Team Canada, what'd you see out there that you liked? Well, for both teams, I liked a lot. I thought both teams uh, played as well as I think they can play. Uh, passionate. Uh, both sides uh, um, got a lot from players that I didn't expect uh, could play this well. Ed Jovanovski may have been, uh, it may have been his finest moment, most defining moment in his career so far. I'll tell you what, one thing about uh, Jovanovski is that now he has to do this every night in Vancouver. But Joe Neuendijk, I think, has been the best player so far for Canada in the tournament. Watch this. Canada's on the power play, second period. And there's a miscommunication by the Finnish team. And Joe Neuendijk walks right through the faceoff gets a great chance. We're going to see it again. Now, Tiemann, the defenseman for the Finnish team, for some unknown reason, he's over here by the board somewhere. Neuendijk notices it. Notice how he's ready to go. He's going to move even before the puck is dropped. So let's roll it. Now, Neuendijk, right there, he's already going. That's a beautiful move. Isn't it? He's anticipated that they've made a mistake. I'm going. But isn't it an unbelievable moment for a young player like Ed Jovanovski to step up and lead by example? Because yeah. that's what he did tonight. I bet, Terry, that he falls asleep about 3 or 4 in the morning. <laughs> Honestly, I've been there. Some of those moments, uh, you, you're in bed and you just can't fall asleep. You have so much adrenaline running through your body. Well, let's talk about Tamo Solani. What do you think of, uh, I mean, he, he's been playing well. They keyed on him. They knew it was going to be him, Kapanen. Yeah. What did you think of his play? I'll tell you what. A lot of people think of him is only a goal scorer he's a warrior and the way that he played tonight uh, really proved to me that uh, he's a winner and uh, I know he scored a lot of big goals in his career and he's had uh, four and five goal games that may have been his best game ever all round it, it was great to watch let's talk goaltending and uh, before we go to perhaps one of the greatest gaffes in goaltending Oops. you know where I'm going with this yeah. with Tommy Sal I don't want to go there yet let's talk about the goaltending what you saw from uh, Erme and Brodeur uh, Herme probably played better than I expected, and he's one of the guys on that team that I thought if Canada came out strong and uh, threw a lot of pucks at him, that he may cave in, may be thinking something like, boy, can I do this for 60 minutes? And uh, he did. Uh, Brodeur was solid again. He's uh, getting better every game. Uh, nothing spectacular, but then again, he's not being faced with a lot of shots. And uh, given the opportunity to play here, he's proven that he's a winner. Got a feel for Curtis Joseph, though, just sitting there and watching this unfold. I do. I feel for Eric Lindros also. And, you and where know, was he, by the way, in the <clears throat> third period? Well, there's a rumor that there's an injury, um, and I have to believe that to be accurate because, uh, as you know, I've talked to you and Ron about it, that uh, I don't think he's playing the way that I expect Eric to play, and uh, he didn't play one shift in the third period, so clearly there's something wrong there. How about the Sackick line with the Ginla and Gagne? Young they looked guys. Yes. And doesn't that say a lot about their development in that uh, Pat Quinn with the minutes to go in the game, that he has those guys out there. He trusts them. Jerome McGinley playing uh, like a 30-year-old in that in the offensive zone with the uh, time running down. He's not being greedy. He's not going, I'm going to get the third goal. Now's the time that I have to just roll the puck in the corner. It's really something to watch. Smart hockey. Yeah. Let's talk not smart hockey. <laughs> Let's talk it. <laughs> Honestly, I watched this unfold in my room before coming into the studio. I could not believe what I saw from Tommy Salo. I feel for him because I've been there and I've done things like this and we're going to see the low angle first and this is with uh, just over two minutes left in the game and you can see that he's surprised by this shot and I think in fact right there he's hurt a little bit. He's stunned by the shot and you know what Terry, I have a theory on this. It's that uh, Sweden, they were badly outplaying Belarus. They had outshot them badly. Tommy Salo is not getting a lot of work. And remember, 
In this format, it goes to overtime, 10 minutes, and then a shootout. And I'm sure with the lack of work that he was thinking that uh, about overtime. He was or, thinking ahead. He was. And you know, you're, you're so right because yeah. look at the goalies that were worked today. They came up big. That's right. And Salo did not. And frankly, that's how I played my best. When I had a lot of work, then I was okay. And if I had games like this where he only faced 19 shots, then I started to think so. I know that's uh, probably a pretty good point. Are you ready to field from some shots from Calgary? Oh, I'd love that. Perfect. That's, that's where, where we're I going. live. <laughs> that's where we're going. Doug Dirks from CBC is out there. And Doug, uh, we're interested for questions for Kelly Rudy. What do you have? <laughs> well, as you can tell, Terry, it's been a madhouse here all night at Shanks at uh, Crowfoot Village. More than a thousand people turned up here for an exciting hockey game. Kind of an eerie feeling. I drove over here. I was a little late getting here. Drove past Canada Olympic Park. And those slopes are usually busy on a Wednesday night. Almost deserted. Then I got here. The parking lot was full. And all these people were here. And they didn't stop from the drop of the puck. And uh, joining me now, Kelly, it's a rare treat for you because on after hours you usually take phone calls. But Michelle has a question for you. Michelle? Hi, Kelly. Hi, Michelle. You played goalie in a lot of big games. So how do you feel Martin Brodeur felt in this game tonight? Well, Michelle, I think that uh, from watching Martin quite a few times now, that uh, what impresses me most, even in big situations like this, Terry, he, his nerves never get the best of him. He's always so calm, and he just stands there so still, whereas in contrast, I used to skate around a little bit to get through the nerves a little bit, and other goaltenders do that. So I'm very impressed the way that he uh, handles himself because it's tough to do with that pressure. Uh, do we have another question, Doug? Go ahead. Oh, we have many questions. All right. Perfect. That's uh, what we Stuart want. Is wrapped, <laughs> Stuart's wrapped in the Canadian flag. <laughs> and, and they're celebrating more than goals here, as you can tell. Stuart, what's your question for Kelly? Hey, Kelly, how are you doing? Great. My you? question is, we know what Wayne Gretzky's uh, team was. I was just wondering, who would you pick for Team Canada, or would you have kept Team Canada exactly the way they are? No, I think, uh, uh, Stuart, I would have chosen the team the, the same way that uh, Wayne had, and Terry, you and I talked about this the uh, very first night that I came on, that leading up to it, I was thinking there may be a couple of guys that could be replaced, but no. Uh, I saw them in the first practice, and I was thrilled with the way that they were coming together. And I'm not so sure any of the people that we heard about the other names could have done a better job. These guys have really come together uh, in trying times, and uh, they face some adversity, which is probably a benefit to their team. And uh, I'm very happy with the way that uh, this team is playing together as a team. Another question for Kelly from Calgary? Yeah. Good, thanks. Well, we were watching, of course, everyone was watching the uh, Sweden-Belarus game today, Kelly, and was shocked when we saw that Tommy Salo gaffe that led to the Belarus school. And we hate to look too far ahead, but Kirsten is here, and she's already looking ahead. What's your question for Kelly? Hi, Kelly. Hi. Assuming that Canada wins against Belarus, who do you think they'd rather face, the States or the Russians? What a great question. Boy, that is a tough question, isn't who would you it? If you were on Team Canada, who would you rather face, the United States, at home, or Russia? I think, uh, and we've talked about this before again, Terry, I feel that the United States has the best group of forwards here, but uh, for some reason I just feel that the Russians might be more dangerous. There's something about their program and with their... Uh, uh, coach uh, and just and, the program. And somebody named Habi Bulan? Habi Bulan, absolutely. <laughs> He's been really good. Uh, that's a tough question, though, yeah. because uh, I could see both teams winning a gold medal. Uh, so this, uh, it's a competition where, uh, as you're right, uh, goaltending is going to be a big part. Injuries. Hey, we haven't right. talked about injuries a lot again lately. And uh, with Eric maybe being out with an injury, some of these guys are banged up on the other teams also. And by the way, the Americans have outscored their opponents in the first four games 21 to 3. Wow. So that's offensive. Yeah. That's All right, deadly. another question for us? All right, Kelly, you and I spend a lot of time at Calgary Flames games, and of course we've had the pleasure of watching Jerome McGinley play all season and rack up the NHL scoring lead so far. So I scoured Shanks looking for a representation of Calgary. Mark is here. He's going to show us the back of his jersey. He's got the Team Canada replica jersey with the Ginla on the back. And of course, this question has to do with Jerome McGinla. Mark? Yes, hello, Kelly. Hi. I just have to say, being a native Winnipeg, this fits almost as well as my Jet jersey. <laughs> But I do have a, a two-part question for you, actually. First of all, what do you think of the uh, contribution Jerome McGlynn has made so far to the team? And uh, on the basis of what you've seen, been down there for, uh, for a week or so, how, how badly do you think Canada should uh, snot, snot rag on Belarus this Friday? <laughs> 
Well, first, let's address Aginla. I think that uh, I've proven my hockey knowledge when in uh, back in December when he was chosen to be on the team. I wasn't sure if we could find a spot for him in the roster. I thought that uh, with the four lines, he may be the odd man out. So I've proven to everybody that uh, he's really improved. He's uh, such a great player, and I know his coach, Greg Gilbert in Calgary, will be thrilled with the way that Jerome's uh, developing here. Uh, secondly, I'm not so sure that they're going to beat Belarus, as the uh, viewer uh, mentioned, uh, so easily. Uh, one of the things that well, I think... Sweden, team... Sweden yeah. got caught. Now, for whatever reason, let's go back to that Sweden-Belarus. Well, How did that happen? I think that, uh, and Belarus, they're going to watch films of Germany and Canada and realize that uh, the way that German, the Germans played Canada, just lining back at their own blue line, four and five guys, that uh, I'm sure Belarus is going to do the same thing. One thing Canada has to watch, they can't get frustrated with that. And we saw a little bit of that frustration in that Germany game. And uh, that's one problem I have with uh, the way that uh, the Belarus team is going to play. So what does Canada's coaching staff do in anticipation of the matchup against Belarus? Well, one thing is good. You don't have to motivate your guys because you know that they're now playing with passion. But just remind them that uh, you still have to get the puck deep. And, you know, it's interesting, Terry, watching this uh, tournament go on. In the first two games, I thought Canada tried to play too much of an international hockey game. Whereas now, they're playing more like a North American team. The center's coming in deep. Great puck support. Um, it, it's really as though the center ice line is back in play. I couldn't again. agree with you yeah. more because I remember when we first started our Road to Gold coverage at the beginning of the round robin play, we were so used to seeing that open ice, yeah. beautiful passing, Sweden, Finland, uh, the Czechs even. And I kept saying to you, well, I don't know if Canada is adjusting. You said, no, no, no. They've got their play, they're putting it into form. And it did look like a North American style game out Hasn't there. Hasn't it? Yeah, I really believe yeah, I that. I agree. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Doug, out in Calgary, you have another question? Oh, great. Absolutely, Terry. There's no shortage of red and white here at Shanks, and I'm sure there's going to be a run on Canadian jerseys starting tomorrow. Amy, show us your cheek. There are a lot of these Canadian <laughs> tattoos in the bar tonight, and Amy has a question for Kelly. Uh, Amy, go ahead. I just would like to know how valuable Mario Lemieux's leadership is to the Canadian team. That's a great question, Amy, and that uh, I think a lot of us expect great things from Mario because of his history. But uh, to me, he's proving his leadership even more so now because he's playing great, but secondly, because he's playing injured, and everybody knows that. And uh, he's fighting through probably his, one of his worst injuries anyways, and uh, he's doing it for his country. He's not doing it for the team that he owns. He's proving to all of us, he's proving it to Wayne Gretzky and his teammates that uh, he will... Uh, play injured, and that's one of the greatest compliments a player can have. Can I backtrack for a yeah. moment to the uh, Finnish goalie, Yanni Erme, yeah. who is coached by Jacques Martin? Yeah. <laughs> How weird is that? I know. In fact, uh, our road to gold earlier today, I asked Jacques Martin about uh, Herme and his uh, strengths, weaknesses, and so on. And uh, he was uh, actually quite concerned about having to face him because he knows his strengths, uh, that he's a battler. Uh, he won't give up. They and didn't, they didn't necessarily solve him, did they? He they didn't held solve his him. own. He, no. should, he can go home. Well, he's not going home immediately, of course, but he can be proud, can he not? He can be proud. I'm sure he's disappointed, yeah. though. Yeah. Anytime, even though you play well but you lose, you're de definitely disappointed. So, Kelly, uh, how old were you, let's say, for that uh, Miracle on Ice game? Were you in school? Oh, no, I was playing junior. Did you stay home from school, though? Or did I was probably on the road on the bus somewhere. Well, yeah. the game between Canada and Belarus is at 2 in the afternoon Eastern on Friday. I know you where think you're the going. kids should stay home, absolutely. or at least should the teachers put the television sets? Yes, okay. absolutely. It, it brought our country Tell together. Canada. All Go those ahead. sort of historic you. hockey games. Teachers out there, let the kids watch for one afternoon. No, no harm there. All right, <laughs> as we continue, uh, one last question. Yep. Uh, we've talked about the Russia-United right. States matchup. Um, before we get there, Doug, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you out there. You want one more? One more question, Doug, go okay. ahead. <laughs> That's okay, I need Marty McSorley here. <laughs> after me. <laughs> We'd never get on, or though, maybe Doug. A ref <laughs> I know, or maybe an official, and that leads us to our last question here from Shanks, and Jared has that question, Kelly. Hi, Kelly, uh, I was wondering what you thought about the officiating NHL versus Europe or double IHF rules. Uh, Darren, that's a great question. Also, uh, I found uh, I found that the refereeing here has been terrific, and uh, in large part, it's uh, it's all the NHL referees doing a fantastic job. What I like about it is because it's only one official, and they're letting the guys play. These games aren't being uh, slowed down in any respect with uh, too many penalties. Uh, I know that somebody uh, mentioned to me uh, that maybe Jovanovski's penalty was. Uh, 
uh, wasn't really a penalty in the third period, but I think it's terrific. Uh, I do hope that uh, the NHL at one point would go back to this because there's now there's no uh, um, difference between the two. One guy's not trying to show up another referee. But you know what? The pace of the game is fantastic, oh. isn't it? I mean, the players probably hate it because they're gasping, but yeah. for the viewer. Quality of players helps too. Yes, you are right. <laughs> Kelly, it's been great. Thanks, Can't Terry. wait yeah. for uh, fall. Oh, wait a minute. One Thanks. prediction. Tomorrow, Canada, women. Let's oh. not forget, United States against Canada. Canada, because it's reverse as in uh, Nagano, where the... Uh, oh, you're going to flip it. Yeah, that's okay. right. Because, Same circumstances. Because Canada comes in as the underdog. That's right. Think, okay. St. Pierre yeah. will be terrific. Kim Sampierre, the goaltender, perhaps, or maybe Sammy Joe Small. You know what? They haven't decided, and they're not oh. telling the women until okay. the morning. So, wow. Danielle Sauvageau will make that decision. Speaking of goaltenders, there's Marty Brodeur's dad, Denis. Got the big old lens on there. That's got to be at least 400 to 1. He's going to get some gorgeous shots of his son. He's an Olympian, too, by the way, as we continue. Thanks a lot, Kelly. That was great tonight. Road to Gold, brought to you by Labatt Blue. Proud sponsor of Canada's Olympic team. Change for a dollar? <laughs> sure. Introducing the all new Chevy Avalanche. The only vehicle that changes from an SUV to a pickup. Thanks. Chevy Avalanche, Motor Trends 2002 Truck of the Year. Avalanche, like a rock. athletes and the only card they accept is visa FIFA World Cup from Korea. Capture the magic. Starting May 31st on CBC. Discover the Olympic Winter Games online. Get interactive with video features and forums. Complete news of events, listings, and get in touch with your hometown hero. Experience Salt Lake 2002 at cbc.ca slash olympics. with the tragically hip and Canada's Olympians, Saturday. Tragically hip, huge hockey fans. They'll be watching this one tomorrow. The gold medal game, Canada versus the United States. Jennifer Botterill, one of the great offensive threats for Team Canada. Note the time, four in the afternoon on the West Coast, seven in the evening, Eastern Standard time as we continue on day number 12. Canada, Finland, as you now know, Finland lost. They're out. Canada moves on to the semis against Belarus. Here's some post-game reaction. Adam, that was a high-intensity, high-pressure game. How did you feel? Well, I felt we came out early and got a lot of chances. It would have been nice to see a couple going uh, earlier, but uh, we didn't lose our composure. We had everyone back playing good D, and, uh, you know, we got the, the main thing, we got the win. 
Well, you know, I've said all along, I've been in a lot of uh, world tournaments and uh, sometimes you have uh, your bad spells and it's better to get them uh, done early in the first game like that. Uh, we built uh, from there and every game we've gotten better and uh, we're going in, uh, you know, to the meta round on a positive note. Well, I think from the goal turnout, Marty played exceptionally well and I thought defensively it was a pretty solid overall effort. Um, you know, I think the way Finland played, it allow, allowed us to play uh, more of that North American game that we're all accustomed to. They have an aggressive forecheck, you know, where we really needed to have guys come back and support one another, and that's where our success has been all tournament. And, uh, obviously, our captain, Mary Lemieux, have stepped up to the plate, and, uh, um, you know, there's some key players that, uh, uh, on, the, on the back end, too, uh, Niedermeyer and Blake. I mean, these guys uh, obviously have been uh, to the finals in, in the Stanley Cups and uh, know what it takes to win. And, uh, uh, it's it's nice to uh, as a young player to see that and uh, you you learn something from it. Yeah, it's always tough. Uh, the last minute of the game, uh, they were desperate, and uh, I think we were as well. Uh, we were uh, diving for pucks and, and blocking shots and uh, played desperate for the last minute and uh, came out on top. So that was a great feeling. Well, it's a little tougher when it's uh, greedy a little bit, you know, because you're looking for the puck all the time. You know, guys are diving, guys are hitting, and and uh, you know, there's a lot of. You know, people are crashing the net, so for goalie, it's a lot harder to look through screens all the time. And physically, you know, and mentally, it's a little more draining. Uh, definitely, I think this is a, a good way to play against the teams that we played because you know they 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 have a lot of skill, and we need to be in their face all the time. But uh, you know, we'll see in the, in the future games how you know how we're going to be able to adjust if teams are are just going you know the pretty plays and stuff like that. Well, stay on the ice, move up to Ogden for curling. Some bad news and some good news. The bad, Kelly Law did not win in the semifinal, so she will play for bronze. The good, Kevin Martin from Canada, has now fulfilled a 10-year dream. It's coming into sharp focus. The last time Canada's Kevin Martin and Peja Lindholm of Sweden met in a major semifinal was at the 1997 Worlds in Bern, Switzerland. Lindholm won that game 6-4. Sweden won the round-robin matchup with Canada earlier this week on an extra end, the only loss for Kevin Martin. On the first end, Canada's big weight ability sets up a scoring chance. Don Walchuk playing the double is on target. Canada lies too. Last rock of the end. Martin with two choices. Draw for two or play a double for three. Martin chooses the latter. Another upweight shot. The hit, the roll, the double, and a great start for Canada. A 3 nothing lead after one. The Canadian skip looking at a couple of other Swedish counters in the second. Trying another double. Trying to avoid a jam. But one of them sticks around. Sweden lies one. Lindholm takes advantage of the error. The draw for the extra point. And the two-time world champion has his draw weight early. He makes the shot for a pair. And he cuts the lead to a single point after two ends. The third end was a blank. And here's why. Three red rocks in the rings belonging to Sweden. But Don Walchuk takes care of that. The triple. And all the red rocks disappear. A big moment in the seventh end. 5-3 Canada. Martin lying second shot in the back of the forefoot, surrounded by red rocks. Lindholm with a chance to tap the Yellowstone out for three, maybe even four. He gets by the guard by more than he really wanted. And it won't move as it comes into the rings, and Sweden has to settle for one and a 5-4 deficit after seven. Another crucial shot in nine. Canada up by a deuce, but Sweden is lying to. Martin initially called for a hit and roll, and thus would be pretty much conceding a deuce. But the front end, Don Bartlett and Carter Rycroft, talked him into a tough double. Martin relented. He threw a heater. Rycroft lost his gripper, but it doesn't matter. The double is made. A great shot by Kevin Martin. Canada two up in the tenth. Martin just needing a pick with his last rock. And he's on target. The Swedes are run out of rocks. A 6-4 win for Kevin Martin. He's assured a silver medal. Has a chance at gold in the final on Friday against Paul Trulson of Norway. 
I also talked during the course of the game about you making the comment and your teammates making the comment that this is much more intense than any briar or any cash spiel you've been in. I, it, there's no comparison. I think the reason being you're part of a bigger team and uh, curlers aren't really used to that being part of this bigger team and you know there's a lot of pressure on to uh, to make darn sure we we help Canada out. You feel you've uh, got rid of a few of the ghosts from international competition in the past. I'm sure a lot of people have reminded you of it. Well, we'll see two days from now. Obviously a very happy Kevin Martin with his advancement to the gold medal game. Martin said prior to the semifinal contest against Lindholm, if we curl 90%, we'll let the cards fall where they may. They almost curled 90% as a team in a very hard-fought game. Well, they played very well, and what we saw today was a lot of respect for each team. Sweden's Pea Lindholm also played very well to come back from that three-point deficit in the first end and make this very close coming home. So it'll be Paul Trulson of Norway against Canada's Kevin Martin in the gold medal game. Trulson, a little fortunate, Mike, to advance to the championship game. Very fortunate. You have to, your heart has to go out to Andy Schwaller. Had an open hit on his last zone. It picked something up right out of his hand and ended up racking on a guard and Trulson now in the fi in the final against Kevin Martin and Kevin Martin defeated Paul Trulson in round robin play by a score of nine four and eight ends but as Don Walchek said after I think Norway was playing possum we'll find out it's Canada and Norway in the gold medal final 430 Eastern time on Friday A rematch of the semi-final from the 2000 Worlds in Glasgow, Scotland. First place finisher Kelly Law and Team Canada against Rona Martin from Great Britain. Law was the winner of that game in Scotland and headed in as the overwhelming favorite in the Olympic semi-final. To the fourth end, the game tied at one. Canada lying two. Martin with her final stone playing the hit and stick. She makes the hit, but rolls open. That leaves Law with a shot for two. But as we've said all week, her outturn has been her Achilles heel. It's been curling significantly more than we've seen in the past. And this one, unfortunately for Law, is no different. She crashes on the guard, and the worst possible result spills the guard into the rings it's a steal of two and a 3-1 lead for Great Britain. The following end, Law laying one on the button. She's left with the intern tap back for her second point. She had just made the same shot with her previous stone. Canada has to settle for one and a 3-2 deficit at the break. Canada steals a point in the sixth end to tie the game at three. And they know they're right back in the game. The seventh end, Martin lying one on the button, playing a draw for the second point. She needs a good piece of the button. It's very close. The measure, it's two. Two for Great Britain and a 5-3 lead. Now to the tenth end, the game tied at five. Great Britain with last rock. Law's final stone. Playing around the corner guards. Nice shot, they take it Great right shot. to the back of the eight foot. And so it all comes down to the last rock in the tenth. Martin needs full eight foot. The biggest shot of the Olympics for her. No worry about line. It's all about the weight. And it's right there. Rona Martin and Great Britain into the gold medal final. And for Kelly Law and Team Canada... It's off to the bronze medal match against the USA. A huge disappointment for Law, a semi-final loss, and the end of her gold medal dreams. We fully expected that we would uh, come out and win that game. And, you know, I guess to uh, Great Britain's credit, they played very well. And, and um, you know, they got two deuces on us. That was the, uh, you know, the swing in the game. And I think that... Uh, you know, after those four points, we, we fought back pretty hard and, you know, had a few steals and, and still tried to play uh, the best we could and relatively well. So, um, you know, that's the way it goes sometimes.
regroup. Kelly Law for bronze for breakfast for most of Canada, 11 Eastern, 8 o'clock on the West Coast. Bronze medal game, Canada against the United States. And then on Friday, how about a golden dinner? Kevin Martin against Norway in round robin play. Canada defeated Norway, so that is a good omen. As we continue, see the huge crowd at Meadows Plaza in anticipation of the concert, because it's Mark Anthony. Short track, medals when we return. The problem with looking for a job is that a job isn't actually what you're looking for. What you're really looking for is a chance, a chance to be happy, a chance to be something you've always wanted to be. So all you seekers, all you searchers, all you people who know that absolutely no one ever looked back on their life and said, gee, I wish I'd played it safe. All of you, get on board. Let's go. Post your resume today on monster.ca. You the monster. Did you put it on? I didn't put it on. I didn't put it on. Well, I'm not drinking it. Not sure how fresh your coffee is? At Tim Hortons, we make a new pot every 20 minutes, so it's guaranteed to always be fresh. Tim Hortons, the coffee you can count on. Oh, I made that last night. <laughs> Having difficulty getting RSPs off your mind? We make it easy. RBC Financial Group. RSPs made easy. Future Shop service specialists install more than hardware and software. They install possibilities. Because life's full of great moments. Why not upgrade them? Future Shop. You'll like what the future has in store. Mr. Groundhog, can you tell us why you've come out of your hole so early this year? Well, shadow or no shadow, I had to get out of there. I mean, my mattress was killing me and my furniture, ugly. They don't call it a hole for nothing. Fed up with your furniture? Leon's Cross Canada Inventory Clearance is in its final week. $100 million of inventory must be cleared out, which means incredible savings. Get this beautiful leather sofa, a steal at just $8.99, or this big English fridge, only $6.99. And you don't pay until 2003. Nuts? Yeah, those prices are crazy. The 2002 Olympic Winter Games on CBC. Brought to you by Visa. Worldwide partner of the 2002 Olympic Winter Games. And by Bell. Connecting Canadians to our Olympic team. Bell. Go. Already a bronze medalist at these Olympic Games, Canada's Becky Scott leads three other women in the relay. That's tomorrow at 4 Eastern, one on the West Coast across the full network. Well, started the show talking about the success of hockey. How about two medals in short track? That's exactly where we're going. Again, Steve Armitage and Neil Marshall. If you thought the action was fast and furious in night two of short track at the Salt Lake Ice Center, get set to fasten your seatbelt once again. Tonight, the women will battle for medals in the 3,000 meter relay. The Canadians, led by the veteran Isabel Chavez, cruise through the semifinal and will be joined by the Koreans, Japanese, and Chinese in the final. Led by Ko and Choi, the Koreans have won two gold and two silver on the World Cup circuit this year. The Chinese have won five of the last seven world championships, but only one Olympic medal, a silver behind the Koreans in 1998. The Japanese have skated well this year, one gold and one silver in World Cup action. Canada's last gold was the first ever in the Olympics in the relay, that coming in Albertville. Also in action tonight, the men in the 1500 meters. It's this event where the four-time world champion Marc Gagnon is expected to put his vast experience to good use. 
Gagnon failed to make the final in the 1000. His main challenge will come from Apollo Ono of the United States, the silver medalist in the 1000. Xi Jun Li of China DQ'd in the Grand, and Dong Sun Kim, who was forced to skate the B final in the 1000. The men's 1500 was a first ever event for the short trackers in Olympic competition. And the first of three semifinals would see two skaters advance and skate for the medals in the final. The most close from France in third, looking comfortable. He's got to try to set something up. It is only two to advance. He's got to try to make a pass here on Smith in second. It is Gong Soon. Kim Loskos has made a great move. Smith pushed him out of the way. Loskos is forced to go wide. It is Gong Soon Kim and Loskos, and Smith has given up. It is going to be Dong Soon Kim and Loskos at the line. Rusty Smith crossing in third place, but it'll be Dong Soon Kim and Bruno Loskos of France going through to the final in the men's 1500 meters. The second semi would feature the crowd favorite, Apollo Anton Ono. And if that cut on Ono's leg is causing him any discomfort, he's certainly not showing it. He's skating very strongly. Fabio Carta coming on the outside. Great pass. This is going to be interesting. One lap to go in this second semi-final of three in the men's 1500. It is Fabio Carta and Apollo Ono at the line. Carta wins the semi-final. Apollo Ono is second. So those two will advance to the final and skate for the medals in the men's 1500. The third semi would be a battle between two of the giants of the sport. Canada's Mark Gagnon and Jai Jun Li of China. Only the first two will skate for the medals in the final! And we've got the two leaders down. And Gagnon and Jai Jun Li now take the lead. What a huge mistake there on the part of the Korean teenager going down and taking himself out of the race with two laps to go. It is Jai Jun Li of China and Mark Gagnon, they get the bell. Remember, the first two will skate for the medals in the final, and it looks as if Canada will have a skater in that final in the person of Mark Gagnon. Jai Jun Li winning the semifinal. Mark Gagnon is second. The scene was set for a classic final. All the top guns in the sport would skate for the medals. And they're really cranking it up now. Pace is close to top speed. Much more difficult to pass now. Carter trying to go on the outside. Carter making a big move, going wide. Daniel, here comes Carter. Daniel is still in second. Down Sukin, here comes Apollo Odo. Odo has made his move on the inside. Daniel sitting in third. Down Sung Kim is the leader. They're on the last lap. Oh, what a great finish this is going to be. Down Sung Kim leading to the line. Down Sung Kim wins it. Apollo Odo was second. There's a lot of traffic at the line. Not sure if Mark Gagnon got in there for third place or not. Dong Sung Kim of Korea, the gold medalist, although Apollo Ono might protest that last move. He put up his hands on the last lap, indicating that he couldn't get by Dong Sung Kim, who may have been blocking him out. Dong Sung Kim celebrating a little early. And we're getting word that Dong Sun Kim has been disqualified. There's your gold medalist in the men's 1500 meters, Apollo Anton Ono. Dong Sun Kim can't believe it. And neither can his coach, Big John. Well, the crowd is going nuts. That moves Ono to first. And we're still waiting to find out where Mark Gagnon has finished. He's looking at the board, but Odo is celebrating his gold medal, and there it is. It is official now. Odo gets the gold. Jai Jun Li the silver, and Mark Gagnon of Canada has won the bronze in the first ever 1500 meter race in Olympics for short trackers. I skated uh, pretty much in the top two, three skaters all the time. I didn't want to go at the back as I knew. There was a lot of good guys in front to pass, so I didn't want to be at the back. Everything turned out pretty good. I don't think it could have changed anything. He's the gold medalist in the men's 1,500 meters. 
Jai Jun Lee, the silver medalist, and Mark Gagnon of Canada joining a very elite group of Canadian athletes. He has now won medals in three straight Winter Olympics. It's a bronze for Gagnon in the men's 1500. The next medal on the third night of skating here at the Salt Lake Ice Center would come in the women's 3,000-meter relay. Again, four of the best in the sport had qualified for the 27-lap final. Canada with Alana Kraus, Isabelle Charest, Marie Evdrolet, and Amélie goulet nadon in the lineup going against China, Japan, and Korea. We heard the gun go there. That signifies one more change allowed, three laps to go. Skaters will, teams will try to get there. Oh, and a big slip by the Chinese team there. A huge slip, but it doesn't seem to have made any difference to the order. It's still the Koreans in front. The Chinese are sitting in second place. One lap to go now in this women's 3,000 meters. The Koreans are going to take gold. Gold to Korea, silver to China, and Canada taking bronze in the women's 3,000 meter relay here at the Salt Lake Ice Center. And that's a world record time for the Koreans. Bronze for the Canadians, Isabelle Charest, Marie Evdrolet, Emily goulet nadon and Alana Kraus. It means a lot to me and it means a lot to my team, my family, everybody at home has cheered me on for and helped me out for the last 20 years, so it's, it means a lot to me. Good team, good energy, good communication, that's all it takes. <laughs> Korea get the gold, China the silver. And the team of Alana Kraus, Isabel Chalet, Marie Evdrolet, Emily Goulet Nadon, and Tanya Visson of Canada pick up the bronze. They were bronze medalists in Nagano four years ago, and they repeat that performance here in Salt Lake City. Thanks a lot, Steve. By the way, we asked the short track speed skaters, the bronze medalists, to come and visit us on late night, but they've got more medals to win, and we certainly understand the long track story as we continue after this. Good evening, Batman. Alfred. I've stepped up safety in the Batmobile, sir. Really? Should a villain steal it, someone will track it. If your airbag goes off, an advisor will assist you. If you're stranded, satellites will help to locate you. And where have you put all these things? Just press the OnStar button, sir. Well done, Alfred. My pleasure, sir. OnStar, how can I help you, Batman? So you have to do the ironing, but you'd rather be snowboarding. Why not do both? Make a little more free time. <laughs> Smell mountain fresh. Whatever you do for your time, blue light similar to blue light for your time. Check the score. Okay, okay. It's two all. Two all? 9.5 seconds left and a huge. Hello? Sally, yeah, we're on the way. Who's here? Everybody's here. here we go. Real-time multi-pack 30. Get 150 weekday, weeknight, weekend, and wireless web minutes every month. Visit Bell World or Bell Mobility today. Not everything about traveling has changed, but our signs have. You'll find them near all your favorite places, even the ones you haven't discovered yet. Choice Hotels. When you're out there, keep an eye out for our new look. Call 1-800-4-CHOICE or visit choicehotels.ca. Coming to CBC Sunday morning. CBC News Sunday. What we're trying to do is make it more personal for people. Singing and dancing is my job, and is there a place for that after September 11th? We have the ability to add a dimension to the author's story. We have a chance to really examine the world on a deeper level. Media, politics, spirituality, ethics, accountability are what we want to address. CBC News Sunday, a new weekly current affairs magazine, premiering Sunday morning.
Well, the Utah Olympic Oval has lived up to its reputation. It is the fastest ice in the world, now has five of seven world records, and Steve Armitage has called them all. Here he is along with Neil with the women's 1500. Salt Lake may be the first Winter Olympics in which a Canadian woman has had a legitimate shot at a medal in the 1500 meters. Cindy Clausen, the bronze medalist in the 3000 in Salt Lake, picked up a bronze on this ice last year in the World Single Distance Championships. For someone who didn't put on speed skates until 1997 and dreamed of playing defense on the women's national hockey team, she has come a long way in a short time. Three Germans are expected to battle for the top of the podium. Claudia Pechstein, who struck gold in the 3,000 meters. Annie Friesinger, the world record holder in the distance, who's undefeated this season in five races on the World Cup circuit. And Sabine Volker, the silver medalist in the 1,000 meters. The Dutch will counter with Mary Ann Timmer, defending Olympic gold medalist in the distance. And the silver medalist in the 3,000, Renata Groenvall. The Americans will try to maintain their hot streak with Chris Whitty, who lowered the world record and scooped up gold in the 1,000, and Jenny Rodriguez, who snared a bronze in the same distance. Based on the men's time in the 1,500, look for yet another world record from the Utah Olympic Oval in the women's metric mile. Canadians had three reasons to cheer in the women's 1,500 meters, and the first was Christina Groves, paired with Chris Whitty in the 10th of 20 pairs in the distance. As Chris Whitty of the United States comes to the line, can she do it? At the line, 155.71, that's an Olympic record, and she becomes the leader in the women's 1,500 meters. For Christina Groves, 159.54, her time. The second Canadian in the women's metric mile, Cindy Overland. Her brother Kevin won bronze in the 500 four years ago. Cindy would not duplicate that feat in Salt Lake. She puts in a time of two minutes, .02 seconds, well off her personal best, and winds up 25th. All eyes would now set her on the woman who came to Salt Lake undefeated in the 1500 through five races on the World Cup circuit, Annie Friesinger of Germany the world record holder in the distance. Friesinger with a big lead on Toto Ike of Japan. Her world record tie, 154.38. And at the line for Annie Friesinger, 154.02. It's a new world record in the women's 1,500 meters here at the Utah Olympic Oval. Friesinger skated her typical strong, flat race. Annie Friesinger, the 25-year-old from Germany has delivered with a world record clocking of 154.02, and she becomes the skater to beat. Sabine Volker was racing in the second to last pair and had just seen her German teammate lower the world standard in the 1500 and go to the gold medal position. Volker, already bronze and silver from the 500 and 1000, could she complete the Olympic triple in the 1500. She's a tenth of a second down. And you can see the pain now on her face now. She's going to have a tough last 300 meters here. Coaches yelling all the encouragement they can. Time to beat for gold at 154.02 so far. Woody is sitting in the silver medal position at 155.71. And Peckstein at 155.93 in the bronze right now. But here comes Volker. Volker at the line. 154.97. She moves to the silver medal position with one pair to come. Tapata 156.35. As it so often does in speed skating, it came down to the final pair to determine the medals in the 1500. And it featured Canada's Cindy Clausen, the bronze medalist in the 3000, with Jenny Rodriguez of the United States, the bronze medalist in the 1000. It's going to be a close finish. Rodriguez got that inner corner, but Clausen coming on strong. Blossom will finish on the outer, Rodriguez on the inner. The time to beat is 154.02 for gold in the women's 1500 meters. They come to the line, and for Rodriguez, she goes to third, the bronze medal, 155.32. For Cindy Clausen, she misses the medal. She finishes in fourth 
place. And for Glosson, her time, 155.59. I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, it was close to medal, so it would have been nice to have gotten one, but uh, I can't complain about my race. I tried my hardest, and just uh, three people are faster than me. It took a world record time in the women's 1500 meters to win gold, but that's exactly what Annie Friesinger of Germany did with her clocking of 154.02. You know, we've seen the other races waiting, waiting, and waiting this caused so much power, and now it's all done. So happy. <laughs> the silver medal to Sabine Volker, her second of these Olympics, and the bronze, her second of the Olympics, to Jennifer Rodriguez of the United States. Canada's Cindy Clausen winding up in fourth place in the women's 1500. Thank you to Steve Armitage. That fourth place finished the best ever by a Canadian woman in that distance. As we continue on, I just wanted to remind you that the final distance race for the women goes on Saturday. That's the women's 5,000. Clara Hughes, the summer turned winter athlete, is in that one. So is Christina Groves. And believe it or not, Cindy Clausen has another challenge. And she could be a factor at 5,000 meters as well. Well, you've watched the hockey all tournament long. You know what has happened to these players when they put their national sweaters on. It is a great brand of the game. And now Peter Jordan goes behind the scene to check out the sweaters game. Peter Jordan's Olympic Living, brought to you by Visa, worldwide partner of the 2002 Olympic Winter Games. Here at the Salt Lake Olympics, there's 22 hockey teams. That means over 3,000 game jerseys. Every one of them made in Granby, Quebec. The workers at this factory in Granby, Quebec have their work cut out for them. They're manufacturing home, away, and practice jerseys for every team at the Olympics, from Kazakhstan to Canada. Let's go! <laughs> Giselle Bonneau and Therese Duquette have brought all those jerseys here to the basement of the East Centre in Salt Lake City to put on the finishing touches. We made in Granby. Oh, okay. And now we're going to look if everything is all right. If you want to hang up. Oh, yeah, sure. And, and we just checked to make sure. Boy, it looks yes, good. But right away, right, I find something right. missing from Mario's sweater. Mario. Now, we're, uh, there's no C on this. I have to put one. Oh, we have to put the C on. Yes. Should yes, we do that before we hang it up? Yes, or? we can. Yes, okay, we're let's gonna do make that. It. Okay. Each country has exacting specifications yes. for how the sweater should look. That's Mario's C. It's got to be perfect. Hello. <laughs> no, you have to push like this. Yeah. Oh, oh, you mean hard. <laughs> <laughs> It's ready. Okay. Okay, I pressed it, but to make sure it's letter perfect, Giselle okay. zigzag stitches it. So you do this with every sweater of every country. Yes, the number, wow. everything. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, there's Smith, Vendros, Fleury. Hey, Teresa, where is Hassock's jersey? <laughs> okay, Dominic, try stuffing it like that. Okay, Abby Boulin, you're next. Now you have to Good stitch teacher. every letter by hand. I'm really glad my name isn't Abby Boulin. And you see all the players with stitched jerseys. A very nice feeling. The feeling is special. I think I'll just slip this into the lineup between uh, Korea and Sakic. Well, there is Jennifer Bottero proudly wearing her Canadian sweater. And the Canadians will take on the Americans. We've been touting this game. It's no surprise. Gold medal game tomorrow at 7 Eastern. And the semifinal, Canada-Belarus. Joe Sackett, the men's hockey, Friday, 2 in the afternoon. You heard Kelly Rudy say it. Keep the kids home, or at least have the teachers put televisions in the school rooms. This is going to be great. And don't forget also the United States, Russia, tight contest in the round robin, played to a 2 2 tie, 6 15 Friday evening. The 2002 Olympic Winter Games on CBC, brought to you by Petro Canada. 
helping our Olympic athletes since 1988. And by Monster.ca, proud to help Canadian Olympic athletes find rewarding careers. Watch and win with RBC Financial Group. Beginning February 8th, watch the Olympians during the Salt Lake 2002 Games on Canada's own Olympic network, CBC. Simply pick up your watch and win details at any RBC Financial Group branch, and then log on to royalbank.com slash olympics for a chance to win great prizes, like a trip to Athens, Greece, site of the 2004 Olympics. Be a winner with RBC Financial Group, supporting Olympic dreams since 1947. wishes our athletes every success. And by the Dairy Farmers of Canada, proud to stand behind the Canadian Olympic team. Welcome back as we continue to review what has happened on day number 12 in Deer Valley. You know, you've heard about the great powder in Utah for skiing. Well, they had wet snow, but that doesn't matter. In technical events, they go pretty much any weather. And it was time for the women's slalom. Here's Scott Oak and Karen Lee Gardner. As weather goes, we had some here at Deer Valley today. The snow didn't let up for either of the runs of slalom. And Karen, as Olympic races go, I'm not sure this one will be recalled as a classic. Uh, there were a lot of DNFs, more than you'd normally see. And uh, by the end, it started to take on the appearance of a matter of survival, did it not? Well, the first run was just terrible. And many of the best racers in the world didn't make it to the bottom. Second run, it held up much better. And I was very happy to see that it came down to the last five, the best in the world getting on the podium and it ended up being a good podium. Croatia's Janika Kostelic came into uh, the Olympics uh, trying to recover from knee surgery. She had three procedures in last offseason but she really got on form in these games Karen with uh, a gold in the combined silver in the super G and she certainly had to be considered the favorite in the slalom. Well exactly and she could ski with the freedom. She could go out in that first run and relax and really know that she had it in the bag and with that kind of confidence it doesn't matter how tough the course is you just ski it differently and she skied like a veteran. Kostel had served notice that she was serious about a second gold medal in her first run. Well, you'd have to think Croatia's Janika Kostelic can uh, ski like she has nothing to lose now, given she already has two medals, gold in the combined, silver in the Super G. Those were two magnificent performances in Croatia's first ever Winter Olympic medals. Oh, she looks so relaxed. She has an upright position on her ski, and she just looks completely relaxed out there. And not surprisingly, she's got the lead of a tenth of a second. This is going to be the key here. She hasn't done much on World Cup this year. Managed to make a podium. Most racers would be happy with that, but last year she won so many. Yeah, she had one of the most successful World Cup seasons in history last year, winning eight straight slaloms. And she did that coming off knee surgery, then had three more surgeries last off season. She looks just really passive when she skis, but Mark Sharp was saying that he feels she's got one of the best touches on the snow in the whole world, very soft on her edges. Trying to make it three medals in 
in as many races at the Olympics, and she's got the lead in the first run by almost two tenths of a second. So, Janika Kostelic of Croatia stating an early case for a medal in slalom. So, Janika Kostelic of Croatia laid down an outstanding first run, had the lead heading for the second run, and then Karen the Canadians, Allison Forsyth and Emily Bryden. Forsyth's best event is the giant slalom. It goes the day after tomorrow. That's when she'll have her best shot at a medal, uh, as it was in the slalom today. She went out. Well, it was probably a good thing for Allison. Her whole goal today was just to head out of the start gate with the right approach. Be relaxed, be a competitor, be very aggressive. She was all of the above, and she was also one of the casualties of that first run. Emily Bryden also, of course, representing Canada today. And for her, it's all about experience, setting her up for two or four years from now in Torino. And I think for Emily, of course, it's going to be embarrassing being well back, but she doesn't have the training behind her, and it was a little bit dangerous for her today. The coaches were very worried. All right, heading for the second run. All eyes are on Kostelic. Could she hold off the rest of the field? No, and she's got to really loosen up and carry her speed. This is not the way she skied when she won those four World Cup races. She's so much better than this, and risk more towards the finish. Is it enough? Yes, yes. it is. Anya Pearson takes the lead by almost a tenth of a second. She's the fourth last to ski. Such good turns, work through this middle section, back and forth. They inspect the course, they side slip down, they all know exactly where the rhythm changes are, where they come out of hairpins like that, right there, know that you have to come out with direction. <gasps> She's down. Putinayan is down, a DNF for her. And that Paris guarantees Pearson at least a bronze medal. I would expect this to be a great fight right to the finish. And bothered her whole career by back pain, the result of a chronic illness that began when she was a teenager. Years ago, she wore a brace during competitions. Says she's okay now, but still deals with back pain. So this the challenge of Lara Pekino skiing against Pearson's time, and oh, Pekino does it by wow. a second. Awesome. Lara Pekino takes the lead. It's at least silver for her. Kostelich's style is she's very balanced, very consistent. Last year, when she won the slalom title and the overall, she was consistent, won all the World Cup races, but managed to falter in the World Championships and has just shown real poise here this year during the Olympics. Kostelich trying to make it three medals in as many races at these Olympics. Oh, it's going to be close, Scott. It will be close for the gold. She must beat Lara Pequeno's time. It's 146.17 for gold. Kostelich oh. does it by the narrow of margins, seven hundredths of a second. There's the gold medalist in the slalom. Unbelievable, and the, it's just incredible who came through in the end. It's the ones that deserve to be getting the medals, walking away with gold, silver, bronze. Yannicka Kostovic takes the gold, her second of the games. Karen, the course was an extreme challenge. The weather was not great. Uh, having said that, though, I would suggest that we got a legitimate podium in the slalom. Do you agree? Well, I definitely agree. It would have been a shame to see any other outcome here. The best in the world on World Cup all season long. Anya Pearson, Lori Pacquignol, and of course, they're on the podium here. And who could have guessed the Croatian to come through in the end? Three medals in the Olympic Games. How outstanding is that? Yeah, all of them won by Janika Kostelic. And we should note that her brother Ivica is is a gold medal favorite in the men's slalom uh, coming up on the second to last day of the game. So just a few days to go in the Olympics and Janika Kostelic of Croatia has turned out to be one of the major stories. Thanks very much, Scott and Karen. Thomas Grandy, Jean-Philippe Bois in men's giant slalom action. The first run, you can see it at noon Eastern, nine on the West Coast on our cable partner, TSN. And then later in the day, the second run, you will see on CBC, 3 o'clock Eastern, noon Pacific time. Now, snow and weather was an issue today. You heard the number of DNFs in the women's slalom. They've cleared the streets there in Park City. It has a high humidity, 95% humidity. Hard to say whether there'll be any snow. Temperature should be perfect at 2 degrees, a little windy with 20 clicks. As we continue on day number 12.
Lebo has employed more Olympic hopefuls than any other company in the world. Home Depot, proud sponsor of the Canadian Olympic team. so many reasons to arrive that we've been inspired to create so many ways of getting you there. General Motors, getting more people to where they need to be than any company in the world. Over 150 years of brewing tradition goes into each and every bottle of Labatt Blue. Turns out, not everything happens out of the blue. If you're in business and looking to expand, we'd like to show you the future. A place where 1,500 global players are already up and running. Where highly skilled workers are available and wage competitive. Where basic business costs are the lowest among the G7. Where quality of life is among the best in the world. And where we want your business. Ontario, Canada. Get in touch and see why we say the future's right here. In their world, they were family until business got in the way of brotherhood. Two guys are here to kill you. I've got over 100 people want me dead. Why should two more bother me? The riveting three-part miniseries, The Last Chapter, begins March 3rd on CBC. <laughs> to you by Canada Post from anywhere to anyone and by McDonald's there's a little McDonald's in everyone Canada's Jennifer Robinson competes in the women's free skate program of figure skating tomorrow Olympic primetime with Brian Williams that immediately is following the women's hockey which should be in the nine-ish vicinity the women's game gets underway at 7 p.m. Eastern Jennifer Robinson in action tomorrow and that's going to be a great free skate. Think of this Michelle Kwan, Irina Slitskaya, Sarah Hughes, Sasha Cohen all fighting it out for the medals. Now talking of medals I want to take you to Soldier Hollow where today a new legend emerged. He's the man, the man with the Midas touch. Yes, one athlete at these Olympic Games who it seems needs no introduction. Bjorn Dahlen, Ole Einar Bjorn Dahlen. He's Norwegian and a nemesis to the big shooters at Soldier Hollow. In the first three events, Bjorn Dahlen's had a license to thrill. He's comfortable in the crosshairs right on target. Now, Bjorn Dahlen's back for the relay. Bold finger. Shooting at four straight wins, he's quite simply the man with the golden gun. Snow envelops the competition area at Soldier Hollow for the final day of biathlon, the 4 by 75 kilometer relay for the men. This event has a history at the Olympic Games. It started in 1968 in Grenoble. The Soviets won six consecutive relays. And from that time, in 1992, the Germans took over. They are the three-time defending champions and the heavy favorites here. But the Russians will challenge. There's no question about that. And after many sunny days, the snow is going to have an effect on the shooting as well as the skiing and the waxing of the skis. With air and snow temperatures near zero, it's the hardest waxing conditions for all the countries. People have talked about the fact that out here at Soldier Hollow of late, the German team has had the best skis in both cross-country and biathlon competition. France, the world champions coming in, they ended up with the bronze medal. 
to the delight of Rafael Poiré, he has always complained that he didn't have a team with him, but today all four skied and shot very well. Only Julien Robert, the third skier, stumbled slightly in the range. He took three extra shots, but the two-time World Cup champion, Rafael Poiré, had enough and came home in third position to the delight of his teammates. They finally capture a medal at the Olympic Games. Germany, the defending champions three times over, trouble for Rico Gross as he started the race. He really wasn't in it at the start. He put a lot of pressure on Peter Sendel, who's, who went second, but the real problem was with Sven Fischer. He did not shoot very well in prone, even had to do a penalty loop, and it was just too much for the Germans to overcome. Sven Fischer is the traditional anchor of the German side. He was in 98 when they won the gold medal in Nagano. Frank Luck, the veteran, one of the most decorated skiers in biathlon, skied the anchor this time. Brilliant in the range and surprisingly fast over the snow. Luck came home with the silver medal. While the Germans did not shoot very well, the Norwegians, who did not shoot well in all of the other races, shot extremely well today, starting with Howard Hanewald, and they continued it through the first three legs. Yes, Jack, you had referred to them as the gang that couldn't shoot straight. We knew all about Ole Einar Bjorndalen, but how about Frode Andersen taking the handoff from Halvard Hannibal. And Andersen skied a great leg, but at the key, I think, to the Norwegian victory was the third leg skier, Jelland. Jelland shot very fast, he would shot clean, and while Sven Fischer was fading, he was moving up. And Jelland handed off to Ole Einar Bjorndalen, the star of these Olympic Games in biathlon competition. His lead was more than a minute, one minute, 11 seconds, and that's all he required. The man with the golden gun was good enough in the range. Great on skis again to bring it home. His fourth gold medal of the games for Norway, a first ever victory, ending the dynasty of two countries in the biathlon relay. It's only fantastic. It's so, so great and so good feeling. And the last relay is more important for me to win than the other gold I make here because you, you're working so hard with the team. and. Every, ball, every three before for me, they do a so perfect race and then I need also to make a, a good race and that was enough today. It was not perfect for me today, but it was, I was in good shape and I had really fast skis and it was really fun to race. Can you comment on uh, how much those teammates meant to you because they paved the way for that gold medal? They were so strong and then the shooting fast and good and they were strong and ski so it was perfect. He's the man with the Midas touch. Ole Einar Bjorndalen of Norway now has four Olympic gold medals. Only three other athletes have done that. One of them, Eric Haydn, won five in 1980 in Lake Placid, but Bjorndalen is the athlete of the Salt Lake Games. There is no question. Four gold medals is fantastic. He had a lot of help today. He couldn't have gotten...